Oh wait, I should probably disable that. I think we're live. Hello. I woke up about 15 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> I accidentally stayed up all night working on a script for a new video. I maybe should have been working on the Starfield review, but the Doctor Who episode genuinely got to me so much I decided to make a video on it. I spent the last week contemplating it. And last night I was just like, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do. So I did. Ye. 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 And that's what I forgot to do. I forgot to mute uh, that other thing. I guess it's a good start for the thing, Cree. So anything else you've been up to for the last two weeks? Uh, existing. Uh, what did I do the past two weeks? I don't know. Yeah, just working on stuff. Yeah. Yeah, what about you, Pagan? What have you been up to for the last two weeks? Hmm... Working on animations that'll never get finished, uh, playing soccer, <laughs> uh, did I watch anything worth talking about? Not really. No, I don't, I don't think I really did anything besides, like, work. Uh, mine was, uh, eventful, as per usual. Um, bunch of, uh, new games, just having fun with the, uh, streams and everything like that. We had my birthday. That was a fantastic stream. It went over really well. We had, uh, Sir Ben and, uh, there for that. For that, that was a good bit of fun. We watched, uh, The Princess Bride, which was fantastic. We had a, I have a lot of people uh, show up for that, thankfully. I was worried that a lot of people wouldn't because it's called the princess bride it's like no no no. you should absolutely watch it it's not what you expect it to be it is one of the most quoted movies of all time for a good reason and uh yeah so uh people were laughing having a good time and uh starting the quotes it's like yep this is why it's one of the most quoted movies of all time then we watched dread this uh this yesterday so that was fun always good uh to watch uh, 2012 Dread. It's a movie that holds up incredibly well. Um, other than that, uh, gaming-wise, just been having a good old time and uh, various different things. Played some more uh, Starship Trooper. Played some more Dark Tide. Again, this all stuff for the stream. Oh! I do want to make a mention of it. So, Larian Studios... Having already won multiple Studio of the Year awards, and, you know, Baldur's Gate 3 has already won multiple Game of the Year awards already, uh, didn't rest on their laurels and instead put out a new update, Update 5, that adds a bunch of new... It adds some new cinematics, it adds a bunch of new uh, spoken dialogue and everything for the ending, so they added an entire epilogue section for it so you could get, like, a, what everybody's up to now. So, you know, just, uh, just Larry and, you know, continuing to be Larry. And... So that was fantastic. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be, um, we'll be doing, uh, some Warhammer Online because there's now going to be three different private servers all competing against each other for Warhammer Online. And I'm super, super happy about that. Hmm. So that should be a good, good time. But yeah, I, I also got a bunch of, like, stuff done. A lot of it not useful for the channel, sadly. Um, I mean, I did the new thumbnail for the Warhammer thing, which took a lot more effort than people think it might. When you look at it, it doesn't seem like there's a lot that went into it, but there was a lot that went into it, shockingly so. Because I didn't expect there was going to be a lot that went into it either. 
Um, yeah, and, uh, basically I, I just got a bunch of stuff done for, like, uh, like, a bunch of new avies worked on. I fixed up an AI image that was mad scuffed, but the concept of it and everything was amazing. So I took it all upon myself to just take it and fix it up, and I now finished that, so... That was uh, that was the thing. I don't think I'm gonna be doing that more in the future, but that was kind of fun to take something that AI made and then unfuck it. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess that's kind of it for everything that we went up to for the last two year, two years, two weeks. Mm, oh yeah, Starfield yes. got nominated for RPG of the Year, which again is a pity nomination. Like they they had to give Starfield a nomination somewhere, is what it feels like. Kind of, which... but at the same time, it's like it's not even an RPG though. Yeah, at this point, a... unironically, Call of Duty is more of an RPG. Yeah, the the um, Golden Joystick actually was better off saying it was it was Xbox's game of the year because Xbox had a really shit year. I don't know, I still feel like Redfall should have won over Starfield. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I mean, it's probably less disastrous. Still no Sharpfield review? Okay, so what's happening with that is I've replayed the game off stream to get better footage for the review and to start working on the analysis, which I have started scripting. Uh, there's a few key details I need to rework for the review because I'm a bit off with uh, what I thought when writing the review. So I have to fix those up and re-record those and re-record some other lines. Because um, there's there's a bit of peaking when I recorded originally, unfortunately. Um, and then I'll get try and get that done. First, I'm doing the Doctor Who video, though. I've got it mostly scripted. Uh, it's probably going to be around an hour long. And, like like I said, most of that is scripted. It's almost uh, done scripting. I can record it in a day, work on it for a day or two, and get it done and out this week. Hopefully. Uh, I'll grab those two memberships, but first, five pounds from Threadnought. Thank you. The new Doctor Who is great. I look forward to the rest of the adventures of Christopher Eccleston and Billy Piper. <laughs> <laughs> I do wish we got more of uh, Christopher Eccleston as the Doctor. I'm probably fucking up his name, but you know what I mean. I, I really liked him as a Doctor, and I wish we got more of him. Yeah, same. Isn't your Doctor Who video inspired by Jay's downfall of Doctor Who video? No. It's a good video, but it didn't inspire me. I, I don't know why you would assume that. There's many reasons yeah, people make videos. Weird. Yeah, it's random. Completely random. Um, membership message from just a guy from Alabama. Thank you. Uh, member for nine months. I still need to update those. Rodents of unusual size. I don't believe they exist. Altdorf <laughs> official just before a Skaven ambush. Yeah. That is definitely one of the, one of the quotes that almost everybody grabs. Especially... What about the RUSs? That's their usual size. I don't think they exist. Really gets attacked. Membership message from Grandmaster Pi for five months. Thank you. I am Pi, and I am here. Oh, well, thank you. E. Um, I did want to see that, uh, make mention of, uh, Hogwarts Legacy didn't get nominated at all. Yeah, um, they revealed that the reason it didn't get any nominations because they didn't want to upset the very special, special protected peoples of specialness. That's really dumb, and that's unfair to the developers. I, oh, absolutely. I, I think most award shows are kind of bullshit in the first place, but for the people who do care, it's like, yeah, that's, that's completely unfair to the developers. There's no reason they shouldn't have the nomination. Well, I don't know what categories they could possibly have gotten a nomination in, but um, if the game was good enough to earn a nomination, it should have gotten it regardless. Yeah, like, it would have earned it well over Starfield for, like, the Xbox game of the year. I know that's it was on multi-platforms, but Jesus Christ, like, what else did you have? Uh... 
Hey Kratosis, what is the Doctor Who series? I've never watched the show. It's about a time-traveling British person from an alien planet. And he has adventures. He doesn't like violence. He tries to uh, come to peaceful solutions to things. It's a good... It's a good show until they ruined it. Yeah. Back in the old days, it was rumored and, like, hinted at the reason he doesn't like violence anymore is because one day he woke up and chose violence and bad, bad things happened. Are we talking about the revived series or the original series? Because even the first Doctor didn't like guns, so that's, like, just a full thing, or the thing all the way yeah. back. Well, it was because it was, it was, it was the uh, revived series. Okay. Because you're talking about what happened to Gallifrey and everything. And it was it was implied that he was because he chose violence one time, and that kind was the, of yeah. The but part of the doctor. part of the thing with that though is that he he was still like that before the day he chose violence. In the case That's I ever de hmm, That's fair enough. In the case uh, I ever decide to get a VTuber model, what program are you using? I am using a uh, VTube Studio for that. Doctor has been running since the 60s. Yes, it started in 1963. This is its 60th anniversary. And rather than doing a uh, big anniversary special like they did for the 50th, they have three smaller uh, specials. The first one, if you ignore all of the stuff I don't want to get into on stream, is largely a meh episode, meh to really fucking dumb. And I, I, it doesn't feel like a 60th special, it feels like something just kind of random. Um, the episode from yesterday wasn't completely terrible. Um, it almost kind of had that, almost a classic feeling. I guess classic feeling of the Revival series. It almost kind of had that. And that was fine. Until they ruined it by doubling down on the Timeless Children. Which, for anyone who doesn't watch Doctor Who, completely erases and destroys the Doctor's entire backstory and, like, background. I hate it. It, it is... 60 years of history erased. The Doctor... He isn't a Time Lord, he's some other creature, and the the regeneration power that he has, it was stolen from him to make the race of Time Lords, and, uh, you know, by making characters special sometimes like that, they're no longer special. What made them special is just being a number of a group. The Doctor just yeah. being another random-ass fucking Time Lord is part of what made him special. As opposed to this entirely unique being that we don't know where the fuck it came from. Yeah, exactly. Like, by by trying to make him a, a super special Gary Stu, Mary Sue nonsense, you've actually destroyed what made him special to begin with. Like, in every conceivable way. And then also undermined... Like, an entire race of people and a faction within your world and setting. It's like, good job. You you literally, like, you could have just continued on and things would have been better if you had basically not woken up that morning. Mm-hmm. Five pounds from Threadnought. Thank you. Doctor Who. Time-traveling uh, time alien demigod kidnaps a human and takes them on a journey around the universe through time, space, and the many dimensions. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, yeah. Didn't the Timeless Child come from the Vortex, a place that practically nothing can live within? I don't know all the exact details. I will be covering it one day in a video. That day is not today. Yeah. Anyway, should we get on with this? Yes. So it's been a long I, time. I, hmm? I do want to make mention of this one uh, comment. 
Anyone else waiting for all of the encoding errors the Amazon Fallout show will have on its release day solely because Todd Howard is an executive producer for the show? Yeah. Hmm. I can't wait for the entire Amazon site to crash constantly because, you know, they've been infected by the Todd slop. Anyways, it's been a very long time since uh, we've covered our old friend Oxhorn, and he's come out with a bit of a shocking video, apparently. Um, he's concerned about the Fallout TV show. You, you, you have to understand how, like, baffling this is for me, where the guy who said that, um... Basically, you're mentally diseased if you're critical of Fallout 4. He's the guy who's now saying, hmm, you know, this Fallout show, it's got me kind of worried. It's like, yeah. Yeah. holy shit, what? Yeah, this is insane. Are, are this you is sure? the guy who defended <laughs> Fallout 76 back when it was still a completely bug-riddled, like, yeah. unplayable, like, literally unplayable, and 76 called people liars for saying it was buggy. 76 yeah. at its worst, and he still defended it. Yeah, defended it, it, said it was, uh, you know, like, it's perfectly fine, it's play, it, like, there's nothing wrong with it. Everyone who's saying that they're getting all these uh, bugs that they can't even play the game are lying. It, it just, yep. the worst. This guy is such a Bethesda-tard shill, like, so full on in the cult of Todd, that he unironically said within the same sentence that Bethesda doesn't rely on modders to fix their worlds and games, but they know that modders have already fixed these patches and bugs, so they're not going to patch them themselves. <laughs> Fucking wow. Good, well done. Also, remember he said something crazy about uh, Star Wars in that one video where it was like, yeah, it wasn't uh, that big back in the day or whatever. I forget what the exact quote was, but it was something that was had something us all like, what the of, fuck? It wasn't that influential. Right! Yeah, yeah, yeah that was said, it. the same thing about, I think, Half-Life and Halo as well. Yeah, which um, were like the juggernauts of like media back then. They were like the things everyone knew about and was... No, I mean, Half-Life literally revolutionized the entire industry. Exactly. Well, everyone was copying that stuff. Like, when Star Wars came out, everyone wanted to be Star Wars. When, you know, when Half-Life came out, everyone wanted to be Half-Life. When Halo came out, it literally became a term of like, oh, the Halo killer. This yep. game will be the thing that finally kills Halo. Hayes, the Halo killer. <laughs> yeah. Just oh, God. Going to adjust chat slightly here. Hold on. It, it, it's incredible how many people have such a shit like it have that exact shit opinion too that those things weren't that influential or that great because remember we we did the the matt walsh video as well and he was like Star oh my Wars god wasn't that, that special it's like oh god <laughs> um five dollars from bentastic 197 thank you afternoon guys aren't you super excited for the fallout show it'll be the best show of all time Better than uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Mm, Better yeah, than totally. Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Yeah, I, I fucking doubt it, because Star Trek Deep Space Nine actually had writers on it. Yeah. And from everything we've heard from the Fallout TV show, it has nothing but activists on it. Uh, the people who made Westworld are on this, and I've heard good things about season one of Westworld. I hear it crashes and burns after that. Season one of Westworld is fantastic. Season two, yeah, is a they they drive headfirst into a brick wall, get out by miraculously surviving, pull out their shotgun, blow their brains out. Fun. Mm -hmm. it's oh, and uh, we we will be covering the article that he's reading. I've linked it in the uh, in the chat for well, our chat, and. Uh, yeah, it's gonna get. We're gonna get into the more of that. There's there's some stuff in there that is um very worrying that they've added. That's like, but why? Why more, would you do that? More worrying than the thing we heard before about how this is a Gonzo wacky funny cartoon wasteland thing. Yes, yes, yes. Un unironically way worse. Mm. 
I would rather it just be a fucking goofy, silly, dumb TV show than what we're getting in the description of this. Oxhorn does not bring this up in the in his video. It's something he skims over, and I don't even think he references it. He has problems with other stuff, which is a problem, and we will be getting into. Uh, but there is some stuff in this article that he does not cover that unironically just makes the entire thing just... It, there's no way it's not going to work no matter what they do even if you're just in it to watch oh i just want goofy silly fallout stuff even you probably will not be happy with this no. jesus christ yeah the, the stuff that i have heard because i haven't seen the article yet or watched the trailer neither have the stuff i that i have heard I've... has made me long for that for the actual like abandoned fallout movie script <laughs> where uh, ch chat, you need to understand this is how stupid that Fallout movie script was. They come out of a vault and they're like, we need to go find somebody in the post-apocalypse wasteland world. Well, we'll look up their address in the phone book in that convenient phone booth over there. And so they go into the phone booth and a bunch of raiders jump over like, ha ha, you fell for our clever ruse. It's amazing how many times we trap people in the phone booth trap. So many people come out of vaults and immediately try to look up an address. It's like, th this happens a lot? What the fuck? Yeah. I yeah. just thought these people were especially stupid. And isn't there also something in the script that completely, like, negates that? Where it's like, yeah, they're all the vaults, like... This, this has never happened before, so it's paradoxical? Yes, because yes. none of the vaults yeah. ever opened and let somebody out before. Yeah, because it's treated as like so, a big like revelation so thing. This trap that can only trap somebody incredibly stupid from a vault, because anybody that's lived outside of it knows like what what the, doesn't even know what the fuck the yellow pages are. Yeah, this uh, TKS Mantis has a video on this movie script. Uh, we watched uh, the video a while back, not on stream. We did it off stream, and it is like peak '90s video game adaptation. It was fucking terrible. Yes, where mm -hmm. the person read a plot synopsis, I, like, at best, and then wrote an entire script. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another super chat there. Two dollars from Jack Chipper. Thank you. The dialogue will sound like Last of Us 2, San Francisco. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just... That better than Deep Space Nine thing is just like, oh god, no, it's it's not even gonna come close. We do need to get back to watching Deep Space Nine. I really want to get through that. We do. Mm -hmm. um, Worse than the Super Mario movie from '95. Oh, absolutely! Holy shit, that script is wild. <laughs> <laughs> there was something I was going to say and I forget what it was now. Fuck, I hate that. Um, oh, I have seen some images coming out of the trailer, and I think people are right to be concerned. There's one image in particular that looks like a bad Photoshop, I'm not going to say what it is, because mm -hmm. I don't know if it's real or not. I've heard people being like, trust me, bro, this is real. I'm like, hmm... I have not mm. seen, I don't think any of us have seen the trailer, but I have had that one thing spoiled for me because it's being posted around so much. And I'm just like, surely that's not real. It probably is. I'm, I'm going to ask, oh is my... it is it the Vault Overseer? Yes. Yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about too. Yeah, it, that has <laughs> been spoiled for me. That has not for me. Oh, we're, we're not saying been, anything. The two that have been shown for me are the fucking the Graf Zeppelin and the uh, Megaton 2.0. Oh yeah, that's from the article, which showed like all these promotional images and stuff, so yeah, oh, we've seen those. Um, yeah, and that stuff is gonna get really bad. I, I don't know if you've watched this Oxhorn video, but even he's gonna be like, that makes no fucking sense! That can't possibly work! You can't do that, and why would you name it this way? Well, like, again, wait, 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 because wait. this is Bethesda, they don't, they don't know their own lore, they don't know their own writing, because Emil is at the head of it, so they have wait. no idea what's come before, and they don't give a shit. Evil Oxhorn be like, that's inaccurate to the lore. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird though seeing him being like bringing up valid points where it's like, yeah, that's an issue. How how do they not realize that that's a bad thing that they've done? Apparently the NCR just don't exist. They've just erased them. They've literally just supplanted the East Coast onto the West Coast and called it a day. There is no NCR. There is no Boneyard. Cannon the Brotherhood to... of Steel were never, like, they never fell out of power. Cannon to the video games, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, that's what Todd said. Again, if, if you wanted more evidence that Bethesda has never understood what Fallout was, this TV show by them saying it is absolutely canon, is going to solidify that in a giant monument. Yeah, usually when you do an adaptation like this, you have a bit of... I don't want to say leeway, but you, you've got room to have creative changes where it's like, yeah, this is a different thing, though, you know? Uh, Live-action One Piece. It's not the same universe as anime One Piece, obviously. Mm. So there's room for some creative liberties there. They, um, do, they do take some creative liberties, but it's, it's shocking how much stuff they they work in there, and honestly, the... Uh, I'm just using it as an example. The point I'm making is, when you well, come out and say actively that this show is canon with the games, it's all over. If you're yeah. not accurate to the games, then any criticism of, well, this thing in the lore, that thing in the lore, is now completely accurate against the show. You yep. took yep. what potential freedom you had to do... I don't want to say anything you want with this, but like you had a wide range of freedom to do a, a unique Fallout thing that isn't connected to the games, that isn't burdened down by that existing lore. You could change things, and now you can't. Now you're going to be yep. held to the standard of, this was established, and we are going to fucking roast your ass for ignoring it or ruining it. Yep. I'm surprised they actually decided to do it on the West Coast. They've always <clears throat> been so apprehensive about that before, where they were like, let's keep it on the East Coast because we could do our own thing. But now they've well, just like straight up thrown all that out and are going, yeah, no, not only are we setting it in the West Coast, we're actually throwing out all of the West Coast lore. Well, we, we don't know if they're throwing out all of it, but it's probably it is absolutely going to be butchered beyond belief yeah. yeah okay to be fair they might not be completely throwing it out but from the things we see they have to like in some way they have to be either removing or like drastically changing stuff because there is no way that some of these screenshots could possibly be like they could not happen in the game and still be connected to the lore also, to answer someone in chat who asked, like, what what started Bethesda's obsession with the Brothers of Steel? It's not an obsession. Again, when Bethesda got the rights to Fallout, they had no idea what Fallout was. They had no idea what any of the factions were or anything. They just thought that the Brotherhood of Steel was the marketable thing. That's yep. all they care about. They, they don't give a shit about Fallout. They've never given a shit about Fallout. Visual iconography. That's all it was. Super Mutants... Uh, Brotherhood of Steel and, and like the vault with the vault suit with yeah the and the vault vaults boy. and the vault suits and yeah that that's all they saw that's all they cared about they were like yep just just adapt that stuff into a game because it's recognizable and keep in mind this is when Todd has also again not knowing anything about Fallout also hired his bestest friend ever who is not a writer and is a scumbag piece of shit Emil so of well, I don't know if he's a scumbag. Lazy. I know he's a terrible writer. I, well, okay, fine. He's a tweaker, though, at least. He appears to be. Yeah. No. But he, uh, yeah, he, he he's too much of a lazy piece of shit. There's no way he was ever going to look into what was actually written about Fallout, or, or especially play any of the Fallout games. There's no way. Mm-hmm. A uh, 16-month membership message from Adeptus Fantasticus. Thank you. Can't wait till Protag follows in his dad's footsteps and has no real adventure. And the BOS uh, Brotherhood of Steel are the good guys and the Enclave is the bad guy. Please don't ruin the Enclave even more. Yeah. Five dollars. Yeah, the, the Enclave should have just stayed in Fallout 2. That's it. That's the only place it should have been. Remnant is I, fine. 
I, I don't they mind them do. existing beyond Fallout 2. They just have to be done well. Fallout 3 didn't do them well. I'm not willing to write off a group because there's been bad writing done with them. You, you can you can find a way to justify them existing elsewhere, I think. Yeah, that's why I said the Remnant are fine. Because it makes it's a logical sense that somebody managed to escape the, the fucking purge. Five dollars from Adeptus Fantasticus. Thank you. Biblical tier writing incoming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> totally. Anyway, I will say, from the from all the stuff I've seen so far, I have not seen the trailer, but from the images and stuff I have seen, I am getting very heavy, like Halo TV show vibes <laughs> from Fallout the TV show. Like it, it almost has like the same aesthetic, very similar looking characters. It just feels like they're just. Hey, Pagan, do you want to watch similar. a second trailer today? Oh, God, we could. There, yeah. If we have enough time, we could watch the Halo TV show so trailer I, for season two. I saw it posted on Twitter, and I uh, stopped scrolling for just a moment. And the first thing I see is uh, John Halo's face again. I'm like, okay, yeah, they didn't learn anything. Yeah, you know what's even better? Yeah. Paramount are so desperate because the, this is how bad the Halo TV series did. They're so desperate. They're actually giving away Halo One now for free off of off of their Paramount Plus subscription. They're like, please go watch it, please, please <laughs> watch. Anyways, let's get into this. Yeah, I really yeah. want to watch this. Prime Video finally released some official images from the Fallout TV show. I've avoided commenting on all of the leaks and rumors that have come out before now, but now we've got something official and concrete. The images are really exciting, and I'm eager to see the... F really exciting? Really? I mean, oh. yes, just as, as pure, like, bait images, right? Because, oh, Vault 13? Oh! Sort of deep, that, you know, it's that's, the... That's uh, 33. 33. Yeah, because it's set on the West Coast, so it has the West Coast number scheme. I mean, yeah, that's Vault 13 as well. No, that's... That's 33. No, no, I know, but hey, what Pagan said, it's set on the West Coast, so it's the West Coast. It's like, yeah, that's where oh. 13 is as well. Oh, right, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. no shit. Yeah. <laughs> I also have to point out they're using the uh, Fallout 3 and 4 Vault doors uh, where it pulls inwards instead of uh, outwards. Yeah. So, you know, we're already using Bethesda's nonsense. Yeah. I can see people being excited for this if they're Fallout 4 fans. If you're, like, a dedicated Fallout 4 fan, which is weird, but if you are, <laughs> I could see how these images could make you excited because it's literally just Fallout 4, the TV show. Yeah, but that's what I was getting at. It's basically the ATST, ATST thing. Yeah, exactly. Kind but... of, yeah. We, we haven't quite gotten to those levels yet based on what he's shown, but we're definitely mm. going to get there. Come to the big screen. Oh shit, mine's doing the load circle of doom. Hold on. Mine skipped, I'm yeah. I'm gonna refresh watch again. Who cares if the vault door goes outside the mouth? Come on, man. It's about... Like, it, it's not a big deal. I'm not saying the vault door thing ruins anything. I'm just pointing out an inconsistency. On the west coast, they tended to open one way. On the east coast, Bethesda invented a new way for them to open. Yeah. Because, again, Bethesda like, didn't not... learn anything from Fallout, like, at all. They didn't give a shit in the slightest. No. Just because we bring something up, it doesn't necessarily mean we think it's, like, the biggest deal. It's just something we noticed that we felt yeah, like, it's, it's I want to point it out. Yeah, yeah, it's a nitpick. It's just, it's literally just, I want to I want to point it out. Yeah, it is it's a about problem, the biggest deal. but it doesn't destroy anything yet. Now, if there's thousands of nitpicks, absolutely. Yeah. The Fallout universe come to the big screen. However, the images do raise a few concerns with me. I agree, because look, we have the Fallout 4 assault rifle, that horrible abomination against physics and mankind. Yeah, shockingly, even fans of Fallout 4 did not like that thing, so I'm surprised they brought it over. Yeah, and shockingly, they managed to make it even worse here. 
Look at that thing. This is something that a normal person without power armor is supposed to be able to wield, too. Yes. Yeah, that's insane. And, and remember, they Bethesda are so stupid, they specifically said they made the assault rifle so that power armor could use it, even though we've seen in every other game that power armor can use any weapon. Yeah. Like, it, it's yeah. so stupid. The, the, the entire concept, creation, and execution of the assault rifle in Fallout 4 is an abomination. Hold on, I need to grab something here. I literally commented on that. You didn't respond to that. Come on, Cree. I'm not going to respond to every comment. I've said this before. If I see a comment talking about something we're going to talk about in the video like this, I there's no reason for me to bring it up, uh, to cover it, to respond to the comment earlier if we're going to get to it and cover it in the video anyways. Yeah. These are yeah. people who've probably never seen a gun in real life. There's no other explanation for that gun. Kind of. The problem is, is that Bethesda are also obsessed with guns to the point where they'll build entire engine things dedicated to just the guns so they can make the guns gun. And I, I think, I think the issue is they, they like guns. They just think like, oh, I know how I could improve it. I know how this could be better. But it's in like that 14 year old way where it's like, Oh, I know how I can make this better. If I just slap this thing on it, you, I, it doesn't have to make sense. As long as it, you know, it just, you, yeah. it just works. Okay, it just works. Oh, machine guns were so much better when the barrels couldn't melt, no matter how much ammunition you put through it. That's why the water jacket is superior to air cooling. It's like, yeah, yeah. that's why the water jacket also weighs fifty pounds fucking heavier, dumbass. Yeah, there's a reason why you like we don't have those. They're too heavy. It, you basically can only use them for stationary mounted machine guns. Yeah, those are the ones where you literally had to put up the bipod and, like, make it a crew-serviced weapon. Mm-hmm. Or, sorry, not the bipod, the tripod, because you had to carry around the tripod. Ten dollars from Grandmaster Pi. Thank you. Could the different ways for the doors opening be explained by logistical constraints at the sp a specific time the vault was created? Just playing devil's advocate. I don't know. I don't no, know why there's... No, because... The reason why would be... Why would you change your entire process for something that would cost you more? Like, it, it doesn't make any sense. Being on the outside, you need more mechanisms to do, so... I, you could assume... I mean, actually, you can't. Like, why would you assume that Vault 101 was built before Vault 13? So, like, they just became less efficient and made shit worse? I'm... I don't... I'm not familiar with, like, the mechanics behind either door setup. I just know that they're different for some reason. Um, I don't know what the lore well, difference is in universe, but I do know that it appears that Bethesda wanted it their way, so they got their way because they own the franchise and could do whatever they want. Think of it this way. On the Fallout 1 and 2, uh, face the West Coast, we'll just say West Coast uh, Vault, all of your mechanisms, your mechanical systems, and everything you need to operate the vault door is inside the vault with you. So if it ever breaks down and you need to leave the vault, you can get to it, repair it, and actually yeah, get the vault sense. door open. That makes sense, yeah. On the East Coast, most of your mechanisms are inside. Your vital mechanisms are on the outside of the vault. You cannot access if something goes wrong, and it's exposed to all the elements and everything outside the fucking vault. So it's a worse design that it costs way more resources and makes it more like you're stuck in a tomb forever because if anything on the outside system goes wrong, you're fucked. Yeah. That makes sense. Because remember, the, the vault doors, they specifically show this, they don't just open outwards. They open outwards and then they have the rolling mechanism to roll them out of the way and everything. And that all that all those mechanisms have to be on the outside of the vault.
$28 from Lady Fire Panda. Thank you. Good after day, Stag Crew. Just joined the stream and was wondering how good is the video we are watching, and are you guys going to watch a Fallout show when it comes out? Uh, we will probably cover the Fallout TV show when it comes out, yeah. We kind of have to, just based off of the content that's made around Stag and everything. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Um... But I want to answer this. Uh, so Caffeine's like, aren't there control panels on both sides? The control panel's not the problem. The problem is, what happens if your hydraulics... The mechanics of opening a door itself. Outside? Yeah. Like, the door itself is I don't, the problem. I don't want to spend all day on the fucking door. It's not that big of a deal. It was just pointing it out. Yeah, yeah. I'm just explaining because we had that person ask, like, what... No, I know, but it's also a thing that? that keeps coming up in chat, so... Fair. It's like, yeah, it's it's just a door. We just commented that it's different. We can leave it at that. Yeah, but it's different and also worse. Images came with a caption, and Prime Video released an official summary. Hang on a second, mine's doing the load doom again. All right, I'm going to open up Chrome, and that should hopefully fix it. All right, let me know when you're back in then. Yeah, Brave just does not like watching again. Open the door. Chat can't see it, but we have three dress cars. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> one was the first Brave, and then I updated the browser and made a second one of me, and now I'm using Chrome, so it's, I have a third one of me. Now there's three of them. <laughs> this is getting out of hand. Yep. A coup is in the works, and he's going to try and overpower. He's going to take over the watch together. Well, he has more yep. votes than us now. He's got three yeah. votes to our two. Yep. Voting block power. Um, God, I keep looking at this fucking rifle. I hate it. I hate it. It even has like the little thing where you would put the water in for the water jacket, but how much you want to bet they'll never open it. You'll never see them filling this thing up. Yeah, and how much you want to bet that the strong, independent whammon is going to shoulder fire this thing? Yeah, exactly. Well, we, we don't I, I know that yet. It. We don't know that yet. I'm I, not... I'm <sighs> placing a bet. Again, that's why we said how much you want to bet, not you know, I guarantee. Sort of Fair. Thing. That ghoul looked like overcooked oven pizza. The ghoul does not look good. I've seen people comparing him to Red Skull from the MCU, and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, kinda. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the Fallout 4 ghoul design. Uh, the magazine isn't actually on the wrong side, so this is a a, a pseudo belt fed weapon. I, I say pseudo because that's obviously what it's supposed to be. They turn it into a magazine fed weapon, but the belt coming from the left side going through the middle of the gun out to the right is totally fine. Like the the magazine placement's not bad. It, it's kind of like the old Marine Corps striker in that regard. I just realized the way he's holding this thing. It, it's actually the opposite from how the game usually is because they actually put the ejection port on the right side on this thing in the game. But here mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because he's holding it on the wrong hand. So it's just going <laughs> to fire shell casings into his face anyway. Well, no, 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 Pagan. The shell casings are going to defy gravity and go off to the left still anyways. Oh, you're right. He's just <laughs> improving the design. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, he realized that's an issue and just said, well, fuck it, I'll hold it in the other hand, and that way they'll magically fly up and over to the other side. It gets worse the longer you look. It does. I hate this thing. I don't know how they took something that's, like, so bad and made it even worse. Yeah. I mean, have... like, there, there isn't anything good on, the, on this weapon. We've talked like... about this gun extensively on stream before. Yeah. yeah, it's just absolutely <laughs> awful. There, There is no redeeming qualities of this weapon. This weapon is one of the biggest, like, abominations of firearms ever created in media. $28 from Lady Fire Panda. Thank you. 
What's the worst thing the Fallout TV show could do to ruin the lore of Fallout? I mean, there's so many things they can do, but, um... They could, uh, I guess, undo the Master, undo anything in New Vegas, undo, uh, a lot of stuff in Fallout 2. I yeah. mean, that's pretty much the entire franchise right there. Yeah. Like, There's a lot they could do by saying it on the West Coast, where it's just like, oh yeah, we could just make it so the NCR never happened, the Master never happened. Yeah. House uh, doesn't exist, or like, House took over, and because he's a dirty capitalist, like, it, it collapsed or whatever, you know? Yeah, just, which I oh, am boy, worried about there. Rumors. Yeah, it's like, are they going to even reference that these things exist, or are they going to actually erase them? Because this takes place, apparently, like, nine years after the events of Fallout 4. So, all of that stuff should still be referenced, or, in New Vegas' case, still be around. Oh, God, I didn't even think about what they'd probably do to the Legion. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to break, break this to you, chat. The Legion will still be around nine years after Fallout 4. I'm just afraid we're going to see fucking Institute stuff now, too. Not that yeah. I fear them being ruined. You can't ruin what's already broken on every level. I'm afraid they're going to be further incorporated into the lore. Yeah, oh god, I really don't want to hear about a oh, fucking we've, nether. We've, oh my god, they've been replaced by a synth. Oh, I can't, I don't. <laughs> we've, got a second, don't wanna... <laughs> we've got a second institute on the West Coast. Yeah, oh, no. the San Francisco <laughs> Institute of Technology or some bullshit. <laughs> yeah. We're totally in contact the whole time, and the Institute had teleporter technology, and they just teleported stuff across the fucking, <laughs> across the fucking United States 3,000 miles. Oh no, the second game's been hit, sir. Another plane. <laughs> 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 oh god, did you see that? The comic of the people going back in time to stop the hijackers. And they're like, what? Yes, we did it. We saved the towers. Yeah. <laughs> and then the tower blows up on the inside. And they're like, they just have the grim face, like, mm. <laughs> Like, wait, wait a minute. Oh my god. Never we mind. watched, <laughs> me and Cree watched a really good video the other day by uh, Cultured Crusader. And he had a joke in there <laughs> where he talks about <laughs> Halo coming out in 2001 <laughs> in reference to um, <laughs> the time scale for when uh, something was taking place. And <laughs> he does, <laughs> he has like two, uh, I think it's like bookshelves if from Minecraft. Minecraft. Ne yeah, next to each other, and then the Halo logo coming in towards it with the Halo theme playing. And, and you can just see New York below. Uh, $2 from Evil World, thank you. My bet is this TV show will be full of bugs. Yeah, probably. Uh, well, it's funny you would say, I'm not going to say what they said on, because, you know, people can just read it on the thing. Uh, but it's funny you say that, Nubicus, because we've heard some things. Some really not pleasant things about this show already. Yeah. Yeah. The article is going to be very enlightening when we get to it, I'll say that. Great. Each of the images came with a caption. Okay, I, I know we literally just paused it, but yeah, look at that. Just just look at this chat. He he looks like a discount Red Skull. He looks like... He really does. He looks like the Red Skull I would expect from, like, an early 2000s MCU adaptation. Like, imagine if there was a Captain America show that was made in the early 2000s. This is what I would expect Red Skull to look like in that show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It literally just looks like a guy with no nose and very wrinkly. Like, like he's an old, like a very old person. It doesn't look like a ghoul. He looks That's my problem. Like yeah. He looks like someone who's got look... sunburnt. Yeah, it looks like a really bad sunburn or like a burn victim or something. It does not look like he's been affected by radiation and his skin is falling off. It does not look like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, he is... He is literally, if he was actually 
to show up in a ghoul colony looking like this. He would be the most handsome, sexy ghoul in that entire fucking colony. They'd probably call him a smooth skin. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, they would say, like, you're not actually a ghoul. No. <laughs> you you can't have gotten that lucky. Yeah, no, you, you've just been disfigured. Like, you got your nose sliced off, and now you're trying to say you're a ghoul or some shit. You got yeah. caught by raiders, and they, they cut your nose off as a joke. Maybe they skinned you as well, and that's now you're trying to claim ghoul shit. Uh, $28 from Lady Fire Panda. Thank you. Now that I think about it, I shouldn't ask you guys what they can do to ruin the Fallout lore, because we shouldn't think about it and just consume the product. Yes, don't think, <laughs> just right. consume. Yeah, yeah just consume. <laughs> Is this what they call ghoul face? <laughs> <laughs> Two euros from uh, Corktail. Thank you. Finally, smooth skin ghoul. Yeah, he's both. <laughs> yep. Fifty dollars from Hand of Themis. Thank you. The tithe. See you next time. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Very much appreciated. Prime. Ray. Re. Video released an official summary of the show. We learn that the story takes place in the ruins of Los Angeles on the West Coast 200 years after the apocalypse. Yeah, it's fucked. It's completely yep. fucked. It's oh over. God. It's all over. <laughs> it's not going. The West Coast is not going to come out unscathed. I could say that. It yeah, already no isn't. Yeah. It, it already yeah. isn't unscathed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> This this is the wham, but real. Mm -hmm. God damn it! <laughs> I need that. I need that clip. That anime clip of the the anime girl on the fire just. Ah! <laughs> 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 oh God! This is a number we're familiar with as the events of Fallout 3 take place 200 years after the apocalypse of 2077 in the year 2277. They specify this a bit more by saying that it's exactly 219 years after the apocalypse. With the events of Fallout 4 taking place 10 years after the events of Fallout 3, that means this story takes place 9 years after the events of Fallout 4. Which means we could get a canonical ending to Fallout 4 if they make reference to events that happened on the East Coast in Boston. Which, why would they? Again, you have, it, to put this in perspective, chat, you have a 3,000 mile difference in location. Why would anybody in the post-apocalypse give a shit about the East Coast at all? Well, Ooh, Such, when the here. fuck has that ever mattered? Yeah. Well, you see, Setch, the Brotherhood from the East Coast are oh, potentially God. on the West Coast now and have taken over the West Coast. Because some of these images, oh yeah. boy, it's got some bad implications where it's like, hmm, yeah. that shouldn't be there. That was only on the East Coast. Does that mean that they came from the East Coast? I sure yeah. fucking hope not. I'm, I'm really, really not looking forward to this. It's going to be awful. I can imagine them doing the thing where they, they're they still non-committal on Fallout 4's ending, and we just see, like, both the Institute and the Brotherhood alive. It's like, wait a second. No, right? no, 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 it might be even worse than that. They might be saying, like, oh, we left before uh, their conflict was brewing when we left, and, you know, we haven't heard from them ever since, or whatever. They'll just lazy do that, or whatever. Hmm. <laughs> um, fast travel? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We opened up our pit boys and we selected the West Coast. <laughs> show. I kind of hope they don't do that. But with the show taking place in Los Angeles, the NCR should be involved somehow. After all, we learned from the events of Fallout 2 that the L.A. Boneyard, that is Los Angeles, was absorbed by the NCR and was yes. still part of NCR by the time of Fallout New Vegas. And New Vegas takes place in 2281, between the events of Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. The show centers around the survivors from Vault 33. 
Vault 33 hasn't been mentioned by any of the games so far, and it's numbered according to the way that vaults are numbered on the West Coast. So far, so good. <laughs> no, no, not so far, so good. No, I would yeah, not say so far, so good. You should be very, very fucking worried about that. Like, Bethesda's Todd Slop nonsense is, like, coming over and encroaching and infecting the West Coast now. I I, I think yeah, but he, he doesn't consider it that way. Uh, it's true. He but... likes the Todd slop. I also think by so far so good, he means that like, okay, it's a vault that hasn't been mentioned, so it's not stepping on anything immediately. It's numbered properly for the West Coast, so it's not stepping yeah. on anything. Um, it takes place in Los Angeles, which is part of the NCR, so there should be NCR there, but we don't know yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to assume best faith there. The voices will not stop came in clutch, and, uh... Oh, no. <laughs> there we go. Oh, no. Yeah, that, that is my reaction to this. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let me play this. <laughs> Thank you, voices. I am stealing this for use. It might even put it in the Doctor Who video. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I'm going to assume best faith here. By so far, so good, he means, like, from that little bit of information he just explained, it's not contradicting anything yet. Which, yeah. sure, that's that's fine, I guess. The, yeah, the, the, big, the big problem is, yeah. Yeah. yeah, for us, it's worrisome just because it's literally, you know, Bethesda encroaching on the West Coast. But so far, if you're like, you know, you're excluding that factor from it. So far, so good. Yes. But that's going to change very quickly. Yeah. Characters is Lucy, an optimistic vault dweller. Her father, Hank, the overseer of Vault 33 a nameless ghoul who's a wasteland bounty hunter with a mysterious past, and Maximus, a soldier in the militaristic faction called the Brotherhood of Steel. Amazon Prime Video describes the Brotherhood's mission as bringing law and order to the wasteland. Congratulations, oh, you fucked it already. Fucking goddamn it. Yeah. You absolutely <laughs> fucked it. That is not the Brotherhood of Steel at all. Yeah, and I'm really glad that Oxhorn actually calls this out, because he's like, yeah, no, that doesn't make any sense, that the Brotherhood would not give a shit about fucking law and order. Yeah, we've been pretty hard on uh, Oxhorn before, because he has said some silly things, like, you know, scientists retcon reality all the time. But genuine credit to him here for pointing this out as being fucked up, because it absolutely is. Yeah, because, yeah, it makes no sense. I am also glad that he mentioned the NCR because it's weird that here are four main characters and there is no mention of the NCR that I could see in this snippet of article. You know what probably happened and now that I'm dreading? Brotherhood took over the NCR. No, Brotherhood killed the NCR. Because I mean, yeah. the either NCR and the Brotherhood were at war. Either like, option is bad, life. but yeah. Yeah, and that's one of the things I've been worried about because of all the stuff we've been seeing about the Brotherhood being on the West Coast in full force, that doesn't make sense. That should not be possible given the lore of the West Coast. The fa that faction should be basically dead. And yet yes. here it is, full force with airships and no mention of the NCR. This that, is... that has very heavy implications for what happened. This is already so much worse than I could have possibly predicted. Mm. Yeah. All the smacks of wanting to eliminate New Vegas from lore because Obsidian made it. Maybe. We're going to have to see how I mean, bad this gets. Hot is a like, petty little shit, Snake. I, I, I want to still attempt at least a little benefit of the doubt. Maybe they just fucked up super hard and didn't mention the NCR at all because they forgot for some reason. Maybe the NCR <laughs> is totally in the show and not fucked up. I have Danny no reason to believe forgot. this at all. Aside from, like, just... I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to assume you didn't fuck things up as hard as possible. 
Danny kind of forgot the NCR fleet existed. <laughs> yeah, that's the joke everyone's been making is somehow the Brotherhood of Steel returned. <laughs> yeah, again, they were a mistake to be in Fallout 3. They were a mistake to double down on Fallout 4. Like, this this is just awful. The, the Brotherhood of Steel is a faction that failed the test of time. They, they're yep. done. That's that is what it should have been. That was in keeping with the original Fallouts. The Brotherhood of Steel didn't adapt, and they have been left behind in the new world. Yeah. Like, I could... Uh, I, I hate ups, uh, uh, Bethesda's way of doing the Brotherhood on the East Coast. I hate it. I hate that they're even there. But if we're going with just the fact that, well, too bad they're there. Okay. I can somewhat see with the way that they did it on the East Coast, where it's like, okay, they're adapting, they're changing, they're doing things that make sense for a faction that wants to grow to do. I can somewhat see how they could become a growing force on the East Coast. Okay, fine. Not the West Coast. That makes no sense. They failed on the West Coast. That That is like the whole point. There's no way they could come back from that. They failed. They refused yeah. to change. Yep. And God, I, I'm just, I'm also thinking about how awful, like, imagine because if, if they attacked the NCR, like, they would have been at war with the Legion as well. I just, God, what what is this show going to do with the Legion, the NCR? If they even mention them. Yeah, because well, that's like they might they not to. even. Now they, they fucked themselves. They're on the west coast in in CR territory. Yeah, they still might not mention them though. That, that's yeah, <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> that's, they that's... could literally just be like, yeah, they did. They never existed. The fuck you talking about? Yeah, um, that's something we have to consider. Is this show may take place entirely within NCR territory without a single mention of the NCR. I, I would not put it past them to screw up that hard. Yep. <laughs> because you got to keep in mind, where this is taking place, it absolutely would be within NCR territory. They were all the way down in Baja. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a big area for the NCR to cover. And it's like, yeah, no, they would have to be mentioned in some form if this is taking place in Los Angeles. But we don't even need to go that far because, as Oxhorn already pointed out, Los Angeles is NCR territory, like, in yeah. lore, in Fallout yeah. 2. So by yeah. default... I'm pretty sure all of California is just straight up NCR territory. All of California. Yep. Probably, yeah. I think, I'm pretty sure that was the lore in, like, uh, Fallout New Vegas, was that all of California was under NCR control. And I think it was, like... It extended like halfway into Oregon, and the Legion tried to like come around from the top of Oregon, but couldn't get through. Yeah, we have a whole uh, fan-made mod dedicated to exploring that conflict. <laughs> hmm. yeah. yeah, it yeah, was and... very well done. It <laughs> definitely had all the right tones and. Yeah, and, <laughs> and not all the stuff that fit in Fallout other games whatsoever. Yeah, <laughs> very, very fitting for Fallout. None of it was yeah. at all not fitting. There, there was no flying to space and uh, going on a space station in a drug fueled like nightmare vision quest. None of that happened. Yeah, we're barely into this uh, video. He's barely into the article, and there's already a lot of bad signs here. Um. Again, just to go back to the point he mentioned right before we uh, paused, the bro the the nobility of the Brotherhood's mission to bring law and order to the wasteland it's already over. This is info yeah. I believe coming from the showrunners. That's being presented through the uh, article. It's over. It is over. You do not yeah. come back from fucking up a faction's lore that bad. A faction this big to the series. It being part of your pre-release material. This description is part of why I'm worried that maybe it's literally just the East Coast Brotherhood came to the West Coast and they could literally just be like, well, we're not fucking up the lore. This is our lore. This makes sense. It makes sense that 
our brotherhood that we created on the East Coast, if they were to go to the West Coast, yeah, this is what they would do. And it's like, oh, no, please don't. Yeah. As people are saying in chat, it's Jover. It's so Jover. It yeah. really is. God, I really wish this screen was on the soundboard. I would have played it right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jover. Ah! I'll play it for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you posted it on our group chat because I could just play it anytime you want now. <laughs> Ooh, whoops. Okay, we've stumbled upon a bit of a problem. That's not the Brotherhood's goal. Are you sure you're just not being intoxicated, Roxhorn? What if that is the Brotherhood's goal? Because, yeah, you know, when, when people... Are you sure you're thinking about it as something you actually wanted? <laughs> when, yeah, when people are you sure you're not a get... disease? Like, <laughs> do you think maybe you have a brain disease? Yeah, people who talk about things like this in a negative way are just looking to be negative, and they're sick they in the head. Help it. They can't help it because of their <laughs> brain disease. It makes them negative. But it's just an addition retcon, Oxhorn. Yeah, exactly! Exa thank you, uh, Ghidra. And remember, yeah, as we scientists, know, scientists retcon reality out. all the time. <laughs> 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 I know we are giving him a lot of shit here, but he is actually right for pointing this out. Um, yes, he is completely right. <laughs> he is pointing out stuff. He does have valid points. He is correct here. It's just funny to point this shit out because of his... His stance in the past kind of, it's hard to ignore that, where it's like, do, do you not understand how out of left field this is for him to be yeah. saying this kind of stuff? Where it's like, well, just to give an example, we've covered several videos on Stag before where people are like, oh yeah, uh, there's no such thing as objectivity. It would be like them saying, yeah, this thing is objectively bad. Here's all my reasons why. Here's all my evidence why. And it's just like, what? But you, yeah. you said that doesn't exist. Yep. So for him to, like, be critical of this is kind of shocking. <laughs> <laughs> wow, is a man not allowed to redeem himself? Jeez, cancel culture is real. Shake my head, shake my head. <laughs> I just joined, and is this clone go try and defend this show? Actually, no. He's uh, been no. critical of it so far, which, like, he, he's bringing up genuine questions. And it's like, yeah, that, that's good. I, I'm genuinely happy to see that. Yeah, he's more softball on the show uh, than we are because he was talking about other stuff, and he's like, that's all fine and good now. It's like, no, that's a terrible, that's a red flag warning sign right there already. But he he's at least getting the into the stuff where even he, a hardcore Bethesda shill and diehard fanatic, is like, <laughs> oh, this is bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. Is a man not entitled to the milk of his female raider slaves? <laughs> <laughs> so, so the thing is, he is mm. being critical of this. He is pointing out stuff that doesn't make sense. However, Oxhorn is the type of person I could absolutely see him defending the show when it comes out as long as Bethesda does something to explain this stuff. If they give some half-assed reason for why the NCR doesn't exist anymore or why the Brotherhood is on the West Coast in full force... He'll just completely forgive it because he'll be like, oh, well, see, they explained it, guys. Yeah. We're That's just the problem. We're just giving him credit in the moment for noticing these problems. We're, we're going to have to see yeah. how everything pans out. People it, in chat I are confused. Have more, I will have more faith in him if he sticks to this and he continues to criticize the show, even if Bethesda gives really awful explanations, just like literally like hand waves away a bunch of stuff, but puts in like the mildest amount of effort to explain why things are the way they are. It, I will have more respect for him if he calls that shit out and says that's stupid, that, you know, that doesn't make any sense, you can't just do that. I will have more respect for him if he does that, but if he literally just goes, oh, well, come on, guys, they they explained it, but that's to put a reason in. You can't criticize it now. 
Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Which I can definitely see him doing. I can definitely see him being the type of person who would then defend the show because, well, my favorite game company, defend, you know, they gave a reason. So that's good enough for me. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to mention quickly, there are a few people in chat confused by the thing I read out. That was a comment from the voices uh, will not stop. <laughs> it was funny. Um, uh, God, there's another comment here. Where did it go? Bad Company Surge will watch it religiously for the next coming year. Oh, yeah. This is his next big hope after the failure of Starfield and the failure of uh, Fallout 76. He needs a win <laughs> oh, right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, he will absolutely latch onto this, and he will have, like, every time an episode comes out, he will make, like, a dozen videos on it. Oh, yeah, he's gonna have a fucking death grip on this thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> God, did you see Ackman is already defending the show? Of course he is. I yeah, mean, he's yeah. already... People, uh, for whatever reason, people thought Ackman was, like, this really good and down-to-earth and in-touch content creator. It's like, no, he's always been an idiot. I don't know where this this weird thing of like, oh, he's such a good creator. It's like he's not. Have you actually watched his videos and listened to what he says? They're they're he's genuinely an idiot. I think what it was is he had a couple of good videos, and everybody just like cherry picked those. They would always just post those videos, and they would ignore the other ones. I think one that's of the ones that people tried to cherry pick was the Dark Souls video. I watched that, and it was like. It was good up to the 30 minute mark, and then suddenly it's like the meds stopped working. I've never uh, really watched the act, man. The first time I realized he even existed, I think, was the Quantum TV drama. His Halo ones can't be that good because he said Reach is a good game. Like, <laughs> automatically, you're already fucked. <laughs> to be fair. That was the opinion of a lot of people for the longest time. It wasn't until well, recently again, that people it's really... It's like, oh, it wasn't until recently people actually started using their brain and like... Wait, Basically, yes. I mean, think about it. Look at all the shit that's been happening lately with how many people are waking up. It's like, yeah, it happens. That shit literally happens where people just wake up one day and they're like, ah, you know what? That is kind of shit. Why did I like that? Oh, it that, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, that does destroy the entire universe's canon. Oh. Yeah, exactly. I ha I thought Breach was a good game until people started pointing out all the problems, and it was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, that is an issue, isn't it? I didn't even think about that. That's how I was with Fallout 3 for the longest time as well. If you ignore the narrative, what about the gameplay is bad with Breach? It's Halo, but worse. That's the problem with Reach. Yeah. Like, they, they owe it pure gimmick and style over any sort of substance. To the point where they have fucking multiplayer power-ups in the single-player game, like, system. And one of the multiplayer power-ups is the ability to sprint in your armor, and you sprint for a second and a half and then get winded as a fucking <laughs> Spartan. It's like, Jesus Christ. Oh no, God, don't let him go into discussing Reach. We need to get through this in a reasonable time. Yeah, Satch, fuck yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> We're not getting into it. We've got too much on our plate already. But yeah, Love. seeing Ackman just being Love. like, oh yeah, it's, this this looks great. It's, it's definitely keeping in tone with the lore of the games. And I'm just like, fuck off. Fuck <laughs> off. You have no clue what you're talking about. Especially once we get into the article and probably the uh the trailer honestly i think the trailer will probably be worse than the article but the article is still pretty bad <laughs> yeah oh great <clears throat> uh five dollars from another texan bowl thank you check out operation sunburst by sodaz it's a fan film of the battle for helios one made by one guy it's a work in progress but it's so good oh and goat milk <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have you. been watching those. I've been keeping up with uh, the Operation Sunburst stuff. It's looking really good. Alright, let's continue this. ...is a technology cult. Every single Fallout game... Also, Jesus fucking Christ, Oxworn, can you stop using mods for everything? <laughs> like, just stop. How does this make the Brotherhood look better? <laughs> Makes them look edgy. Yeah, this is 
really fucking bad. The Brotherhood of oh, Edge. He always he always picks like really dog shit mods too. <laughs> yeah, like, um off. back in the infamous uh Brotherhood of Steel folder incident, like yeah. it, his the cocktail of mods he had made it so like um there were holes in the textures where, uh, you know, there's like peeling paint on like the walls and ceilings and stuff. Mm. You you would see the peeling paint, but the wall behind it would be just like see through. It's yeah. like how how do you fuck up that bad? Yeah, he he really needs to stop doing mods like really, really bad. Yeah, because like. For anyone who might not know about the games and they're coming into this, it's like, okay, here's a here's a big Fallout channel that's talking about the show and he seems kind of concerned about it. Someone who doesn't know anything about the franchise, then they see the Brotherhood of Cringe right here. It's like, oh, is is that is that what they look like in game? Yeah. Oh. Do 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 they slit their wrists and listen to fucking Crawling by Linkin Park on repeat? <laughs> it's all that's playing <laughs> they wake up in the morning every morning instead of playing fucking the bugle or the call to call the stand now it's gonna be <laughs> <laughs> that's time to get up for the day oh, I'm too depressed crystal clear the brotherhood of steel hoards technology because they believe again with these mods, how does this make the game look better? This it, looks. This is so blown out and washed out nonsense. <laughs> how? <laughs> Stop it, Octor! Just get them out. It's it's literally the exact meme. Stop it! Get some help. It is. Cause like I don't know. I I can understand I if it at ahead, least ahead, improved the visuals. You know there are mods for these games that can improve the visuals. This is actively making it worse. Look how shit this is. Uh, yeah, it's like yeah. got rid of all the shadows on everything. <laughs> it's like what the fuck? I don't know why so many people like the E and B's for Fallout. They look so bad most of the time. I I was looking at one today and I was like, oh my god, this is some of the worst like E and B shit I've ever seen. I yeah. don't know why people like this stuff. Just get Dynavision three and go through the fucking like the sections that improve the fucking visuals a little bit you don't need this this is awful M e and b's look so bad in fallout i don't know why people <laughs> use them he's using every emb mod at once <laughs> they're all the emb mods on at the same time <laughs> yeah guys ch chat tell me if you can see a shadow anywhere in this fucking image <laughs> <laughs> there isn't any They've eliminated the shadow people. The shadows are gone. <clears throat> it's like as if somebody went into a fucking, like, rendering program and clicked on every object and clicked Fulbright. Yeah, I was I was going to yeah. make a comment about Fulbright when, uh, when this came up. It just looks so bad. Like, you have eyes that work, right? Why would you play like this? Mm -hmm. well, he did have eyes that worked. Then he played like this. He <laughs> permanently <laughs> retinally scarred. <laughs> it's literally the SpongeBob. My eyes. Me. <laughs> <laughs> At the risk of overusing it, I'm gonna play it again. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish we could hear it when you play it. <laughs> you can play it too when I play it. Since I'm signposting, I'm gonna play it. Re. 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 Is what caused the apocalypse in 2070. Oh my god, I saw a shadow. Hang on. <laughs> That's a miracle. Did you see that shadow? <laughs> Let's also try to listen to what he's saying too, though. Still clear. The Brotherhood of Steel hoards technology because they believe technology is what caused the apocalypse. <laughs> Look at that shadow underneath the character. <laughs> it's a round circle. <laughs> <laughs> also, they have that fucking... 
power armor reanimation mod and it just makes them look so goofy when they're standing <laughs> they look so dumb hey pagan oh. what it's the a-posing pyro from yesterday <laughs> such you you weren't there for it um i've made a slight modification to uh team fortress 2 oh no yeah. <laughs> Do do you want to know what I changed my hit sound to? <laughs> Is this you doing the scientist voice? Like, no, stop! Nope. Nope, something better. So, uh, what'd you do? Plat, 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 plat! And the, the plat, kill plat, sound. Plat, plat, <laughs> get plat, pregnant. Plat, plat. Get dead, get dead, get dead! No, I, I, I made the, the kill sound get pregnant. I did fuck it up. I I, mi I missed the get. Uh, I might have to fix that, but Pagan also sent me a voice clip uh, for the kill sound that I ended up using. It's a character saying, mmm, juicy. You missed the you missed the get part, so it's plat, 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 pregnant, 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 pregnant. <laughs> It's especially funny if you're playing Saxon Hale mode and like you're you're Saxon Hale and you're punching people to death. It's just pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a game of tag, except it's <laughs> anyone who gets touched is instantly impregnated. Pregnant. Yeah, play, pregnant. Play Saxon Hale and they can't handle it, so they fall over and die of cringe. <laughs> like, but anyways, um. Again, Oxhorn is actually making a decent point here. Hey, the Brotherhood hoards technology. They're not law and order saviors of the wasteland types. Yeah. Fuck. 77. They think technology can be too easily abused, and so it needs to be kept by safe hands, namely their hands. Bringing order to the wasteland. <laughs> I'm sorry that anyone that's ever used a firearm will immediately know why I pause on this screen. You what? I love that he's just staring into the back of the laser rifle with no way he could possibly see the target. <laughs> what are you looking at there, buddy? <laughs> that's why I said anybody that's ever used firearms knows immediately why. On this yeah, because you can even see the little like nub for the sight on top of it, which is in oh. line with like the top of his helmet. Oh yep. my god! He's just staring at it like, mmm, metal. Mmm, <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> chip. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see. If I look directly at back of gun, then gun will shoot exactly where I look. <laughs> you see, that's that that's that meme of you see, comrade. When you hold pistol, like yes, this, that's what I was referencing. Front, you'll be more accurate. That's exactly <laughs> what I was referencing. <laughs> you for Ivan. You see, if you completely occlude the target with your weapon, we'll hit every time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dude! Look at the laser. Oh, I just noticed on your screen, on mine, it's not there. On yours, yeah, I on. see it. It is, it is going behind all of the pillars, but it's in, but he's in front of all of the pillars. What the? <laughs> <laughs> oh, your mom just fucked it up again. They fucked up the alpha layers on your <laughs> lasers. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, it's going even behind the fucking, the pillar all the way by the door. What the fuck? <laughs> fucking non-Euclidean physics, boys. Yeah. <laughs> I love that it looks like it's coming out at, like, an 80 degree angle, bouncing off of the far wall, and then ricocheting back over across. He's like a bee. <laughs> he's, literally, he's literally fucking bullseye from the Marvel's comics. He's shooting a pillar and bouncing it off for a trick shot. <laughs> uh, it 
gets worse the longer you look at it. Stop! <laughs> Seven, they think technology can be too easily abused, and so it needs to be kept by safe hands, namely their hands. Bringing order to the wasteland isn't their goal. Stealing technology from people in the wasteland, that's their goal. And in- Oh my god, this face. But I agree with him, yeah. Yeah. They, their goal is, they've never been ones for, oh, we care about law and order and your rights as a person or keeping you safe or anything. They've never given a shit. They're like, hey, what you got in your pocket there? What you, what you, is that some technology? Why don't you show me what's in your pocket? Just, just show me what's in your pocket. Why don't you, <laughs> love, let me see what's in your pocket there. I love that edit that somebody made of that. <laughs> Where it's just the Brotherhood guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> the cute character picks up a laser pistol and puts it away, and the Brotherhood guy just runs up from out of nowhere. What What was that you put in your pocket? Just just turn out your pockets real quick. Yeah. What's, in well, your what's in your pocket? Just open your pocket. What's pocket. in your pocket? <laughs> Give me your pocket. <laughs> um... Three-month membership message from Waylay108. Thank you. Howdy, fellers. Hope everyone's Thanksgiving was great. What'd I miss? Um, some bad mods and Oxhorn actually making a good point. Oh, yeah. It was Thanksgiving since last time. Yeah, I had a fantastic Thanksgiving <clears throat> feast. I made a bunch of food. I made pretzel bites, two different turkeys, my three meat chili. I, I made sure our Thanksgiving was a feast. And it yeah. went over incredibly well. Like, it, was, it was a great time with all the family. Nice. Yeah, we had a pretty good uh, Thanksgiving as well. Yeah. Cooked a bunch of food. The turkey came out really good. Oh, it was so good. It's... Brotherhood tries to make the Wasteland a better place. They get a lot of pushback from other members of the Brotherhood who think that they're out of line. This was a huge part of Fallout 3. Elder Lyons, who was in charge of the Brotherhood in the Capital Wasteland, was helping the people of the Wasteland. He wanted to get the water purifier working to help the people of the Wasteland. He didn't care about hoarding technology. Because of... Which, again, makes him a heretic. He should have been the outcast. Yeah. Elder Lyons should have been the fucking outcast. The fact that the majority agreed with him is insane. Yeah. Because they're, they're a techno cult. They're, they're not just a, te a techno cult, they're the technophile cult. Yeah, it's going against pretty much everything they've like been indoctrinated to uh, care about for... At least as long as they've been a part of the Brotherhood. Some of them were probably born into it. So it should be like even like more deeply rooted, you know? Yeah. What if they call the proper brotherhood in the show the outcasts again? They're, we're probably not going to get that again. Cuz um I believe it's Fallout 4's lore that the re uh the the outcasts, why did I almost say recasts? The outcasts <laughs> have been reincorporated into Lion's Brotherhood. So. Which, again, also doesn't make any sense because the philosophy of Lion's Brotherhood didn't change. Um, I think part of it is that they changed somewhat. Remember that Lion's uh, is gone, both of them. So the, the main leadership that, was, that had that change, it's gone. And it, it's actually the thing I have the least amount of issue with in Fallout 4 is they aren't saviors of the wasteland helping people anymore they are a bit closer to like yeah we want technology it's that they go too far in the wrong direction with that where it's like oh yeah we need to destroy the institute because technology bad as yeah, opposed to no like, we need to control this shit yeah th th um, th they, the moment that the brotherhood learned the institute boston institute of technology existed Every single one of them is fucking dropping trow and fapping, okay? Like, they, they, this is their literal, like, heaven is being laid out before them. There is no way they would destroy that technology. This is literally, like, what their afterlife would be. Kinda, yeah. Uh, such would it be acceptable if the East Coast Brotherhood and had some event where their humanity won out over their religious beliefs? No, because the East Coast Brotherhood is already it's already beyond fucked. Like none of the East Coast Brotherhood doesn't make any sense to begin with. 
None of their stuff makes any sense. Their level of technology also doesn't make any fucking sense with the giant flying airships and bullshit that they can pull now. I and there there's I can't see any possible event that's going to undoctrinate, like re-educate the entirety of the Brotherhood. I mean, again, they already fucked it by saying somehow Elder Lions had the majority go against their dogmatic beliefs. Brotherhood would conquer the Institute HQ and make it their new headquarters. They'd be stupid not to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If they truly think the synths are abominations, they would shut all of that shit down. But the Institute worked on technology outside of just the synths that would be extremely useful. Hell, if you shut down every single program they had going within the Institute, you still have a safe place with fucking teleportation and a reactor that will have, like, it'll take care of all of your energy needs. This is ignoring all the, like, agricultural uh, discoveries they've done, all the medical breakthroughs they've had to, like, heal the sick and injured and stuff. Which is implied yeah. to be quite a bit, by the way. All of the just hydroponics, like, breakthroughs to get those that level of botanical the like, fact stuff to, to, to even have a basic city underneath the ground functional. Yeah, the fact that they even have, they're like, um, I think it's the, the bio labs or whatever. It's one section of the Institute where, like, yeah, they're clearly growing a bunch of plants. That room alone is enough of a reason to keep the Institute, like, building around. Yeah, yep. it, it, like, mm -hmm. even execute all the scientists there if you want, I don't care. The, the Brotherhood would not get rid of such a valuable resource. Because, oh my god, since we gotta blow it up. No, that's not the Brotherhood. Yeah, and uh, just for their knights and paladins, the, the fucking plasma weapons, holy shit. They would, they would absolutely be, like, incorporating that and learning how to mass manufacture that for their troops. Maybe. I don't know if the Institute actually has plasma weapons. I know, and I think I forgot to put this in Part 4 of the Fallout 4 analysis, but the Institute laser guns are actually worse than the, like, regular laser guns. Yeah, they are really bad. Which is kind yeah. of insane. Yeah, it doesn't really make any sense why... <laughs> their weapons would be so much worse than 200 year old I would have technology. to assume it's purely a gameplay thing where oh you're going to kill this many synths over the course of the game and of course they're all going to be equipped with the same weapons so we have to nerf them so they're not more powerful than the much harder to acquire old world laser guns and laser rifles you know that's yeah. the only explanation I can think of that would explain why the Institute's laser guns are worse than the actual laser guns. Yeah. I guess I, I'm more referring to in canon, you know, you would expect them to be better. Yeah. Right. Not not in gameplay terms. In gameplay terms, I'm just, it's the same thing, like, in canon, I would expect the fucking laser musket to actually be, you know, an infinite ammo thing that just requires muscle power to charge it. But, you know, in gameplay terms, nah, fuck that. It's going to use power cells and still need to be cranked because fuck you. I still really hate the laser musket. I, I hate the way they're implemented. It's a it's a great concept for like, hey, infinite ammo. You crank the generator yourself. And now you have an infinite ammo weapon. Cool. That is actually really useful. No, it's not. It's, it's a weapon that uses ammo and you have to crank it. It's so fucking stupid. Yeah. Um, IFIS13, welcome to OWL membership. Thank you. Elders cut off communication with him. An entire group of his soldiers splintered off and became the Brotherhood Outcasts. Even some of the ones who stayed, like Scribe Rothschild, were really upset with him for not focusing on the Brotherhood's true goal, which is to hoard technology. We were dispatched with a specific mission. We were sent to locate and secure any technology remaining from before the war. Lions knew that, but ignored it. 
He decided it was more important to save the people here than to obey orders from his superiors. Fine. Which again, should have meant Lyons was executed, like, as a heretic on the spot. I'm not sure if we should go that far. He should have been kicked out, though. I mean, if you're, you're, he's literally going against all their dogmatic beliefs in one fell swoop. It's not like over a series of time. It's like he got out here and was immediately like, nah, fuck it, I'm the king now. Execution yeah. just kind of seems like a lot, though. Maybe, but I mean, look, no look at New Vegas. Look no, what they did with think... New Vegas. They were going to kill Veronica because if you side with her to leave, they try to kill her. Yeah. Mm. Like, no, he would have absolutely been eating a fucking, like, power fist, at least. Straight to the back of his head. Yeah. <laughs> it, it reminds me of that uh, one reaction image where it's like, just punch through his head, and it's a guy, like, punching through the back of someone else's head and out their face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 50 SEK from IFIS13. Thank you. For Super Chat, too. Oh. Oxhorn is worried about the show? That's genuinely surprising to me. Yeah, I was shocked by yeah. it too when yeah. I heard it. I was very kind surprised of when I saw it. it. Yeah. yeah, I watched it and I was like, oh my god, even Oxhorn fears the Todd slop. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's, like, it's fucking, it's Starship Troopers, only you pull out Oxhorn and he's like, it's afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and he's citing his sources, too, which we don't often see in a lot of these videos we cover. He's actually providing yep. info, not only from the games, but from Bethesda's own game. It's like, hey, yeah, this is fucked. They're not protectors. They're not law and order types. Yeah. So, yeah. And, uh, Good job, also, Oxhorn. And honestly, here, this line, too, also like really pisses me off about how fallout 3 presents the brotherhood of steel and how the brotherhood of steel act from now on where are they getting all their power armor and shit because again that you were cut off you have no communications no reinforcements nothing where are you getting all your power armor from how are you finding all this power armor like the assumption because... i believe it's all the power armor they brought with them but that's also a problem because this is the new mm -hmm. power armor introduced in fallout 3 which is yeah. literally the weakest power armor in the entire franchise. And I'm not talking in terms of like, oh yeah, it has less damage resistance than uh, power armor from Fallout 1. I mean, canonically, this is a lower tier than we've ever seen before in the franchise. Yeah. So it's just weird. Again, it's a problem that a lot of uh, writers have of not understanding the logistics of their faction at all. Yeah. Like, the, here's, here's the super techno faction, technophile faction. Okay, well, where do they get their stuff? Well, when it came to the original Brotherhood of Steel, they had a leg up because they started the military base. That is the birth of the place of the faction. The military base had all the military power armor there. And then they went to all the other bases throughout California and started rounding up all their power armor and everything, too. Like, so it makes sense where they got theirs. Where is Elder Lions getting all of his power armor from? Because they they went to the Pentagon. I, I hate to break it to you, like, the Pentagon isn't known for having a massive military archive there with tons of weapons and gear. That's that's the yeah. brains in huge air quotes because it's the Pentagon and we know they're all idiots. That's the brains of the operation. That's not where you, you store your weapons, munitions, and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no armory there. <sighs> I yeah, thought of something it's... super cursed to say, and I'm not going to say it. <laughs> it's weird because apparently the new recruits, once they get, like, you know, further enough along that they be can become knights, they get power armor. Yep. How? It just manufactured it for it. Fallout 4 does do a disaster on this and says that there's just power armor literally everywhere. Like in a in a single in a simple locked cage beside a building is power armor sort of nonsense. In the back of a truck is power armor that nobody has ever found, by the way, for two hundred and uh eight years or whatever. Down a traveled road that established traders use. Yeah. None of them have ever looked in the back of the semi.
Hey. Think ahead. Lions directly refused orders, and so the West Coast cut us off. No communications, no reinforcements. I appreciate that Lyons believes he is doing what is right, but he should never have disobeyed orders. And in Fallout 4, when we meet the Brotherhood again, they make a point in letting us know that the Brotherhood has changed. They are no longer the same faction that existed under Elder Lyons, who's constantly trying to help everyone. No, they have gone back to their roots. They are again a faction that searches for technology to keep it in the right hands. A decade ago, the Brotherhood had almost gone completely astray. The Elder before Maxon sent us down a path that was leading nowhere. He was more concerned about charity than the preservation of technology. But when Maxon took over, he single-handedly reprioritized the Brotherhood from the ground up and put us back on the path to glory. So, I like that that line exists, I guess, but it shouldn't need to exist because Fallout 3 shouldn't have been that fucked. Yeah. Um, my biggest problem is still with the overall Fallout 4 going too far in the opposite direction where it's like, okay, yeah, they are... Uh, hoarding technology again, sure, but they are also kind of um, crazy now, where it's like, yeah, we're going to destroy the Institute when there's no reason they should. They should take it over. Yep. yep. Because of the insane technological advancements they have there. Also, unrelated, but I fucking hate that goddamn slurp audio that they do for the noodles. I Anytime I was playing Fallout 4 and somebody was eating noodles, I had to shoot them in the head. I hate that sound. It's so bad! I didn't even notice it. Oh, it's so annoying. I'm guessing it was in the background of that clip. Yes, it was in the background of that clip. And it is. It doesn't even sound like someone eating noodles. It literally just sounds like weird, wet slapping noises. I hate it. Oh. Yeah, I I didn't even notice it. Do you think Oxhorn is grifting, writing on the fact that Bethesda's public image is soured heavily by t uh, Todd's new uh, bleh, is soured heavily by Todd's newest serving a slop? I don't know. I don't think so. Um. I I mean. Honestly, there could be Maybe. any number of reasons for this. It could yeah. just be that he does genuinely find issue with this, which, if so, hey, that's a good thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, it's definitely no secret that we've had our problems with uh, Oxhorn's content before. We've mentioned it numerous times on stream already. But I like to see people improve and get better. And while I doubt this is a actual step in that direction if it were that would be a good thing and i'd be happy to see that oh hey he's actually you know using uh, critical thinking on this and being like wait that doesn't sound right though because the game said this and now they're saying that that makes no sense the fact that he's pointing yeah. it out here is kind of shocking and i'm genuinely glad he's pointing it out especially like a channel as big as his that gets as many views as he does that's the kind of thing that's going to sway a lot of people's opinions and like he's he's pointing out key things to people that you know we might have more people questioning stuff like this like hey he's right that doesn't make sense you know yep and the thing I think and I think somebody in the chat said it earlier, and I think it might be true, is that Starfield probably broke a lot of people when yeah. it came to their unshakable faith in Bethesda. Like, Starfield is genuinely so bad that, and again, after, especially after they hyped up 25 years in development, they, that was a big mistake. If it did take 25 years, I still wouldn't say it took 25 years, ever. Like, there's nothing good can come of saying something like that in your marketing. Only if it's, like, genuinely the best game ever made. And by best game ever made, I mean, like, 
Baldur's Gate times, or sorry, Baldur's Gate 3 times 10. Yeah. Like, you need to hit that level and then some to even try to claim that. And like I said, I think that's just a bad thing to say in marketing. Yeah. Just just in general. There's especially, nothing good that. Especially when the game is this shallow and stupid and terrible and awful. Yeah. Like, we know Todd and Bethesda don't have any self-reflection capability whatsoever, but you would hope that somebody on the team would have looked at this and been like, uh, sir, maybe this isn't gonna go well, sir. Maybe, maybe we should rethink, like, our marketing of, like, hyping up to the fact that it took us 25 years to put this out. Not is mentioned here. They don't mention technology at all. Yes, the Brotherhood of Steel is a militaristic faction, but they have no desire to bring order to the Wasteland. Their only desire is to hoard technology. In fact, in the ending slides for Fallout New Vegas, unless the NCR is there to keep them at bay, the Brotherhood of Steel patrols the roads of the Mojave, not to keep order, but instead... Harassing travelers over any bits of technology they had. More good references from Oxrun on this. Like... I'm shocked yeah. how much I'm agreeing with him, because, like, yeah, he's he's actually pointing out good pieces of information as to why this is completely fucked for the show. Like, yeah. I can't I can't stress this enough. Good job, Oxhorn. I'm not being condescending or an asshole here. You're you're actually like providing good evidence and references here, and I appreciate. Yeah, that. I was especially I was very surprised when I watched this. I was like, wow, he's actually putting in a lot of effort to back up his points here that's really good is especially like we've covered well over a hundred videos on this show since we started over two years ago it's like how often do we see people provide references like this to prove the point they're talking about even there's times when people are correct in the things they're saying but they don't show their references they just say this is the way it is and moves on yeah so, like, the fact that we have someone here actually providing the references, providing the receipts, you know, it's a good thing. Yep. It's something I always want to encourage. <laughs> you guys have seen so much bad videos that uh, Oxhorn looks decent. Well, he is actually doing something decent here by pointing out this issue and providing proper receipts, you know? He is, I get what they mean. He's doing the bare minimum, and we're like, oh my god. But it's yeah. like, yeah, in comparison to everything else, yeah, that is kind of a shocker. Yeah, it is. It genuinely is. Oh my god, the plap hit sound. <laughs> it's good. It's really good. My here is that the show is forgetting the identity of the Brotherhood, which is really important for this faction. It's possible that my fears are ill-founded. Maybe they do a really good job of explaining it. Maybe there's some elder on the West Coast that decided to pull a lion's and start helping people in the wasteland. I just don't see that from what I've read here. Instead, they come across as a prototypical big bad authority trope, which we see in so many movies and TV shows. If that's all the Brotherhood has become in this show, I'm going to be really bummed out. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, I, I get it. I, I was already bummed out by the Brotherhood of Steel, but it's, it is one of those things like, yeah, like, this is what Bethesda has been pushing for for a long time, this this sort of thing. Did, did you think they weren't, like, crazy authoritarians when it came to the, you know, genocide and destroy everything brotherhood and four like come on yeah for me the big thing here is like where where did you think it was this was all going type thing yeah um it, it's clear bethesda does what they want with no regard for what came before it if the if bethesda says Hey, yeah, the Brotherhood are law and order types now. Then they're law and order types now, regardless of what came before it. 
Like, this is the whole problem. This is why a lot of people complained about the Fallout 3 Brotherhood in the first place. Because they just changed the faction on a dime in a way that doesn't make sense. You can have your offshoot outcast faction of the Brotherhood who are like, yes, we're going to help people. Where, okay, maybe a group did split off. A, what should be a very small splinter group who probably will have a lot tougher of a battle being on their own. But like, okay, yeah, sure. These few people changed. Not what we got in Fallout 3 where the Brotherhood of Steel are the saviors of the wasteland and the outcasts are the true Brotherhood. Yeah. Because, like, I don't know any other read on it besides Bethesda wanted them to be fucking Power Rangers, so they're Power Rangers now. Here is tricky, and I won't spend too much time on this, but according to the events of Fallout 2, the Brotherhood of Steel is a pretty weak faction on the West Coast. During the events of Fallout 1, they were underground, but they were still a substantial faction. During the events of Fallout 2, they were significantly weaker. Since the events of Fallout 2, the West Coast Brotherhood of Steel lost a bunch of people with their first failed expedition to the East Coast, which crash-landed in Chicago. These are the events of Fallout Tactics. They lost even more people during their second and ultimately successful expedition to the East Coast. Under Elder Lions, these were the events of Fallout 3. And again, with their expedition to the Mojave Wasteland during the events of Fallout New Vegas. Arthur Maxson's Brotherhood of Steel on the East Coast during the events of Fallout 4 is the most powerful the Brotherhood has ever become. So... Is it? I guess kind of because you know they have airships and teleporters and stuff now. So I think in the lore they had airships in the old era yes, too. They did though. have airships. That's the tactics. They had airships. I thought um, tactics was semi cannon, semi not cannon. It is. It is semi cannon yeah. and semi not cannon. It's it's a bit of a weird bag, but it was like. <sighs> It was mostly agreed upon that the Brotherhood did have some airships, most of which did not survive their travels. Yeah. Again, because a lot of a, a lot of this stuff does get into the how how would this faction not then reign supreme if you have this? It's it's why the Enclave were so devastating in Fallout Two, because they had fucking vertebrates. Like, that was an insane technological advantage that they had, not just from their power armor, but the fact that they could get troops to where they wanted them to go in minutes rather than in hours that it took NCR or any other faction to respond. Yeah, well, to be fair, the airships in Tactics were not like these ones. These are completely different. The ones in Tactics were just Zeppelins. They were literally just normal Zeppelins. Mm. Yeah, and I saw a screenshot used... of one where it's like a burned out partially burned out zeppelin on the uh, ground yeah they were they were basically just zeppelins that they used to get to different areas of the u.s that's all they were they were transport nothing else they they couldn't hold like vertebrates they didn't even have vertebrates yeah yeah the uh pridwin is <sighs> fucking magic i guess i don't know it is it doesn't make any sense there is no reason like They treat the airships from tactics like some form of lost technology, but it's like they were just Zeppelins. There is no way that you should be able to get blueprints to create this thing that they have because it never existed. Yeah. I guess I can concede the point that the Fallout 4 Brotherhood might be the strongest if we consider the Pridwin and the absurd advantage it would give them. All right. Yeah. I would say yeah, because it's basically a mobile headquarters with vertebrates that can be dropped out of it at any time. Like, that's automatically an advantage over Fallout 3's, like, you know, static Pentagon base where they have, like, one or two vertebrates at most. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wonder how the Brotherhood of Steel can become this huge, powerful, militaristic faction in Los Angeles, a territory of the NCR. Let's not forget that according to Fallout 2, the original home of the Brotherhood of Steel got absorbed by the NCR. It's now a territory called Maxon, according to Fallout 2. The NCR plays a huge role during the events of Fallout New Vegas. Their presence in the Mojave Wasteland is much stronger than the presence of the Brotherhood in the Mojave Wasteland. And yet everything that we've seen so far in this TV show is about the Brotherhood as a major faction and not the NCR in Los Angeles, which is part of NCR. Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's a yeah. huge fucking problem. Again, I agree with them. Yeah. Yeah, I, very I, worrying. So, so now, Oxhorn... With all this in mind, take Fallout 1 and 2 and compare it to 3, and you might be fucking shocked. Maybe 3 is a really big problem. <laughs> oh, God. Wait, wait, is Oxhorn trying to criticize something based on lore? What about addition retcons? Yeah, he, he's actually uh, paying attention to the lore, which is kind of shocking. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't even know what I could add to that because he's 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 just right here. Why the fuck yeah, are we seeing only stuff about the Brotherhood and not the NCR in a show that takes place in NCR territory? Yep. Yeah, and again, my only addition again, I'm not saying he's wrong at all either. My only addition is okay. Now, Oxford, I want you to take this new lens you've now discovered and use Fallout 1 and 2, and then compare that to 3. And maybe you might be surprised why we're so negative to 3. And 4. I, I just don't believe that the East Coast doesn't have its own NCR-like faction, at least in terms of size, like, growing, when it absolutely should. Yeah. The, the entire like country should have factions rising taking territory and getting into conflicts with one another this long after the war. Absolutely. And it's the capital fucking wasteland. You have all kinds of potential for crazy factions to rise, like the Sons of Liberty or something as a faction, or like Washington's Raiders or whatever. You know what I mean? Just, just stuff like that because of how much history is there. Uh, again, I made a, a, a mention of uh, somebody was trying to do this really awful thing where they were trying to like set a, a fallout game and near the um, um, Mount Rushmore and everything they were trying to put in that area and they're like yeah I'm gonna have the Institute there and everything and I'm like fucking why but uh, in that I then just came up with like what if you had a faction that worshipped the, the Mount Rushmore heads as if they were gods because all the context for the history is lost now and they just think that these are like these were carved here in memoriam of the the four gods that watch over people or whatever you know and i spun off in this whole idea of like a cult rising up because of it but it, it's stuff like that things that would happen like that where things of the past get get corrupted and changed because all the context and everything is lost and people find new meaning into what they have yeah. And plus, factions are rising up because of stuff like that is really fucking interesting. Yeah. Um, five month membership message from Happy Nihilist. Thank you. It's uh, very much appreciated. Unrelated fact herbivores don't actually exist. Any animal you call a herbivore regularly eat meat. Must go other way to do so and prefer it live. All right then. Um, there's a comment here I want to get, but I want to change one thing on it to make it sound better. Uh, Admiral Tony Donning says, "Before the carvings were finished, uh, that rock was unprecedented." Boo! <laughs> the puns. Well, his was that rock was unprecedented. I'm like, oh come on, you missed the perfect really shitty pun moment. Boo. Hold on, I'm gonna play it again. Ah! <laughs>
You need to get the TF2. Boo! Boo! <laughs> Six Malaysian ringgits from Pendicar Mando. Thank you. Morning, Stag. This seems like a better vid than usual. It is. Shockingly, from uh, the guy we started with, Oxhorn. I can't believe we've come full circle to the point where it's like, yeah, one of the better videos we've ever covered is a fucking Oxhorn video. <laughs> Yeah, make claims, actually pass evidence for his claims. Like, holy shit, we're already, like, ten rungs up on the ladder. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's kind of hilarious in retrospect with all the utter garbage we've covered. It's like, Oxhorn is the one who made an actually decent video. Him, really. You know what? Yes. Okay, sure, fine. <laughs> <laughs> and confused. The piece offers a quote from director Nolan that says, in the absence of a federal government, you just had all of this military hardware lying around. But at this time in the story, there was a federal government. Yes. Kind of. The end. Yeah. This is getting worse the more I see of this fucking article and the more yeah, I hear of this like, show. this is dire shit. Oh my god. Wasn't Todd and ML working with these fucking people? Not that I know of. I was sure there was mention that, like, they were on board to, to keep this in canon with the games. They've, they've said it's canon with the games. How does the NCR not exist anymore? I, I don't fucking know. This might be another one of Todd's sweet little lies moment where he just said it because he thought it would sound good as a good soundbite. And it's just going to be another one of those, oh, well, Todd's lying again. Five dollars from Ambrose O'Leary. Thank you. In my Fallout 3 rewrite, I have this faction replace the Brotherhood of Steel called the Union, based off of the Union from the Civil War and the War of 1812. Took five minutes. I mean, yeah, you yeah. can replace the Brotherhood with pretty much anything and it would be better uh, in Fallout 3. Yeah, and honestly, like, just even make reference to the fact that uh, if a faction does take over the Pentagon building or whatever make that be a like a big symbol of their faction the the, the five-sided pentagon just make it be that you know it come is on. funny <laughs> it is funny how we're talking about this you know where we're like oh come on just make a unique faction and then they did that for fallout 4 and we got the minutemen <laughs> and the institute <laughs> and the institute well yeah it's, and it's like, the railroad it's why i keep thinking of uh mr plinkett's star wars videos where he's like Stop reusing old stuff. Make something new. And then he just starts showing a bunch of clips of uh, things that are new to the prequels. He's like, oh, no, stop. Stop making things that are new. <laughs> 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 oh, it's my God. What's wrong with your face? <laughs> and then we turn back to the Trade Federation. And, oh, my God. What's wrong with your face? <laughs> But it's very much a similar situation. It's it's why I can't help but see a parallel between Star Wars and Fallout. Where um, it feels like they've been treated in a very similar way where there's a lot of iconography used and stuff. It's like, Jesus Christ, stop reusing everything from the old games. Make something new. Oh wait, you made something new and it's terrible. updated quote should be, oh my god, just stop making things. Yeah, kinda. But the Institute wasn't a new faction, it was in Fallout 3. They're mentioned. I wouldn't say they're a faction in Fallout 3. At which, again, Fallout 3 was made by Bethesda. They, It's new. Yeah. It's new to Bethesda's shitty canon. which is, as far as we know, the only functioning government in the continental United States in the Fallout universe. Yes. Did the um, showrunners forget about the... Not really, because the Legion would be a functional government of their own, too. Yes. And... Yeah, I guess that would be the two groups we really know about, because Bethesda's lore has been shit and they haven't established any groups to exist for some reason.
Uh, the NCR not mentioned at all? Did something happen to the NCR, which tipped the balance of power between the Brotherhood and the NCR? Do you realize how big of an event would be needed to tip the balance between a government that takes up the entire state of California versus a small group of technophiles who are, like, almost wiped out? Yeah. Yeah. To the point that they're literally been pushed into bunkers of, like, uh, uh, as far as we know, there's only, like, one or two. Basically, where they're standing, like, population is 50 versus yeah. a population of 10,000 plus. Yeah. The events of Fallout 4. They don't even mention the NCR in this article, but they have to address this issue in the show. Otherwise, it won't make sense why the Brotherhood is as powerful as it is where it is, and not the NCR. And I'm also doing another thing for you here. The NCR very much uh, believes in the Second Amendment. <laughs> All of its citizenry is also has weapons, because it's it's the fucking post-apocalypse, stupid. And, you know, you kind of need it just in case a fucking rad scorpion or anything comes up in your basement or whatever. So, yeah, uh, I hate to break this to you, too. Like, it, it's not just whatever their standing army size in the NCR. It's their standing army and their entire population that would be willing to fight you. I could see this show being so bad that they would literally just, like, write it off as, like, oh, well, the NCR isn't around anymore because they were dumb, stinky, poo-poo heads who believed in capitalism, and, it, <laughs> and obviously they failed, and they, they all withered away and died, and the Brotherhood... Re oh you know, God. they came back. They embraced <laughs> communism and became great. <laughs> no, you say these things. The worst part is that I feel like they would do it. Yeah, I could totally see them doing it. Especially I, uh, the fucking article, man. That fucking article. <laughs> the things that it <laughs> says where it's like, oh, the things that it confirms where it's like, are you really? Oh my god. And then there's this. Look at that. It's the Pridwin. Oh wait, no. That's not the Pridwin. See, that's the Caswinon. Cas Caswinon. All right, well, the name tells us why it looks exactly like the Pridwin. According to a 16th century edition of the 12th century Liber Landavensis, Caswinon is the name of the sandbank upon which King Arthur's ship was wrecked. But later in 1764, a poet named Evan Evans repeated the story about King Arthur's ship wrecking there, but actually changed the name of the ship from the Pridwin, or the Gwynedd as it is sometimes called, to Caswinon. And I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of all of these Welsh words. But in short, Caswinon is an alternative name to Pridwin. They're so we have another gigantic airship. It's not the Pridwin. It's the second one. Somehow, another airship returned. <laughs> yeah, which how? <clears throat> See, I, I still have a problem with the Pridwin even existing because... This is an insane feat of technology. Anytime you invent a technology in Fallout that didn't exist pre-war, it's like we're talking about highly advanced technology, so if anyone had the skills and resources to do it, it was people pre-war. When you invent something they couldn't, it's like, hmm, I'm not so sure about that. I am very questionable about that. I'm not going to say it's impossible. I'm not going to say it's impossible. You could make scientific discoveries uh, post-war or whatever else that allows something to be created that just wasn't created before. But I feel like it's really risky territory to start getting into, hey, we invented a super fuck-off skyship because we could. Yeah, this is insane. The only faction I could see with something like the Pridwin would be the Enclave. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's the only way I could see this sort of thing being in there. Not the Brotherhood. That, that's why advanced power armor works because. Yeah, hey, they had research and development for so many years that would allow them to create something like that. Where it's like, yeah, they're the most technologically advanced group. If anyone is going to have the resources to do this, it's them. As opposed yep. to some guy in a burned out lab in the Pentagon. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I've always kind of had a problem with the Pridwin existing for that reason, and now that there's two of them... Man. I feel like it's just thrown in there purely for, hey, look at the thing from Fallout 4, isn't it cool? According to the leaks, the NCR are going to be in the show, as a rich, closed-off community like Tenpenny Tower. What? How, fucking how? And it is. This is getting it's worse. It's gonna be a multi-state thing. Like what the fuck? This is getting worse with each thing we find out. If that's true. What did they? Did the NCR just make the Brotherhood of Steel their bitch, and now the Brotherhood of Steel are just the police force? Yeah. What? I, I have no idea. And why idea on anymore. earth would they ever create themselves as like a gated community? They would want to expand. That's like their whole thing is that they tend to expand way faster than they can actually do so. They absorb people into their fucking government all the time. Yep. They would not gate off their community because that's just less people to pay taxes. <laughs> why did you kill President Kimball? He wanted me to pay taxes. Fair enough. <laughs> Understandable. Understandable. Have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> Both King Arthur's ship, which makes sense for Fallout 4, where the leader of the Brotherhood is Arthur Maxon. But he's on the East Coast, not in Los Angeles. Brotherhood of Steel lore is steeped in Arthurian mythology. Maxon. It shouldn't be. It really fucking shouldn't be steeped in Arthurian lore. Like, it's, just stop. Just yeah. Please stop. Hey, hey, Oxhorn, the thing you're experiencing now, try and do that, taking into account only Fallout 1 and 2 and looking at Fallout 3, and then do the same look at Fallout 4. And you might be surprised that, hey, maybe all of us that hated Fallout 3 and 4 were fucking right and are experienced this long before you're experiencing what you are right now. Sir Pridwin, now Caswinon. The issue is that this is taking place on the West Coast. The Pridwin is a unique, distinct vehicle on the East Coast of the United States with an established backstory. We learned from Captain Kells aboard the Pridwin that the Pridwin was built from the ruins of the mobile base crawler, which is destroyed enclave technology that the Lone Wanderer destroyed during the events of the Broken Steel DLC for Fallout 3. So the only reason this airship exists is because the Brotherhood of Steel salvaged a bunch of high-tech components from the mobile base crawler, stole a reactor from a nearby aircraft carrier, and assembled the Pridwin. What was that aircraft carrier called? Yeah. Was that potentially a community that was, you know, <laughs> living their lives as a community? And relied on that reactor, maybe? Possibly? Yeah. Potentially? Did they potentially just doom an entire community <laughs> to death because they have no electricity anymore? I hate this mobile crawler so much. I know we've talked about it on stream before. It is just a block on treads. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, they, they didn't even try. They literally just cut out a fucking rectangle, slapped some <laughs> pipes on it in random spots, put it on some wheels, and were like, oh, it's, it's good. Or, well, some treads, but still. <laughs> It'd be funnier if you look under there and there isn't treads, there's tires, but not, like, super thick, meaty tires. It's just, like, bicycle tires holding this thing up. <laughs> there's just a lot of them. <laughs> it 
was manufactured on an assembly line and the Brotherhood of Steel was just pumping out airships. Now this was a distinct, unique, one-of-a-kind vehicle. And yet this Caswanon airship looks identical to the Pridwen. Hmm. How about that? It's almost like Bethos is <laughs> doing the thing they always do and just reuse things that people recognize and, uh... I guess, like, I'm sure there's people out there who like the Pridwin for some reason. Yeah, you remember that thing I told you about the really shitty fan fiction game that someone was making? Yeah, they had their own Pridwin. Yes, it, was, it wasn't called the Pridwin, though. It was another airship. Doesn't matter the exact because... name. Point is, it's the Pridwin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, but it was one of those, like, but there was only one Pridwin. And it's like, no, 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 this is another one. It's like, oh, Jesus Christ. And why do you want the Institute? Because they're fun to fight. Okay. <laughs> Which is basically what this show did. <laughs> it's just, again, kind of funny hearing Oxhorn make these criticisms when these are the same kind of criticisms we've been making against Fallout 3 and 4 forever. Oh, you're just reusing I iconic things. Oh, the, the super mutants shouldn't be dumb for XYZ reasons and here he is pulling the same thing where it's like yeah it doesn't make sense that there would be a second Pridwin that looks exactly the same it's a unique thing so like, yeah this is the exact kind of thing we've all been complaining about for years with Fallout 3 and 4 Th this is a real chance for people to learn like, what that feels like, who haven't had to deal with that before, and I feel like a lot of people are going to miss it. <sighs> Possible. Was there another ruined mobile base crawler somewhere on the west coast? I mean, I gotta give them credit. It looks great here. Seeing the Pridwin, which is one of the most amazing vehicles in all of Fallout, here on the big screen is, it's a delight and I'm, I'm thrilled, but from a lore perspective, it shouldn't be here. Now, I'm not saying that the West Coast chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel didn't make a bunch of airships. They did, as established by the events of Fallout Tactics. Now, some of Fallout Tactics is unlikely to be canonical, but Bethesda has come out and said that some of the events in Fallout Tactics did indeed happen, and if some of the events happened, they had to move from the West Coast to Chicago, and if they did, they went by airship, which means the West Coast chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel did have airships before the events of Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, and Fallout 4. Yeah. Yeah, but do you notice what the airships are? <laughs> They are zeppelins that can be destroyed by lightning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's the image I saw before right there, by the way, the uh, zeppelin on the ground. Um, yeah, they 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 literally are just zeppelins, which is entirely different from the Pridwin, which is like an armored battleship of the sky. Which, how the fuck does that even work? <laughs> how is this massive steel thing that is, like, completely armored stay in the air like that? <laughs> I have no idea. I think when I was doing research for the Fallout 4 analysis, one of the wiki pages said the Pridwin is, like, 40,000 tons. It's like, yeah, I'm sorry, you need insane lift to keep that thing in the air. Yeah, and from what we could tell, it has, like, no propulsion system at all. There's, like, no jets on it. It only has, like, rudders that help steer it or push it forward. There's those, um, is this... there's those little propellers at the back. Yeah, which is to make it move forward. It That wouldn't help create lift. Yeah. So you you said hell... Sorry, you said propulsion, so I thought you meant, like, forward movement, not lift. Uh, no, I'm talking about lift. Yeah. I don't get... Like, is it literally just supposed to be, like, a giant version of the iBot where it has, like, some sort of grav drive in it or something? Because that's the well, only no, way it because, would work, is if it was, like, because gravity when, when you blow it up as uh, the railroad, uh, you plant bombs along the inside, and it's like they've got... I think they're supposed to be tanks of, like, gas, but helium and hydrogen would not lift all that. 
Yeah, it, that wouldn't lift metal. Especially, it wouldn't matter. especially those like much smaller tanks. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Because uh, the zeppelin we see here on screen, um, that whole, the whole big body of a zeppelin when you see it, pretty much all that is filled with hydrogen or whatever. Usually, mm -hmm. um, that that's not space you can walk around in. Yeah, it's just a giant balloon with, like, a metal frame on the outside to keep it structurally sound. Yeah. That's it. The inside is completely hollow. Yeah, when, when you see a Zeppelin and, like, there's the big balloon and there's that little metal, like, box on the bottom, the metal box is what you're in. Yeah. Um, which is barely anything on the Pridwin, but in the Pridwin you can go into the actual big balloon area, which isn't a balloon area anymore. It, it's yeah, literally do, just a magic sky ship. Yeah, I do remember a little bit of that mission, because I did do that once. And there's like three or four just like metal balls in yeah. the um in that area that apparently is like keeping it afloat. But it's like that that doesn't make any sense. How are these tiny spheres with gas, keeping all this metal in the air. I really wish I was in the show to rant about airship tech right now. <laughs> yeah, it, point is, it's really bad. Um, why didn't they just invent, like, an anti-grav drive or something? Like, they're already saying fuck it with the lore anyways. Why not just invent something like that? So yeah. it at least has a better explanation than, oh yeah, we put some hydrogen in some tanks and that lifted 40 tons of steel. Yeah, apparently I was doing some writing for the writers because I assumed that they took the reactor to power some, like, you know, massive grav drive that required an entire Wait, why the fuck did aircraft. they need the reactor then? Yeah, it's like, why would you need a giant fuck-off nuclear reactor to power a fucking airship that uses... Apparently, just, like, regular hydrogen gas and shit. Well, you see, Elder Max had wanted to plug in his iPod so he can listen to some tunes. <laughs> it is kind of funny to think about it, because that means that they basically <laughs> killed everyone in Rivet City for no fucking reason. <laughs> Which is, by the way, the appropriate reason to kill everyone in Rivet City. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so weird. Like, why? I, okay, hold on. So maybe I'm not entirely, like, like, my Fallout knowledge is not completely extensive. The iBots, how do they stay in the air? I assumed it was because of just, like, some, like, gravitational technology. I don't actually know. How do they stay in the air? Because I figured that's what they were working with. I figured it's the same technology that keeps the, on that keeps the iBots off the ground just bigger for the Pridwin. I don't know. I'm not sure I've seen it explained, uh, how they how they float. I do know that the iBots give me the impression of, you know with, like, old sci-fi cartoons uh, sometimes you'd see something flying through the air and it would just have that woo sound as it's going along. I feel like iBots should have that. Yeah. Just based on looking at them and how they move. Mm hmm. <laughs> Why not just use thousands of iBots to float it? <laughs> that would honestly <laughs> probably be better than what we got. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucking Jetsons technology. <laughs> yeah. There's just like a little ring of un. You know, just like. <laughs> Because <laughs> you know how everything in those, like, cartoons had just, like, that little ring of blue energy that would come out of, yep. like, yeah, everything? <laughs> it's just that. <laughs> ...ship on the West Coast is not surprising to me. What's surprising to me is that the airship looks exactly like the Pridwin, and the West Coast Brotherhood of Steel should be fairly weak according to the lore, and certainly compared to the East Coast Brotherhood of Steel under Arthur Maxon, which means they have fewer resources, which makes me wonder how 
they were able to construct their own airship that has a very similar name to Arthur Maxon's Pridwin. But you know what? I'm not saying it's impossible. It just needs a really good explanation. Oh, God, I'm not even sure a really good explanation is enough at this point with like yeah, how insane that... this is. I don't think it could be a good explanation because of how drastic it is. I don't think there's any explanation that could be good enough. Yeah, that's kind of the place where I'm at with it. Where it's just like, oh God, this this it might actually be too far that you can't explain it. You can't justify it. Yeah. And see, this is what I'm talking about, too, where I'm worried that he's just going to he's just going to fold immediately. The moment the show comes out, as long as they give some kind of explanation, even if it's dog shit, he'll just be like, oh, well, they explained it. It's fine, guys. The West Coast or sorry, uh, the East Coast Brotherhood just told the West Coast how to do it. And they just happen to have the parts lying around to go do it. Yeah, I yeah have that's what it seems. Welcome back. Oh. Yeah, we've um, <laughs> we've been uh, questioning some things. Okay, so hold on. Let, let me ask you. Do you know how the iBots float? No, not a fan. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know then. I don't know how the Pridwin stays in the air. It doesn't make any sense because, like Cree said, yeah, it just has like three or four steel balls that apparently have gas inside of it that keeps this... 40, what would you say, 40,000 ton yeah. airship in the air? Yeah, I, that doesn't make any sense. I, I believe that's what it says on the wiki is uh, 40,000 tons. From Thief and yeah. Chat, looking up on the wiki, the iBots just float. No reason is given. Well, that's a good sign. Ah, that's, oh, that's, that's not great. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird because it's so, it's such a massive. It's so OP. That's the thing. The old airships were just Zeppelins. We literally see one get destroyed by lightning because it's just a Zeppelin. Whereas this thing is like, it's a giant armored fortress that flies through the air, completely armored, should not be able to stay in the air, but it can just because, and it doesn't make any sense. And I always assumed, oh, well, they needed the reactor to power some grav drive or something with inside of it. But no, there is no grav drive. They literally show spheres that have gas inside of them that keep this thing up. So what do they even need the reactor for? Um, Lion Bean in chat says anti-grav plates. Okay. What the fuck is an anti-grav plate? Yeah. And is that actually like expressly like mentioned as part of the design or is that just like a fan theory? Uh, nuclear Rolton, it can't weigh 40 tons. Soviet tank T-34 from World War II weighs about 46. Imagine a small tank and a giant blimp side by side. Not not 40 yeah. tons, 40,000. Yeah, 40,000. Well, well, no, even even 40 tons, like, if we take that as an example, the, a Zeppelin doesn't need to have several thick like like an almost inch thick of armor on it and shit like that. Okay, <laughs> like the the size isn't the problem here. The problem is the way it's built, designed, and everything it is the problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Speedy Acorn. They have very tiny birds. <laughs> <laughs> what also floats in water? Uh, really small rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. You know, <laughs> you know, it would be really funny if they just straight up had like, <laughs> like four tiny iBots just attached to strings at, atop the fucking Pridwin, and that's what's keeping it afloat. <laughs> oh my god, it's the host from oh, Up, wanna... but it's iBots instead of balloons. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone mentioned in chat the iBots when you see the new Vegas uh, like teaser trailer, and you see Eddie floating along you can actually see eddie's exhaust so there's clearly a mechanism firing downwards like the uh the mr handies that's keeping it up in the air yeah i i've always i i like that you know that little trailer thing for new vegas i love watching that thing with eddie because it looks so fluid and nice but i have always wondered like 
how are they staying afloat? Because the bottom panel is closed. There's no way you could get propulsion through there unless it was like, you know, like a magnet or something going through the metal. No. Which again would like, you would assume it's some sort of like grav drive or something, some some sort of like anti gravity thing keeping them up. They have an Australian upside down belt on, which in right side up land lifts stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> it just reminded me of that whole fucking meme of the Australians having their uh, their ground tether belts, and one one Australian throws a boomerang at the other guy's belt and breaks it, so he falls into the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Megaton? What? What's Megaton doing in Los Angeles? Oh wait, no, this isn't Megaton, this is Philly. Philly? As in fi short for Philadelphia? This doesn't... What? What? <laughs> this is clearly Megaton. <laughs> There's yeah. something amusing about Oxhorn being baffled by this. <laughs> <laughs> it is, and it's really funny. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, again, Oxhorn, this is how everybody that was a fan of Fallout 1 and 2 felt with 3. You were now four. catching up to us. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, even back to 3. Yeah. When 3 came out. Like, this is this is what Bethesda <laughs> does. It shits all over the canon. Tyler, Tyler McDonald in chat, first time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly, it's that me. <laughs> Also, I don't know why, the... but this reminded me of that fucking meme with <laughs> the Necrons asking about the orcs. I don't know why, but it just like, <laughs> it just immediately made me think of that. Where it's like, it's like our ships are completely pressurized and have no oxygen. Can orcs breathe? And one of the Necrons is like, "Well, they have lungs." That's not what I asked. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's fucking true. Again, the orcs. The orc ships are literally just, I took a rock and I put an engine on it, and now we live in the rock, and now we go fly in space with spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? Wait, hold on a second, I think you're missing some vital components here. Also... No, I paint it red, it go faster. <laughs> <laughs> also, this, um, this image has bugged me since the first time I've seen it. Look at that front part of the plane there. What, you mean, like, how it's, like, almost pristine? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everything yeah. else is a rusted <laughs> pile of scrap, and this looks like yeah. someone cut off the front of a plane and just stuck it on a building, and, like, five minutes ago. It's a plane that was in pristine condition before this, and they just cut it off and put it there. It's like, yeah, that should be a was... lot more weathered after 220 years. Well, that's yes. a big issue I had with Fallout 4 as a whole, was its art style had that sort of thing a lot where there was a lot of things in the world that looked like it had only been abandoned for maybe 20 years yeah after after it's been 200 years it doesn't make any sense yeah so so two things who is polishing this every day <laughs> to keep it looking in, in at least this kind of condition right and and the second thing what fucking purpose and function does this serve because it's similar to Fallout 3. <laughs> God, yeah, yeah, Megaton Fallout 3 is a disaster when you actually look into it. It is, but it also does have a similar, like, one of the buildings has a, the front of a plane on top of it for some reason. Well, even look where she's standing. That's clearly the lookout spot in Lucas Sims' house that you go up into to look over the city. It even has the same little archway on top. It's literally Megaton. They literally copy and pasted Megaton. The only thing that's really different is the smokestack in the background. Yeah. I, I did take a look at Moira's uh, shop. Her supply thing, it does look different, but she does have a sign there that says supply, I think. Because it's yeah, crater it's like, side supply. Yeah, and there's like a the word supply, like, stabbed into the, uh, the like, head of the plane on her shop as well. Yeah. In fact, I could get an image of that quickly, just to, um... 
just to show the uh, for comparison. Yeah, see, that's what I thought. I saw the smokestack first and thought Diamond City. Then I saw the plane, and then I saw that's where she was standing, what... and I was like, I... And I was like, oh, that's just straight up Megaton. I knew that smokestack looked fucking familiar, and I couldn't place where. That... I think what they essentially did is they took Diamond City and melded it together with Megaton, which isn't surprising because when I played Fallout 4 for the first time and went to Diamond City, my first thought was this is very similar to Megaton. One of those things that just doesn't make any sense. Like, neither city makes sense. So, the Diamond City should have been, they had fields of like, they had a garden growing in the actual field itself, and then everybody lived in the stands, but they just don't do that. They have everybody living in the field, and the stands are barely touched. <laughs> yeah, like it's eighty percent of the city. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? It's so weird. All except for one part where they call it like the upper district, and it's like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, it's like three yeah. houses again. Yeah, yep. I'm really sick of these. Here's a district with three houses in it. Thing that Bethesda does. It's also, it just feels like a joke to me. I could never take it seriously because there's the guy in the suit that sits up there and he acts like he's so high and mighty. It's like, my guy, you're like 20 feet above the ground that's completely littered, littered with trash. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're not above anybody here. I'm sorry. That's bullshit. The fact you're even wearing a suit is kind of ridiculous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It was, it, I could never take it seriously. It felt like such a joke. It literally feels like you go to a trailer park full of like rednecks and stuff, you know? And then you just have one guy who has decided to prop his trailer up with on like wooden stilts and he wears a <laughs> fucking suit and he's like, I'm so much more cultured than these peasants. <laughs> it's, it's just like, what the fuck? Even better, even better. You go to the trailer park. And then you see the one guy in the trailer park who has a double wide. And he's <laughs> yeah. Like, I am so much superior to all of you single wide trailer park trash. <laughs> <laughs> Be a scrap city. The idea of a scrap city is fine. Of course there's gonna be No it isn't. No 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 no. The idea of a scrap city is not fine. Again, especially not this far out. Early on, yes, it's okay when you're like just after the apocalypse. Fine, you're just yeah. scavenging what you can get and you're throwing it together. Once you start getting your shit together, people start engineering things. They start manufacturing things. Again, it's not going to be this, don't think big industrial line, stuff like that. But look at the NCR, for God's sakes, from Fallout 1. To, for Shady, Shady Sands to fall out too. And they're already making concrete and everything and building actual buildings and things. It's worth... Civilization will continue. It's worth uh, stressing the fact that most people don't want to live in um, tin shacks made of scrap where, yeah. like, it's just not a, a nice environment to look at. It's not... It doesn't appear to be stable, especially Megaton, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I feel yeah. like a house should fall like every year in there. It's it's insane. Also, you don't want to have this kind of stuff while living in the desert. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tin shacks tend to be pretty fucking not safe to live in in the desert. Yeah. Now, why could that possibly be? Frost, <laughs> Frost points out fucking tetanus. Yeah. This this, yeah. this was a tetanus minefield. <laughs> you don't want to live in squalor for 250 plus years? Snob. <laughs> yeah. It's one thing to, like, make a, a city out of, or, like, make a town out of, like, a junkyard or something, where it's, like, that's literally what it was before the war, and you're turning it into, an air, like, a living area, and you're using the stuff that's there... But over time, even then, it's like, you would clean that shit up. You would make new stuff. It wouldn't be a fucking junkyard forever. Yeah. yeah. And, and honestly, most people would start with, with your sleeping area. You want some kind of comfort 
at the end of the day. Even if it's just mild stuff, like, hey, instead of, you know, sleeping on top of fucking rocks and stone, fucking Markarth, you nonsense city. No, we, you know, we'll put a, put a little some rugs here. Maybe we went and hunted something. Maybe uh, we, we killed a Yaogwai and now we've got a, a, a bear rug that we put on there or stuff like that. You'd slowly build up over time. Again, we're supposed to be 200 and fucking 20 years after the bombs fell. I'm sorry, people aren't going to be living in fucking tin shacks everywhere. You're going to see actual buildings again. I can even excuse the odd tin shack. Or, like, maybe, hey, a new town has started, these people don't have many supplies, so they do use scrap to get started. That's yeah. it. That's the extent of it. You build a tin shack to live in with the intention of upgrading it to something that isn't complete fucking garbage. Yep. And again, we're not even talking, like, we're not talking about, like, insane luxuries, like, oh, everybody has their house painted, and they've got a little yard and sprinkler or something. No, 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 it's just... It's the small things, the the fucking small things that people, human beings, will naturally gravitate towards. Like, do you have uh, do you have a floor you can walk across without tripping? For God's sakes, do you have a place where you can lean back and relax without cutting yourself, getting tetanus, and fucking dying? <laughs> scrap and salvage on the west coast of the United States of America in this post-apocalyptic universe. I get that. That's fine. No, it isn't. But this scrap city is megaton, complete with the airplane sitting on top of one of these buildings. I mean, this is awesome in that we get to see a live action recreation of me one of no. the worst, most nonsensical cities created in fiction. Yes. Congratulations, Oxhorn. God. Again, scrap cities don't make any fucking sense. Again, a, a scrap like hovel for a starting settlement, sure, but they'll build up real quick from there. Yeah, it it would be fine if this was set like twenty years after the bombs fell, but it's not. It's two hundred years. People have been living here. It would not look like this after that much time. Maybe in the first, you know, couple of decades, yes, but not say, 200 years. I didn't say the first couple of decades. I, I'd more be willing two years. <laughs> two years you have a scrap city, but by then you're already starting to be like, okay, well, this is our sleeping area. It's going to be a little more comfortable, a little more comfortable. And, you know, we would need our door to be a little more secure, so we're going to make that out of uh, this instead. And, you, you know, you'd slowly build up over it. So I, I don't even think, I think 20 years is just too much. Uh, if I'm being that. generous, if I'm being generous, where it's like, Fair. if they did it, if they did have the excuse of, well, it's 20 years after, I'd be like, okay, fair enough. I'll give that to you, but not 200 years. There's also another thing I realized with Fallout 3 now, uh, because we're talking about the scrap metal tin shacks specifically. If it actually did rain as much as it does in uh, Washington, D.C., um, these places would be so much more rusted and people be having leaks in their roofs all the time and most of the shit probably rusted away to nothing. Yep. So there's yet another issue for Fallout 3. Yep. Ah, uh, but no, guys, it clearly rains. It, it definitely rains in the game. It's... Oh my god, I can't believe there are people that actually argue that it <laughs> rains in Fallout 3 when it's like, well then you realize if if that if it did rain, that would also be a problem because look at where all these people are living. It's like you don't think that would wouldn't cause an issue the fact that one, none of these homes would ever keep out water and two, they live in a fucking crater that has yep. no drainage. They would drown. <laughs> and uh Three, it would undermine the entire plot and point of Fallout 3's really shitty story. Yep. Yeah. It shouldn't be here. 
Megaton is a very distinct, unique city in the capital wastelands built around the remains of a nuclear bomb that didn't detonate. And the reason there's a giant airplane in the middle of the town is because the town itself was made from a bunch of airline scrap. But, you know... That they, for whatever reason, instead of building at the airfield, which would have its own buildings and everything, even if they're collapsed, you could, you know, use that for <laughs> that rubble for stuff, has its own buildings... Has all the scrap there. They dragged this shit for fucking miles to build in a fucking crater next to a bomb because yeah. they're just that stupid. It I'm makes gonna, no sense. I want to grab a comment quickly. I'm going to expand on that a bit. Um, unique is a word. Yes. <laughs> yeah, unique yeah. is a word. It's uniquely terrible. Um, so it's so much worse uh, than that. The plat mod works. I hate you, Cree. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> it's not just that they drag... Like, so the, the reason the bomb is there is because a plane crashed there, and they used some of that plane to build the town. One single plane isn't enough material, though, so they do explain in lore exactly what Setch was just saying. Oh, hey, they went to an airfield and spent months upon months dismantling planes and dragging the parts back here to build around the bomb. It gets even worse than that, though, because they also say while they were in the process of this, they were constantly being harassed by massive dust storms. Spoiler alert, Megaton's crater is so fucking enormously, like, fantastically comically big, those dust storms would actually turn it into a fucking blender. <laughs> like, that dust does, isn't going to magically float over the top of it. There, it's going to go into there and just go... Like, you're literally going to get your all of your your skin and hair and clothes sandblasted off of you. Yeah, I feel like these people have never seen an actual, like, divot in the ground in, like, you know, dry, windy places. You get little vortexes that form in there. <laughs> Depending on the strength of the wind, if there's any tiny rocks in there... Yeah, it's basically a blender. It would shred these buildings. It's just it's just so silly. It's like, I, I could understand if it was a small little ditch. Again, you I, can actually do that for certain, like, for tornadoes and shit. But Jesus Christ, this thing is not a small little ditch. This thing is massive. The, I, the, I think, the magical winds are going to go over it. I think I figured out why the Megaton Crater is so big. Why is that? Uh, a Dragon Ball Z character got thrown into the ground there. <laughs> ah, yeah, right. <laughs> um, hey, Cree, kind of late. What was the group consensus on the Fallout show trailer? We haven't even gotten there yet. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still going through Oxhorn, like, being very worried about the Fallout TV show because of everything he's seen <laughs> and read. And it's like, my dude, this is how we all felt way before this when it came to just even Fallout 3. And somebody in chat, whoever it was, I want to kiss you, said, did the perfect meme of, like, first time? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I dipped my balls into the Megaton water, now I'm psychic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the voices will not stop having a real one. Forget an airplane crash, it was the fucking uh, Cybermen that made that crater. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> God, I just I don't know why it just made me immediately think of uh, um the Daleks would destroy the Cybermen. <laughs> How many are there? Four. Four Daleks could destroy the Cybermen. The Cybermen are so inferior. One Dalek could destroy the Cybermen. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Those two I... fighting each other. I, I can't wait to get Pagan through uh, David Tennant's era of Doctor Who, because there's a lot of good in there, but we haven't started season two yet, and there's two episodes in there that are just... Ah! I don't care I butcher those lines. I got them close enough. Um, I rewatched. Um, Actually, I'll be right back. I'm getting a phone call. Hold on. I actually rewatched a phone call tonight. You know what? Pagan, uh, continue without. Or do we want to uh, wait? What, what, what are we doing? 
Do we want to continue the video without him? <laughs> uh, no, let's let, let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. No, oh, fine. But um. <laughs> So you're yeah, allowed I, to butcher the line, and I'm not. No, it's because you. There was a perfect pun opportunity. You didn't take. <laughs> God, Megaton looks so bad. <laughs> I hate it so much. I'm back, and I, I just don't get why they would want to transplant something like this onto the West Coast. Anyways, they need to inspect it because everybody knows. Well, not everybody, but. The Fallout community is like, the West Coast is the good ones, and the East Coast are the bad ones. So now they're trying to infect the West Coast to be, oh, it's all of ours now. Yeah. Anyways, before I uh, got a call there, I rewatched um, the season four finale for Doctor Who, uh, The Stolen Earth and Journey's End. And man, that is... There's, there's some tism in there, but that ending is so fucking sad. I don't want to spoil anything. But, like, it, it's really good. And they fucked it up. I'm so I, mad about that. Yeah, so Ableist uh, Shitlord says, I would never, I would have never bothered with using the existing IP and it, attempted to use my own. Woke retards use other IPs as they know nobody would accept their writing without it. Exactly. I mean, yeah. you, you've hit the nail on the head. That's exactly why. Uh, by the way, Sech, I watched Grabbers, and it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Absolutely, that is a that is a gem. That is a cult classic gem for a reason. Damn, that season four ending must make you really hate the new episode. Then it does. I I spent most of last night working on a script for the uh, Star Beast episode of Doctor Who. I'm doing a video on it because I am fucking pissed. Anyways, video. We're close to being done. Yeah. It's possible that another scrap city on the other side of the continent was also made from the ruins of destroyed airplanes, and they just so happened to almost look identical because they were made from the exact same components. All right. It's possible. It's it's possible. I, I mean... Yeah, but it still probably shouldn't exist at this stage in the timeline. And again, unless this is a newly built settlement, like literally this town we see in the Fallout show is something that has existed for like a year. But even yep. then, it would be questionable as to why they haven't started trying to replace buildings with something more permanent. As opposed to, yeah, this is just a bunch of scrap nailed together. Yeah, as, as I said, the Megaton's existence in and of itself is painful. Like, it yeah. shouldn't exist. Listen to his tone, he's fighting his own sanity, yeah. This is, uh, this is someone trying to justify to themselves that it's not that bad, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's just a little airborne, it's just a little airborne. Oh god. Homer's uh, like fucking pig. <laughs> and I screamed Megaton. It reminded me of Megaton. And I don't want everything from the games to have a carbon copy in this show. I'm excited that this show is telling a different story. It's not retelling Fallout 3. It's not retelling Fallout 4. It's telling a brand new story in a post-apocalyptic wasteland set in the Fallout universe that's great. And if that's the case, then I want to see new cities. I want to see new factions. I want to find new themes. I don't want to see the exact same stuff that I've already seen before. I don't... Yeah, I can agree first with most time. of that. <laughs> first time. It is, it is literally the first time meme. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that's all you really have to say, first time. Um... I mean, yeah. That, it would have been nice to see a town that isn't a copy-paste of Megaton. It would have been nice to see a faction that isn't the Brotherhood of Steel. Well, it's not the Brotherhood of Steel, but they have the name of the Brotherhood of Steel. It's kind of the fucking problem. Oxhorn character arc moment. Yeah, he's gone through a little character arc, apparently. I'm proud of him. 
Yeah, I, like, the big thing will be if he can recognize that this is a problem that has always plagued Bethesda's shit tier writing throughout <laughs> the entirety of the series. I just remembered something. I posted a tweet in our group chat yesterday from uh, Hard Drive saying that uh, GTA 6 is going to have 1,000 planets. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Fallout TV show is going to have 1,000 planets. <laughs> I don't want to see I've already seen Megaton. I don't want to see Lucas Sims, only whoops, he's a ghoul this time, but he's still a cowboy and he's still in Megaton. Whoops, it's not Megaton, it's Philly. I don't want to see the Pridwin. I've already seen the Pridwin. I want to see a new piece of Brotherhood technology. If we have to have a new piece of Brotherhood technology, because I'm honestly kind of sick of seeing the Brotherhood of Steel in absolutely every single Fallout game. Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> I am I am actually shocked. Yeah. Holy shit. Again, the, the Brotherhood <laughs> of Steel shouldn't have even been in Fallout 3. It was a fucking mistake. Yeah. Yeah, now you see what I mean when I said I was very surprised about this video. <laughs> yeah. Again, I I genuinely think someone in chat nailed it. That that Starfield is kind of the thing that broke the Bethesda Hards back. And they're not a unified <laughs> front anymore. They're, they're starting to realize, I... wait, Bethesda can do wrong? I, I would love it if that's true. Holy shit. Um, yeah. That would be pretty funny. Well, and as it turns out, apparently, um, Starfield actually didn't sell that well. And Starfield <laughs> also didn't do well on Game Pass, which is sh more shocking. <laughs> um, like, I think I think it was like 4 million copies or something like that was the it, totality of it now. Oh, my God. It's like, that's not great. Like, that sounds amazing for like an indie studio or something like that. This is Bethesda. A mainliner studio, like it, it was like four million copies sold, and the rest of it was Game Pass or something like that. It's like that's really not good. Yeah, it's just funny to me how you we had all these people defending Starfield to death before <laughs> it came out, just absolutely hailing this thing as, it'll be the greatest masterpiece, the greatest achievement Bethesda has ever made. It's their own IP. They could do whatever they want. We'll yeah. finally get to see what good they can truly do. And then it's no the thing will. that literally broke the camel's back and fucking made all, it <laughs> made so many Bethesda shields realize, oh, oh, these games aren't good. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's it's just so funny because of how it's just we still have those somewhere in Kree's Discord the people that are like, huh, you think Baldur's Gate three is gonna compete with the masterpiece that is Starfield? <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh it's just that's just Sony ponies. They're all they're doing is fucking coping because they don't get Bethesda's magnum opus. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh god. Uh, two dollars from just a guy from Alabama. Thank you. Oh my god, is Oxhorn uh, evolving more gray matter? Um, he might have got a wrinkle there. You know, there's a, there's a wrinkle on <laughs> the noggin somewhere. Yeah, I, I, I respect that he's looking at this with a more critical eye than he maybe did before, and he's not just excusing everything with like really lame ass excuses like he did before. Because it can't be understated. The videos of his we've covered before on Stag were really, really fucking bad. There's a reason we meme on the whole scientists wreck on reality all the time thing and um, a few of the other things he said. I don't remember them all off the top of my head. If you're critical and negative of something, it's just because you have a mental disease and you can't help being negative. Yeah, essentially that. Like, and he, he did the whole thing of, oh, you're uh, demanding perfection. You don't it doesn't need to be perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Blah, 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 blah. Oh my god. I want to do that as a comment. Well, you see Oxhorn, you're just demanding perfection. <laughs> see if he, see if that clicks on him to realize, man, I was such a dickhead back before. It's like, yeah, you were. Maybe he has come to that realization and maybe he's... I, I, I don't look at his channel. I don't know what his content has been like recently. All I know is this is a stark change, and hey, maybe there has been a change, and if so, that's a good thing. Yeah. It is oh, something I can genuinely respect when 
especially someone like this who was so blindly praising of things before, or at least seemingly blindly praising, um, where they where they do stop and turn around and be like, you know what, though? I am going to be critical about this thing now. I can yeah. respect that. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely pleased that he's coming around to start thinking of things this way, more so this way. I don't know if it'll be a thing that goes forward in the future, but the fact that it's even happened once is like, yeah, good on you. Yeah. But it's one of those like, okay, so now take this thing that you're doing right now and think about it from the perspective of those of us that played Fallout 1 and 2 and went to 3. Mm-hmm. Okay? They're like, just, just try that, Oxhorn, and maybe you'll understand why most actual Fallout fans can't stand Bethesda's shitty-ass Fallout world. Yeah. I also want to point out, too, that um, th this is good from Oxhorn in particular, too, because he is a channel this big. He does have the power to... Um, I guess, for lack of a better term, influence people. Where, if someone like him is being critical of stuff like this, it, it does genuinely have a greater chance to get other people to be like, huh, you know what, he's right, this this is not that uh, good looking. Or, you know what, we have seen the Brotherhood too much, let's see something new. You know? Yeah, especially when it's going to be set in an area where the Brotherhood should be wiped out. So this should be the NCR Legion. Like, this should be the conflict that Lanius was fucking talking about. That's what's the, t the Fallout TV show. If it's going to be set in this time frame, nine years after Fallout 4, we should be getting the second Legion NCR war. That's what should be happening. Mm-hmm. This should be the divine retribution that Lanius said he would bring to the Mojave. <laughs> I'd watch a show about that if it was handled well. Yeah. Uh, Kretosis, careful. The Redditors and coping consumers are about to hound you again, Lamau. I don't care what Redditors think. Yeah, like... Red I've Redditor had people mention to me a few times, oh man, people really don't like you over there on Reddit. It's like... Okay. Yeah, sure. it, 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 it's like, yeah, again, they... <laughs> when we're talking about the subspecies of mankind, Reddit is on the same tier as Twitter users. So, you know, that's not, it's not like all that impressive. I was actually <laughs> thinking about something involving Reddit the other day where I was like, because I, I heard about apparently the stalker subreddit is really just absolutely god awful, which it's Reddit. Of course it is. And I just got to thinking, like, oh, man, it would be so funny if I made an account and I just went onto the subreddit and I just said, like, hey, guys, like, <laughs> came here because, you know, I just finished playing uh, <laughs> playing Escape from Tarkov. And I know this was <laughs> this is adjacent. <laughs> Been really enjoying it, but there's all these weird, like, invisible things that keep killing me, and there's all <laughs> these really weird, like, ugly animals that are really annoying. How do I turn them off? <laughs> just to <laughs> fuck with them? <laughs> just to get, like, massive downvote and <laughs> just make the thread lose their fucking mind. <laughs> Five dollars from Harv3034. Thank you. Damn it, I'm light. High curry, furry, and farm equipment. Um, no. Y'all see the Fallout showing stuff. Looks crap. Yeah, we're going through that now, kind of. Did I get that other super chat? Yeah, I did. Especially CR, not the Brotherhood of Steel, that's the most powerful faction in Los Angeles, according to established lore. I'm probably just overthinking this. We don't have a whole lot of information. These are just images. I'm probably just reading too much into it. I just really want this show to be good. So bad. After what happened to The Witcher. After what happened to Halo. I just really... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the fact he even mentioned The Witcher. Like, I can understand, like, nobody can really defend Halo. You can try, but no one's going to take you seriously. <laughs> I can see people yeah. trying to defend The Witcher. <laughs> the fact that he's even calling out The Witcher here, it's like, oh my god. 
<laughs> have, have your eyes been open, child? Are you finally awake? <laughs> have you finally realized that maybe all of this is absolute dog shit and we should stop giving all these companies and especially fucking Hollywood a free pass to stick their dick in every IP? Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say it again. This is exactly the reason why a lot of us complain about stuff like Fallout 4 and Fallout 3 when they come out. Because, like, when you keep excusing garbage and giving it a pass, there's only one destination that road leads to. Yeah, you're going to the fucking dump. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was reading chat. Uh -oh. <laughs> and I just saw Thief's comment. Oxhorn hasn't hated anything this much since he talked about the gays. <laughs> this show to be good. Anyway, so those are my thoughts after seeing the new images that Prime Video released. And I will still say that I'm cautiously optimistic. I haven't seen anything <laughs> yet that really destroys it for me. Except oh, I have. You you mentioned it in this uh, video, my friend. The Brotherhood are law and order types? No. No. Yeah. Except for maybe the cars. They should be Corvega cars, not clearly Chevrolets. Corvega is not Chevrolet. It's okay. It's okay. It's just cars. They're just cars doesn't completely ruin it for me, so I'm crossing my fingers and hoping for the best. How about you? Will this be ruined like every other video game adaptation to film and television, or do you think they're gonna get this one right? No. Let me know your thoughts <laughs> in the Not comment section below. <laughs> I publish new videos each and every Yeah, no. Uh, I, well, at this point, I feel there's no hope for the show. Yeah. Bethesda's at the helm, for God's sakes. Like, These are the I'm sounds sorry. of a broken man. <laughs> it's the Skyrim fucking intro. Hey, you're finally awake. <laughs> exactly, that's what I was making reference to earlier. <laughs> also, if you don't want to miss my next one, be sure to subscribe and to... Okay, it's just chilling at this point. Yeah, we don't need to watch any more of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think we've only had a handful of times where we were getting to the shilling thing, and then suddenly a massive shit take nuke lands. <laughs> it's just like what? And one of them was that Half Life video. I remember that very clearly. I can't remember what the shit take was, but I remember we were in the shilling. Oh, it's just shilling thing. It's only three more seconds. What can you say? And then he just drops a fucking deuce bombshell. It's like what the shit. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, actually a pretty decent video from Oxhorn, which was surprising. He, uh, yeah. backed up his, uh, claims with evidence, which, again, we don't see often, even in cases where people are right, so the fact that he's doing that is, like, a really good thing. Absolute, yeah. uh, credit for that. He also um, gave us much more ammunition for why he needs to stop using fucking mods, like, immediately, <laughs> please. <laughs> Your, your mod choice is terrible. You know what? You can have your terrible mod choices. Just don't use them to make your videos. Use them to play on your yeah. own. Or even on yeah. stream. I, I, like, streams, whatever. Don't use, like, really fucked up mod footage for, your, like, videos. It looks bad. Especially when you're trying to be slightly critical of something, or like trying to point out, like, and because this is here, we can infer that, yeah, but what if a mod put it there, you idiot? Which happened multiple times to you, by the way. I'm sorry, when I say to you, I'm specifically talking about Oxhorn. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he, he brought up a bunch of, uh, valid points that are genuine concerns for the show, where why are the Brotherhood Law and Order types? Why are they in NCR territory and the NCR isn't even mentioned? Um, why do we have this megaton-looking city? We should have something new. Please give me something new. 
So, yeah, that's actually pretty decent. And it uh, told us about a lot about the show that will be coming out sooner rather than later, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I could really go for this show getting delayed. <laughs> I hope it gets the uh, uh, Batgirl treatment. Just fucking can that thing. Yeah, I, I would. that would be the best outcome, but we know that fucking Hollywood and Bethesda are too up their own ass and stubborn. There's no way. Yeah. Yeah, and I feel like with all the stuff we've seen, I feel like they're going to have a sunken cost feeling here where they're going to be like, nah, we've we've put too much into this. We have to release it no matter what. we got to recoup at least something. Yeah. All right, I have that article up. Uh, you linked Pagan. I need to grab that now. Let me just uh, adjust this a little bit. Oh, that's that's funny. I have my watch together over my other monitor, and I brought the article up, and then I tried to bring the article and put it with. I'm like, why is the tab going to get? Oh yeah, different browser. Will that be good enough? Yeah, they'll get all the text in. Okay. A little off center, it's fine. Are you guys ready? I know, but that's not gonna stop the pain. No, it's <laughs> not. The globally popular video game has become an epic TV series from Westworld creator Jonathan Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> so, so many things are wrong in just that statement alone. So this came out a few days ago, November 28th. Uh, I believe this is the article Oxhorn was reading in his video? Yes, it oh. was. Okay. The day after my birthday. What a shitty birthday present. Thanks, Vanity Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Fallout often looks like the distant past, but it's really the far-off future. And actually, it's the end of life as we know it. You're, you're wrong on so many things on just this first fucking sentence. <laughs> wow. Like, it doesn't look like the distant past. It looks like the distant past's ideal of what the future was going to be with the fucking robots and the special space cars and everything. The, the space age looking cars, I should say. It doesn't look like the past at all. <laughs> and also, it's not the end of all life. It <laughs> clearly exists. It just continues. No, it's a barren rock such. It's, uh, it's a Starfield uh, planet with no life on it. Oh, so, you know, 99.99% of them. <laughs> There's no life here. That's why we're deciding to make a show about it. <laughs> they just wanted to give people the Starfield experience for those who wisely didn't, you know, fall for it. <laughs> In the new series, debuting on Amazon's Prime Video on April 12th, a nuclear war breaks out across Earth. In the year 2077, which is, or was... An era of robots, hover cars, and a deep and abiding nostalgia for the America of the 1940s. It wasn't nostalgia. They weren't looking back nostalgically. Again, it's how they developed. This is their culture. This is the culture of 2077. This uh, is not 2077 <laughs> pretending to be 1940s America. Also, oh. um, hover cars? I don't think we had hover cars like any anywhere <laughs> i can't think i can't think of a hover car anywhere like again this is the jetsons future that the old the old timers thought was going to be what the future looked like you know the the fucking mobile walkways that your car can turn into a briefcase you can carry into the building with you sort of thing you know it's it's the weirdo future stuff Everything from the clothes to the entertainment to the vehicles mimic the look of that bygone age, albeit with a sci-fi tilt. That retrofuturist aesthetic was one of the charms of, um, bleh, was one of the charms of the mega-selling video game series that inspired the show. It. Well, well, also you just fucking destroyed your entire thing. The retrofuturist aesthetic. Yeah, again. It wasn't an aesthetic trying to nostalgia harken back to the fucking 40s, you idiot. 
but also, it, like, it, did it really inspire the show when it was specifically tapped to be made? Why? Yeah. So, like, it, it's... inspired would be like if this if this show was called like um, the aftermath or whatever, and it's obviously like harkens to Fallout, right? Yeah, that's inspired. This is a direct product. Not just a direct product, but one that's apparently canon with the games. Uh, you, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> to me, Inspired has, already, has always meant, like, hey, here's a thing similar to this other thing, but it's also very different. It would be like, um... Oh God, I'm just trying to think of, like, a good example. I guess... The Thura versus Jumanji. That could work. Sure, I've never seen that other movie, but sure. It was a spiritual successor to Jumanji. And yeah. It did the same thing with board game and going on a fantastical adventure. It or, was just... um, Game of Thrones is inspired by Lord of the Rings in part. Yeah. I really... should say A Song of Ice and Fire. You know what I mean. Yeah. Where yeah. it's like, yeah, there's some inspiration there, but, like, it's a completely different world with completely different rules and magic systems and everything. That's what inspired typically means to me is you get something completely different because someone had an idea from something else they saw. Yeah. So, you know, that again, that's wrong. Where you, like, you're just, you're just, every, they're throwing fucking perfect straight balls to you and you're just striking out every single time right now, Vandy Fair. Come on. Well, let's see what this uh, next paragraph has to say. Mass Extinction is just the starting point for Fallout, which was developed for TV by Westworld creators and husband and wife, Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy. After the incendiary mushroom clouds, the story flashes forward 219 years. How did humanity fare over those blighted two centuries? Lucy, one of the lead characters, played by Yellow Jacket star Ella Purnell, has no clue. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, again, multiple problems. One, nice use of the word fair, you idiot. It's the wrong one. Um, again, mentioning Westworld, I get it. It's all hype and marketing, but Westworld Season 2 onwards was dog shit. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, it was really, really fucking bad. And Season 1 was so good that I would still unironically tell people to watch Westworld Season 1 and then just fucking forget everything else comes after it. Just assume that it ends when the credits roll in the final episode. Because it still works perfectly as, like, its own little thing, self-contained story. Uh, but just, wow. She has lived her entire life inside a subterranean vault where every need and want has been satisfied, while generations and generations await the day when it is safe to return to... Sur or, sorry, I added a word there. Yeah. While generations and generations await the day when it is safe to surface. Let me get a little uh, picture of um, people in a vault. I guess. And again, keeping that low frame rate, so we've got smear frames and motion blur. Oh, Hooray. yeah. <laughs> I love what characters in the background... Sorry, it's hard for chat to see. Let me uh, grab this quickly. Don't yeah. you love it when people next to you in the world become a singularity and start blurring out of existence? <laughs> when a crisis forces Lucy to venture above on a rescue mission... She finds that the planet above remains a hellscape, crawling with giant insects, voracious mutant animal abominations. Why is abominations in quotes? And a human yeah. population of sun-baked miscreants who make the manners, morals, and hygiene of uh, the gunslinging Old West look like Down Downton Abbey. So, again, this is another one of those things where people don't understand the ethics, the, the hygiene, and everything of the Wild West. It's that natural assumption that, oh, you know, the peasants in the Middle Ages were just unclean, uncouth, unwashed, you know, with shit smeared all over them. How dirty and disgusting. It's this weird thing of, like, 
superiority against the past. You think you're so much more advanced than than the past was. And it's like, no, not really. Technology's gotten better, absolutely. But, you know, he, human beings don't like to be dirty. Yeah. It, it's a thing. We, we just don't like it. That's that's in, built into our nature. The games are about the culture of division and haves and have-nots that unfortunately, have only gotten more and more acute in this country and around the world over the last decades. Nolan tells Vanity Fair for this exclusive first look. Fucking wrong. Also, what? You're... What? Yeah, I, I, again, it, it's modern-day yeah. leftist politics. Yep. <laughs> this is this is the leftoid NPC playbook right here. Yeah, they are injecting a story of basically the yet yeah, like yeah the tin pay tower thing it's they're trying to be like oh we you have the haves and the have nots it's like yeah. that's not what fucking fallout is about at all no yeah it, it, it's just insane like fallout is literally about fallout not fallout from the nuclear thing but the fallout from repercussions of your actions from different factions coming to the battle and clash against each other from different ideals trying to fight for dominance in a world of now scarce resources. Lucy is nice, but Lucy is naive. In the Fallout universe, the human beings fortunate enough to ride out the apocalypse in underground communities only had that option available to them because they had money. Fucking full stop right there. No, they didn't. <laughs> no. You just had to get a screening and be put on a list and oftentimes sign a waiver that you could be used in experiments and, and for medical trials and things like that. Also, weren't it some people specifically selected for the vault experiments because they'd be more useful for the experiments? Yes. Like, hey, that guy is a train conductor. We're going to have him in this vault for this reason. Hey, that guy's an electrical engineer. He'd be useful in this one. Like, you know, it, they're not going to put the doctor in the fucking science lab robot vault, okay? <laughs> they're they're going to pick a fucking atomic engineer or nuclear physicist. They're going to pick fucking scientists to put in there. Five dollars from... So Five dollars from Dark World XL, thank you. The super mutants might be treated better in the show than any Bethesda game. Pressing fucking X to doubt on that. I, they yeah, might highly be just doubt. because no 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 I think they might be because they're going to do the classic grand wizards of the coast and assume that the super mutants represent black people. Oh, I, no. I almost guarantee that's what's going to fucking happen. And so yeah. our naive vault dweller here, a, a strong independent woman is going to do it. I bet you that's going to happen. I'll, I'll put that on the fucking bingo card that that happens. Forcing doe-eyed Lucy out into the sit bleh. Forcing doe-eyed Lucy out into the sadistic Darwinian remnant of civilization opens the door for Fallout to engage in some social satire as well as action and adventure. Like HBO. We don't. Go ahead. We don't want your social satire. No. We know what it's gonna be, and it's gonna be awful. We don't want. Yeah. Like HBO's hit The Last of Us, which was also adapted from a blockbuster video game, the end of the world offers a rich opportunity to comment on the real one. It shouldn't. Th this is them just no. saying outright that this is going to be all about the message. Yes, yep. this is just going to push the fucking agenda. Such, did you see the BBC review of the Starbeast episode of Doctor Who where the BBC itself literally says that this episode is just a delivery mechanism for the message. Like, yeah. literally quoting the message. Yeah, it's just fucking insanity again. It's just, it's an infection, it's the disease. That's all it is at this point. Yeah, this is what I meant when I said, um, even if you just want, like, silly, goofy Bethesda Fallout, you're not getting that. You're getting a fucking preachy fucking, you know, the message shoved down your throat. Five dollars from Dialyocon. Thank you. Is the main character going to be a strong, independent, girl-boss woman who makes annoying jokes every time and talks and talks and talks and uh, who also needs no man? Um, we don't know yet, but that might be what we get. 
it, it's kind of what they're hinting at with this naive thing because their version of naive versus you know the real world version of naive it tends to be like they just as the naive that they that is that oh you know everything and thinks the same way i do and is perfect you know sort of thing like you know we might be able to tell more when we watch the um the trailer we'll actually <laughs> yeah. get to see her maybe um 50 ars from draguo dot thank you they should have done a followed equestria series instead although they would have probably hired haber and dubuk as showrunners i have no oh, idea God. about any of that yeah they probably would have oh god god a followed equestria tv show would be fucking interesting like you could make that work literally if you just adapted the book to you know television it would probably work really well but yeah no if you got haber to work on it uh nah they'd they'd find a way to fuck it up they, they'd find some way to put their super special powerful oc as the main character yeah. hmm we get to talk about that in a wonderful speculative fiction way says nolan who directed the first three episodes. I think we're all looking at the world and going, God, things seem to be heading in a very, very frightening direction. <laughs> now that the pendulum is swinging back in the wrong direction. Yep. It's literally just, oh, right-wingers bad. How dare people support Trump? Oh, no, no. There has been a rumored leak that there will be a lot of uh, disparagements against Trump in the show. Yeah, that's what I've heard too. In fact, I would not be surprised if but, one of the like main villains of the show is literally just like an orange blonde haired dude. Yeah. They they'll just do the Doctor Who thing. The um <laughs> what, what was it? Jack, Spiderson Jack Robinson. Yeah, yeah, the Spiderson yeah, the UK spider. one. Yeah, it'll literally just be that. It'll just be that. Hmm. As Westworld emphasized, that was a l rumored leak. I'm not. You know, it could be total bullshit, but from what I'm what we're reading here already, it's not looking good for that not being true. Yeah. Yeah. As Westworld demonstrated, Nolan has a fascination with a mix of mythology and psychology that make up human nature. His characters typically believe one thing about themselves while behaving in a radically different way under pressure. He previously created the series Person of Interest about a world in which crimes and terrorism can be, uh, bleh, can be predicted in advance, and he co-wrote such films as The Prestige, The Dark Knight, and Interstellar with his filmmaker brother Christopher Nolan. I guess we don't really have anything to comment on here. I I mean, uh, it's like, yeah, The Prestige really. was great, Dark Knight I, was great. I, I don't know anything about Interstellar. I'll be back again. I'm getting a phone call. Fair. Nope. Good. It, it, but this is just one of those things of like, okay, yeah, but how much did he actually do? You say he co-wrote, but who did he co-write them with? Were they with his brother Christopher? Well, that might explain why like those were good. Like he he probably Christopher's probably the one that fucking fixed all your bullshit. Because I mean, what you're spouting right now, I can't imagine you were the the writer that did all that stuff beforehand. I. Hmm. Seem I'm I don't know, I'm skeptical of your credentials. Like how much did you actually do for these things? <laughs> I just read that next slide. Holy shit. Interstellar was not good. Oof. Yeah, Kree's on. Oh Kree's talk with something again. That's why we're we're trying to not so much fill dead air, but you know, just trying to keep a conversation going because Kree is a Kree had to go grab something. I uh, <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah, I read that. that right yeah, that further. next one. <laughs> like, that's mm -hmm. hilarious. That's uh, that's very ironic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like the exact opposite of what that camp does all the time. Yeah.
They describe Lucy as a champagne socialist, but they won't realize it. Yeah. It's... Again, I have a feeling they haven't done anything super like that yet. They just said she's very naive. Um, and I guess the next thing is going to talk about her being a do-gooder, but we'll wait for Cree to go through with that. Yeah. I am worried, though. It just seems like... You yes, know, I am super... Put a female in it. Make her gay and lame. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, don't, what do, I just I just hate this so much. I hate that Bethesda ever got a hold of Fallout in the first place. Like yeah. it's been nothing but a disaster for that entire franchise. God, you know, I just I just can easily imagine a world where Troika got a hold of it. And got funding and produced another hit, one that probably would have kept them from going under. Because I think all of Troika's games, the three they made, are just fantastic gems. Rough as hell, but like the writing, world building on it is just so good. Even if Troika got it and it was just a mid game, I, I still think that would be infinitely better than what we got because Bethesda got it. Yeah, I agree. Holy cow! They made that Vampire the Masquerade game, right? Yep. They made that, they made um, Arcanum, uh, Magic, and Steamworks. Uh, fuck. I fucked up the name of the game. Now my brain's all jumbled. One second, I want to get make sure I get the right name. <laughs> oh my god, you're right, it does. <laughs> this article makes it sound like vault were the good guys and <laughs> provided plenty for everyone. Yeah, yeah, because the whole, like, oh, yeah, only the rich could get... Uh, no, you did not want to be in one of these things. Yeah. Like, if you were lucky, you got into a control vault, but otherwise, it's like, yeah, no, you were fucked if you got into one of these. Um. So, these are the three games they made. They made Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura, a fantastic game that is one of the only other games that really, like, because they they played it like a tabletop game. One of the only other games that has so much choice and like being able to go out of sequence and change things pretty dramatically. Uh, then you have the Temple of Elemental Evil, a fantastic dungeon crawler. And then you have Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, a fantastic first slash third person RPG set in the World of Darkness system. Which, holy shit, what a, what a fucking lineup of games. Like, those are those are three like diamonds back to back to back. They just yeah. didn't sell, which is so fucking frustrating. Because their games are so Ree. good. I'm back. Welcome back. No, the Temple of Elemental Evil is what it's called. I didn't miss any super chats. There's just that one that came in uh, just a minute ago. Yeah, just now. Um, 20 ARS from Draguo Dot. Thank you. I still haven't met a child who prefers G5 over G4. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, G I, I agree. Nobody. Only the brain dead seem to actually be defending G5. Like, like oh, literally uh... mouth. <laughs> I, I'm gonna go on a Lynn the Pony show. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yeah, the new generation of My Little yeah, Pony yeah, that yeah. came out, and it is, it is awful. It is really bad. It just keeps getting worse and worse the more I hear about it. Um, but yeah, literally only like drooling troglodytes actually <laughs> are defending G5. No one else seems to like it. It is extremely bad it is some of the worst character assassination i have ever seen in any piece of media it is so bad i 
All right, then. Did you guys uh, continue the article at all, or no? No, no uh, we were we, waiting. We made mention of the stuff because it's hard not to read forward, <laughs> but holy shit, it's... It's about to get worse? Yeah. The very next line you're about to read is very ironic. Well, I'll say that. Yes. Jonathan, who goes by Jonah, is fond of plunging his fictional test subjects into situations that uh, unsettle their deeply held beliefs. That is <laughs> ironic already, and then it gets more ironic with this very next thing. So many of us have uh, such naive ideas, even now, about everyone else's experiences, and it's one of the things I love about America. It's this giant, manic collection of different experiences, different points of view, no one says. Desperation, <laughs> um... Desperation only exacerbates those fissures in Fallout, as Pernal's do-gooder soon discovers. Yeah, I, I how, how fucking ironic, given the camp that he's already, like, waving the banner for and advocating for. The fact It'll that someone from Hollywood point. is talking about people having different experiences when Hollywood only knows their own experiences. Yes. Yeah, and we're having a different point of view is literally the like it, akin to genocide in their eyes. Yeah. Yeah. How dare you not think as part of the hive mind and submit and obey the government and all things. It's like, yeah, no. <sighs> Lucy is charming and plucky and strong. And then you see she's confronted with the reality of, hey, maybe the supposedly virtuous things you grew up with are not necessarily that virtuous. If they are virtuous, they're couched in a circumstantial uh, virtuousness. It's a luxury <laughs> virtue. You have your point of view because you never ran out of food, right? You guys were able to share everything because you had enough to share. Oh my god. Oh my god. Why do you I get the feeling? Just drops, huh? Why do I get the feeling it's literally going to be one of these things where she's going to have like a normal or correct reaction to something and the show is going to be like no you're wrong because you haven't experienced what it's like to be you know poor or black in america or some shit like that like yeah ooh, that i that those are the vibes i'm getting from this where it's like i don't know yes. man this is feeling a lot more like put a chick in it make her gay and lame <laughs> <laughs> it really is. i mean it is kind of a perfect setup for that you know, someone living in a vault who is comfortable and has everything they need. So, that's going to be compared to white people because reasons. Mm -hmm. And then you throw them out into the world and you see how tough things really are. And that's the experience of literally every single other person on the planet. It's like, uh, yep. okay. White that's people definitely visit the hood for the first time for the Fallout edition. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God damn it! The Fallout series tracks her collision with the hard reality of other people's experiences and what happened to the people who, frankly, were left behind. Left to die, Nolan says. Again, it wasn't that they were left to die. It's that, you know, Baltech was doing experiments and they did it on this crazy idea of, well, if this does happen, you would want to be in one, wouldn't you? And they let all kinds of people in. Like, they even tried to let in people that were, like, of the hobos and everything like that because it might have been part of their fucking experiments they wanted to do. Yeah. And again, they're treating it like the fucking vaults were these, like, really good things for people like oh yeah they were the good guys they were or well they were good for the rich and stuff like that it's like no they were horror stories you were extremely unlucky if you got into one of these things like if you were very very lucky you got a control vault yeah otherwise you were fucked mm. if you got if you got the luck of the gods and got vault 13 oh praise be Holy yeah. shit. If you were not, I, and you got like a Vault 21 or something like that, it's like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, Enjoy your life. It's especially insane to try and draw this comparison of like, oh yeah, 
people who had money got into vaults when, well, to vault it was unfinished in Fallout 4. The one that you find Nick Valentine in, the vault experiment there was supposed to be, let's make this incredibly cramped, uncomfortable vault and fill it full of a bunch of fucking rich snobs. Yeah. Because they're going to be the, yeah. the kind of people who are not used to these living conditions. They're kind of people who are used to being uh, weighted on hand and foot, you know? So let's put isn't them... Isn't this kind of a... Hmm? Go ahead. I was going to say, isn't this kind of a fitting microcosm, though, of their perception of... Because, again, they're trying to do, like, the rich white people who get more... You know, like, this is what they believe they are. And then you look at the reality of it, and it's like, the people who got into these vaults were typically, like, screwed over in the worst way possible. Yeah. Like, rarely, mo like, most of them would die. And it's just like, isn't that a great mo microcosm, though, of, like, the <laughs> very thing that they're trying, like, the message they're trying to push and why it doesn't work? Yeah. Where it's like, oh, yeah, because this is how it really is. And then you look at the fact, and it's like, oh, it's actually not like that at all. I also want to point out to um, the power armor in this image looks fucking weird. Yeah, a something... lot of people have been talking about like the power armor just doesn't look right. There's something about it. It, it looks like it... painted plastic. Not just that, yes. but these models in particular, they look like what I would expect from a cutscene from like. Uh, maybe late PlayStation 2 is too early. Or, sorry, um... No, yeah, too early is right. But maybe, like, really, really early PS3. Where this is, like, this is the cutscene model that uh, a game of that era might have. Where... Maybe? I was gonna say it still... looks more like they... It looks like they went to a convention and they found a group of cosplayers and then took their picture without telling them. <laughs> I think a, maybe. A big problem with it is is the pauldrons look honestly look at how big those fucking pauldrons are they they, they make the head look fucking tiny and meanwhile let's look at some actual armor it, it also games. it also kind of feels like that um like they might be action figures that were posed there as opposed to like real people in costume Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like the way that the foot, when they're walking, is kind of tilted. It, it, it Again, it has like that clunky cosplay feel to it where it's like, it, it looks like they could fall over at any minute by accident. <laughs> it just has a very clunky, like, cosplay element to it. Here's this. You can see in this... There you go. Uh, look, that again, that's concept work, but this is what they base their model off of uh, mm -hmm. in the game itself for Fallout. Look, look at the look at the shoulders in comparison to these that we're seeing on on Vanity Fair's thing. The shoulders look way better. They don't look so massive and huge and cumbersome, where they're literally like coming up to being top of the guy's fucking forehead. You know, the these shoulders are actually down enough that if you turned your head to the left or the right, you could actually look over them. <laughs> they wanted the, the Warhammer aesthetic. <laughs> Make yeah. them big. <laughs> <laughs> if they're not at least four times the size of the head and stick up at least a foot over the crown of your noggin, then they ain't good. That's that's low B tier one shit. Also, yes, I was muted for that. I'm aware. No, we're talking about we're talking about this when it comes to uh, the power armor. Like this power armor on screen right now, the the Vanity Fair articles thing looks so bad. Yeah. There's something about it's it that's hard to good. place exactly, where it just, it looks off. Yeah, something it about it doesn't like look right. CGI. And it's not just us. I've seen a lot of people complaining about the power armor specifically, that it just doesn't look right. And I've heard a lot of different explanations, but there's, just, there's something about it that just doesn't 
feel right. Like I can't put my finger on it, but there is something where you look at it and you just think this doesn't feel real. Like this doesn't feel like something that actually exists in this world. Yeah. Also, what shot is supposed to take place? And where are all their weapons? Like, are they just saddling up for their fun? Fucking it's the final countdown. Is that Maybe. what's going on here? Maybe they're just walking across a military base. At one of their military bases now. Yeah, that's what I'm assuming. Also, I I find it a little bit odd. There's just something about the sparks coming off of the feet. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Yeah, there's the one in front and the one immediately behind him on his right, I think? It'd be his left uh, boot. The guy directly who's at the the leader of the pack with the sparks are the most visible on the ground. <laughs> his left no. boot is somehow leaving sparks even though it's not touching the ground. <laughs> yeah, the, the, there's sparks coming uh, off of him and the one right like behind on. him to the side and it just doesn't look right. I'm gonna play it again. <laughs> why are they sparking? Oh! Well, that's weird. I don't know why they even added that effect. Like, I don't feel like if you were walking around in one of these, even in a real one of these, I don't think it would be making sparks every time you stepped on the ground. Well, sparking would require, like, a lot dragging. of friction. Yeah, dragging, friction. As opposed to stepping, which doesn't typically... Five dollars per stream, Cree. I need my royalties. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like if I... these guys were hauling ass and sprinting, and by sheer momentum and weight, the armor was sliding them forward <laughs> slightly with each step they took, sure, fine, sparks. But here, it looks like they're just walking, <laughs> like, at a casual pace. Yeah. It, it's like the slow astronaut walk as they're heading to the uh, uh, the spaceship or the rocket yeah. in movies. That's what this shot looks like. It's like, why the fuck are they sparking their boots? It's like the equivalent of seeing someone <laughs> like in a TV show just walking down the sidewalk and then for whatever reason the show just decides to put speed <laughs> lines around them. <laughs> Even though they're just yeah. walking. It, oh it, it actually feels like a Team Fortress 2 parody video where like Soldier and Heavy are walking along, like, just walking. Uh, sure, maybe it's an intense walk, but every single step they take has, like, an overblown explosion. Or, like, everything <laughs> yeah. is earthquaking around them. Yeah. Like, shaking, like, boom. With yeah. each step. <laughs> God, you, you said that, and now I'm just I'm just imagining all, <laughs> every single one of these, just A-posing and sliding across the ground with, like, that concrete sound effect. No, no, <laughs> And the sparks shooting it as they slide. Even better, they're all a pose, but because of Bethesda product, project, one of them is in the ground making the fucking Gary's Mod ragdoll. <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> God, though, now I just uh, thought of a good idea for a video for TF2 of just the soldier and heavy walking down the street, and it's like zooms out of them, and it's just like, whoop, 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 and you just, they start walking, and there's lots of thumping, and like, you see like maybe birds getting knocked up off of fences, or like, you know, posts falling over stuff because it's so heavy, and then it cuts out to like, the medic or the demo man looking at them like what the fuck are they doing and they're just walking normally nothing's actually happening it's all in their imagination <laughs> they're just walking down the street but they just think they're badass <laughs> yeah also... that whole thing where um it's the it's the edit where somebody took the the skeevy peter parker in the one spider-man 3 movie and they, they just made it with people's normal a normal person's reaction when he, like, tries to do the finger guns at people and shit. <laughs> I also saw a line in this next paragraph that's already bugging me. Uh-oh. Oh, hold on a second. We did not read the, uh, the little excerpt underneath the image with her and... Okay, so that is her father. Yeah. That's... Okay, so that means the other overseer we saw has to be a different one, which means they go to a different vault. Maybe. Oh, no. 
followed his leaving by the same twist of hu uh, twisted sense of humor uh, that made the video games so appealing. The ubiquitous what? logo of Lucy's people, the Vault Dwellers, is a winky cartoon who perpetually bleh, who perpetually flashes a giant smile and the thumbs up sign. This Vault Boy iconography originated in the games and was intended as an uh, ironic, tone deaf contrast to the hard scrabble existence of those who endure on the surface. Nolan enjoys. Where the in the fuck did you get that from? Yeah, what? I, I that is think not. The, the Vault Boy is now ubiquitous of the thing because Bethesda. Oh, it looks good. Yeah. It's like, the Vault Boy barely showed up in Fallout 1 and 2. And it, it, where it was, it was fucking appropriate because it was old media about the vaults or Vault Tech stuff. Wasn't it in the Pip Boy for um, the tra uh, traits and stuff? Yeah. I, 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 I remember it being there, but you know what? But. Make sure that my memory is not like overriding and being like, yeah, I remember, you know, it, we're not having a Berenstein Bears fucking incident. Yes, the the Vault Boy was there. Good. OK, I've, I've just had to make sure I wasn't having a fucking Berenstein Bears moment. But he was indeed in all the pictures for the traits and everything. Yeah. All right. I just don't get where they're getting this thing of like. For those who endure on the surface, no, it was meant to be as like a tone deaf, like mascot, like happy go lucky mascot for a very evil corporation that's gonna fuck over everybody that comes into these vaults. Yeah, yeah. Vault Tech were not good people. It would be like if um, I don't know Lockheed Martin's like mascot was a happy pink cartoon rabbit. Yeah, yeah. or like a a, a beatnik. A, a, beatnik hippie, like, with a peace <laughs> sign on it, with a peace <laughs> sign on his fucking tie-dye chest, like, <laughs> completely fucking counter to what Lockheed Martin is, yeah. or Raytheon and shit like that. It's like, yeah, yeah no, that wouldn't make any sense. So Pippa, so well, okay. Pippa. <laughs> I don't know, Pippa, she might be a good mascot for weapons of destruction. I didn't mean yeah. her. Yeah, but you know when 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 she's unironically going on a murder spree, she's like, "Suck my dick." <laughs> Nolan enjoys What's that. God, what's that one uh, company that's like everyone knows it's really bad? I'm trying to remember. What was it? EA? Nestle. Well, there's EA, but was <laughs> yeah, it Nestle? Okay, Nestle. Yeah, it'd be like, <laughs> which I, I'm making a joke. It'd almost be like if Nestle had a a, a cute chocolate you know cartoon rabbit as their <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no one in Nike's mascot being a well paid adult worker <laughs> <laughs> Nolan enjoys determination to maintain that mordant comedy was the key to making the world work as a series, says game maker Todd Howard, the director of 2008's Fallout 3 and 2015's Fallout 4, an executive producer at uh, Bethesda Game Studios, which developed the franchise. Fuck you. Fuck you so hard. Todd Howard is not the fucking game maker. He's just an idiot that got something he didn't understand and gave it to his fucking best friend who is not a writer and a piece of hack piece of shit. And then to say that Bethesda developed the franchise? Fuck you. Yeah, they didn't develop the fucking franchise. They took it over. They fucking, yeah. like, a hard takeover, too. They, they really fucking went litigious with that shit and fucked over the original studio. Yeah, real good, too. Yeah, fuck yeah. you, Vanity Fair. Why don't you <laughs> also do this... say Todd Howard, who stole the series, would be more accurate. Yeah. Also, this, oh, well, they needed to maintain the Morden comedy, because that was the key to making the world. I'm sorry, what? The but... comedy was like, the fucking, <laughs> the, the, comedy was you know, the fucking. Fallout the pagan. Yeah, it's. Pagan. <sighs> no. Jar Jar is a funnier character than we've ever had before. Oh my god. <laughs> it's just I so mean, dumb to me. In a few places. The fucking like somber humor of the series was such a minor aspect. It was literally it was. just like flavor. It was flavor text. That's all it was. It was barely even a component to the original games. 
they were just there to be like little lighthearted, haha things amongst the sea of content of what the game actually was. Same thing with New Vegas. Like you get tiny little bits of that every once in a while, but they're rare. They are not the focus at all. And the fact it, that they think it is the focus here is a problem. It's um it seems to me like classic comedic relief where like you have such a grim, dour, depressing world and situation that people are dealing with. So you throw in some comedy to offset it so it's not actually depressing to the audience. Yeah, but even the comedy itself is like dark. It's yeah. dark comedy. It's not it's not meant to be goofy, gonzo, wacky, haha, like actually comedic comedic. Yeah, it should be it's supposed to be humor. like Yeah, it's supposed to be dark. It's supposed to have like an underlying tone of like, oh, that's actually kind of fucked up. It's funny, but in a fucked up way. But of course, that's probably too offensive for a modern show like this to actually put in there. No, that might hurt people's sensibilities. We can't put actual dark humor in our show. Yeah. Just like we can't have somebody be a fucking... <laughs> we can't put someone in a wheelchair and have them be a fucking villain. No! <laughs> yep. I told Pagan all about that last night, Such. Yeah. The whole Davros thing. I just want to go back to to when you could actually have gallows humor, and sure, make it make it where it's it's a little cringe, right? Because gallows humor had, does have that kind of makes your spine, you know, go like ugh when you hear it. Like have them cutting down victims of a legion raid that got uh, fucking crucified, and they're like, "Hey, where where was Matthew?" And he's like, "Oh, you know, he decided to hang around while they're taking down Matthew off one of the crosses." Like again, gallows humor. That's it's again, it's it's a joke, but it's a fucking dark joke. We had a lot of conversations over the style of humor, the level of violence, the style of violence, says uh, says Howard, who's also an executive producer of the show. Look, Fallout can be very dramatic and dark, and post apocalyptic. But you need to weave in a little bit of a wink. I think they threaded that needle very well on the TV show. <laughs> well, Fallout can be very dramatic and dark and post-apocalyptic. How? When is Fallout not post-apocalyptic, you moron? <laughs> it's, it's, it's set in the post-apocalypse. It's always <laughs> post-apocalyptic, you fucking brain-dead idiot. As, as long as my post-apocalypse show is a little bit apocalyptic... Or sorry, post-apocalyptic from time to time, we're good. <laughs> oh, God. Vault Boy not only appears in the show, but the imagery even gets an origin story, which we Fuck won't you. spoil here. That was no. something that they came up with. That's just really smart, Howard says. Okay, well, remember, no. for the audience that doesn't know, Todd Howard is an idiot. <laughs> if he says something is really smart, it is likely to be incredibly stupid. We Todd don't Howard need. Is not a smart man. We do not need an origin for fucking Vault Boy. Vault Boy. He's yeah. a corporate mascot. That's literally all you need to know. That's God, the it's entire like trying to come up with an origin for the now, Apple logo. Let me guess. Is Vault Boy going to be something fucking stupid? Like, oh, the uh, the owner of Vault Tech, his son died horribly. So he was immortalized as the mascot for this company or just something fucking ridiculous like that. We don't need it. That would be awful. If they did that, that would be even worse because it would be like, OK, so you just took what is supposed to be a very tone deaf and like ironic imagery of like this very happy go lucky vault boy. That's actually the mascot for a very evil corporation that does horrendous things. And you just immortalized it as some dude's fucking son. <laughs> like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Well, what the fuck else are they going to do with it? Because the only way to show... Like, the, the reason you don't show the origin of Vault Boy is because you don't need to. Because with the information that it's a tone-deaf mascot, you have everything you need right there. Oh, yeah. so people sat down in a boardroom, said, okay... 
We're going to be performing horrible experiments on people in these vaults that are supposed to protect them from the apocalypse. Let's make a friendly looking mascot to draw people in. Boom. Done. You don't need to portray that in a fucking show or even in the games or anywhere because that's just the fucking default when you have the information. Yeah. <laughs> the only way... Like... I, I have to assume they're going to do something dumb like, oh, it's some guy's kid. So what the fuck else are they going to do with it? Oh, fucking god damn it. I hate this so much. Fans of the game should know that everything in the series is officially part of Fallout lore, and Bethesda was careful to make sure the scripts could coexist with previous storylines uh, from the gaming titles. We view what's happening in the show as canon, says Howard. That's what's great, when someone else looks at your work and then translates it into, uh, in some fashion. He admits to being envious of some of the TV show's interpretations and, ad uh, and additions. I sort of looked at it like... Ah, why didn't we do that? Yeah. Oh my god. It is Jover. It is completely Jover. It is fucked. Yeah. That's, again, remember, Todd Howard is not a smart man. Todd Howard is an idiot. An actual certified moron. Part of me like, wonders if this is him looking at, like, the script and being like, Oh my god, this this is something we would have... Not even we would have done this. This is so bad. But I have to spin this in a way where it looks good because it's my job. Uh, you know what? I, why didn't we do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then it, when it all blows up in their face, they'll be like, this is why we didn't do that. Because we knew it was shit. Also, that is it right there. Uh, we view what's happening in the show as canon. It's over. Like, yep. any, any fuck up that this game... or the, Sorry, that this show has with Fallout 1 and 2 with New Vegas, and even with 3 and 4, it's just going to be more evidence of the series getting fucked over into the dirt. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Amazon. I very much appreciate it. Well, look on the bright side. I can make videos off of this. Content. Content. <laughs> then we get this shot again. <laughs> she did Lantern's Glows message. Um, by the sake of spinning in their graves, if any of them are dead. What? Yeah, because uh, Lantern Lantern's Glow with two dollars says, "Creators of the Fallout become perpetual energy." Goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Kane is spinning in his grave and he's not even dead yet. <laughs> yeah, he's already preemptively spinning, preparing. He's like, I'm going to drill all the way to the core. <laughs> yeah, I, I would be so immensely fucking unhinged if this was my creation that was getting fucked over this hard. Yeah, I would, I would absolutely be, <laughs> come out and be like, hey, it's a disaster. This company is full of idiots and has never understood anything about the Fallout series. <laughs> they don't know what they're talking about. And of course, it's going to be a disaster. Um, this, the show is not going to be good. Please do not watch it. Do not give them any recoup on their investment. Let it flounder. Let it fail. Let them bite the bullet. Uh, from Box Fox Scoot in chat. Yeah, I thought I was going to read that. <laughs> I can milk you. Tree seeing the Fallout TV show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we definitely know who's saying that right now. <laughs> God. Oh, yeah. I, can <laughs> I can milk you. No. Your previous two attempts failed. Go back to your retail job. <laughs> I still love that you fucking admitted that. <laughs> That's one of the yeah, most embarrassing not. things we've ever covered. <laughs> Honestly, I think 
almost every video of his we've covered has been the most like embarrassing, pathetic ones oh, we've covered. They have, but very yeah. little tops. I quit my retail job to make videos full time about Fallout seventy six. I don't yeah, know. And that's why he's so upset <laughs> <laughs> that they didn't work out. All those stupid Fallout fans yeah, didn't crying. accept Fallout seventy six, so I couldn't make a career off of it on YouTube. <laughs> Him crying about not being able to play Starfield was pretty close, though. Like, he was literally <laughs> in funny. tears yeah. over the fact that he couldn't get Starfield to work. <laughs> Fallout 2988. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> the sp the um, anyways, you guys continue. I will. Uh, I gotta go grab some stuff real quick. Yeah. But feel free to continue the art. Okay. The, the prospect for a Fallout film or TV show has been in the ether for years, but Howard has always been, uh, sorry, but Howard was always resistant to it. I've taken countless meetings with producers, or heard pitches, and nothing ever felt like the right fit, he says. Or maybe I was wondering a little, how will it affect the franchise? I took a very cautious approach. How will it affect the franchise? Uh, you apparently don't give a shit considering the games you've made with it. What the fuck, man? I took a very cautious approach with it. That's why we decided to completely ignore the NCR. Apparently. <sighs> He's finally found a script shit enough to be satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> Make it worse. <laughs> Howard, it's not bad enough yet. <laughs> Howard is an admirer of Interstellar, which he cites as one of the inspirations for Bethesda's latest game, Starfield, a massive open-world story that allows players to build their own characters and starships to explore more than a thousand planets scattered throughout the Milky Way. No, it's 1,000. The movies he's worked oh, on no. are some of my favorites, and I'd heard that he liked video games and had an eye for that stuff, Howard says. I'd said to somebody, and I won't say who, but I was taking a meeting with another producer and said, before I talk to other people, I want to hear that Jonathan Nolan says he'll never do it. Hmm. So we have Jonathan Nolan to thank for Starfield and this fucking abysmal <laughs> abortion of fucking Fallout writing. Nice. He can't keep getting away with it! <laughs> uh, why Jonah Nolan? That sounds really random. Because it's not like Christopher Nolan, who's like the big filmmaker guy, it's... Is, yeah, his brother works with him on some of his films. It's like, yeah, I want, you know, it's, um, I'm trying to think of the example of, like, oh, yeah, this famous person, I want their less famous, uh, family member to be the one who turns down my idea, you know? Yeah, this feels very much like fake PR speak, like, <laughs> oh, like, I, I always had a deep appreciation for him. <laughs> Honest. <laughs> you know, I was never set to voting on one party or the other, but I want to make sure, and if Jeb Bush ran for president, I was going to vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does kind of feel like that. <laughs> to be fair, Jonah Nolan probably doesn't deserve to be compared to Jeb Bush. <laughs> I don't know. If he helped give us Starfield, I think he does. Okay, you know what? Fair. Fair point. <laughs> Who is Jeb Bush? We've entered an era, Pagan, where people don't know about the Please Clap Man. <laughs> wow. We are in the worst timeline. <laughs> we are! <laughs> 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 Please clap. <laughs> <laughs> Jeb my balls. <laughs> <laughs> that led to a conversation between the two, and Nolan was uh, actually was interested. 
he and Joy acquired the rights through their Kilter Films production company, then set about inventing new characters in Trials and Tribulations with executive producers and writers, uh, Geneva Robert Dewaret, co-writer of 2019's Captain Marvel, no! Yep. And uh, Graham Wagner, a veteran of The Office, Portlandia, and Silicon Valley, who serve as Fallout showrunners. The fact that she gets first yeah. billing, the writer for Captain Marvel. Fucking goddamn. Yeah, God I think damn. Captain Marvel, the writer of Captain Marvel, is the one that's going to be doing like most of the plot <clears throat> stuff. And I think that Graham Wagner is the one who's like inserting the jokes. Yeah, that makes because sense. The because the office, yeah, the office in Portlandia are are comedic like I'm, TV shows. I'm pretty sure Silicon Valley is too, from what I've heard of it. I've never even heard of that, so I don't know anything about it. I've heard uh, Nerd Roddick mention it sometimes on stream, and I'm pretty sure he said it was funny. Okay. Yeah, so he's probably doing all the jokes, and she's writing the plot, which, oh, God. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> this keeps getting worse. How does it get worse with every paragraph? Like, I... <sighs> Honestly, her <laughs> being in charge of the writing, like, that right there basically tells me everything I need to know about the main character. It, like, we already know what she's gonna be. She's gonna be fucking Captain Marvel Light. Yeah, she's gonna be fucking Plank again. Yeah, she's gonna oh, be great. a fucking... She's probably gonna be a bitch. <laughs> she's probably gonna be a fucking know-it-all. She's gonna be thinking that she's better than everyone else. Oh, I'm glad I came back to hear that. Yeah, the uh, the writer yeah. for Captain Marvel is uh, apparently the uh, lead writer. Well, they don't say lead writer, uh, but they do say writers, uh, whatever her name is, of Captain Marvel and Grab Wagner of The Office in Silicon Valley. I, I'm sorry, yeah. yeah, that's not... It's doomed. The fact she was with Marvel's... It's Jover. Not Marvel's, uh, Captain Marvel. Mar Captain Marvel, I mean, is just, you know... Yeah, it, it's Jover. It's completely she Jover. She should have been fired, or who, I assume it's a she, because I can only think a woman would write that badly. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, it I, is. I'm um... sorry when it comes to that level of a power, like woman power trip fantasy thing. Yeah, I almost feel like that that would come from a woman. Yeah, it's uh, it's not looking great. The fact that she's getting first billing. And the fact that the other guy is only known for writing, like, comedic stuff, it's like, okay, well, yeah, we figured out the dynamic here. She writes the plot and the characters. He writes the jokes. Yeah. By the way, Chad, I would say the same thing about the... If you ever see in media the man who is perfect and sleeps with all the women and even gets the, the lesbians to like dick because he's just that, you know, virile, is like, yeah, no, that came from a man. That's that's one of those like delusional fantasy things, and also that's what Scientology is based off of. Actually, <laughs> that, that's that last scenario I talked about the two uh, Lizzes. Yeah, that's a thing in Scientology books. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so Acer Tard, yes, yes, actually, there's a good example. <laughs> Three dollars from Get Out There, yo. Thank you. Followed as Jover. Time to move on to better things. It seems so. <coughs> I'm just praying Stalker 2 will be good. <laughs> I hope so, too. <coughs> Howard says he and Bethesda were sold when Nolan and his team proposed building an entirely new story within the existing realm of Fallout. Oh, wait, they don't have of there. Within the existing realm fallout. That doesn't quite work. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, that is here. definitely grammar error. Yeah. Oh, well, remember, they used the wrong fare <laughs> first time. <laughs> I did not want to do an interpretation of an existing story we did, Howard says. That was the other thing. A lot of pitches were, you know, this is the movie of Fallout 3. I was like, yeah, we told that story. I don't have a lot of interest in seeing those translated. I was interested in seeing 
someone tell you, uh, telling a unique Fallout story. Treat it like a game. It gives the creators of the series their own playground to play in. Isn't that an accurate fucking description of it? Oh, oh man, God. it's too bad nobody told the show writers this because they transplanted everything from the East Coast onto the West Coast and said, fuck it, good enough. No, you yeah, see, it's new they now. They could have set it in, like, they could have set this in, like, you know, the Midwest or something like that instead. Have it completely devoid of Brotherhood of Steel or anything. Maybe have the Legion show up. Maybe they're encroaching eastwards. Like, you know, just stuff like that and be like, okay, well, now the Legion is a threat here, but the faction that's fighting it isn't some NCR. The faction that's fighting it is, like, local militias. Maybe you have free states and free cities. You know, nobody's been able to unify under one banner, but each city is kind of like its own standing, like, hey, this is the city of this. This is our rules and laws and everything, and we are allied with this city, this city, and this city, but we're, we fight this city and that city. You know, th things like that. Things like that are really fucking interesting. Mm hmm Yeah. There's this image again, and we get to see a uh, close-up of the power armor, and especially seeing this image a lot bigger, it really does look like plastic. Yeah. Like, it... it Which, it, I mean, it, it is. It's just they don't know how to paint it properly to make it look not plastic. I mean, yeah, but... The, the point I'm making is, this looks like a really well done cosplay, as opposed to what you would expect to see in the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what I've been saying. It feels like cosplay. It feels like an actual fan cosplay. Yeah. Well, but the, they just said, the, good enough. Here's the weird part about it, because based off this caption, his, like, um, Aaron Motten uh, is Maximus, is a squire. That's not a squire's uniform. Like, yeah. I didn't know what he was in comparison, but no, that's not what squires look like in the Brotherhood. Yeah, you're right. They don't also, wear that. that is not so it's wearing. like it's good also, cosplay, and then my OC character that just wears a, a, a wannabe hold, trench coat. Hold on, look how scuffed this is too, though. Uh, Aaron uh, Martin as Maximus, the new squire for a power suit knight dispatched on behalf of the Brotherhood of Steel. Power power suit it's power armor yeah yeah what and also knight is a rank <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck this thing is so fucked <laughs> as the fallout show progresses lucy's journey intersects with the two other lead characters who are new to the universe one of them is a wannabe soldier maximus um aaron mutton the tragic Petey from the Night Of, who grew up uh, above ground, but, like Lucy, was also raised in a cloistered family of sorts, a brutal collective of warriors called the Brotherhood of Steel. They're not a collective of warriors, they're, they're cultists. They have warriors, they have the militant arm, but then you have, like, the scribes and everything. They're not warriors. Jesus Christ. Is this payback Cree for all the bullying? Yes. Can can I use your idea in a game I'm doing? What do you mean the the like the free cities and things like that? That's a that's a concept as old as time. Like I I'm not. So the answer is a no. I, no, absolutely. <laughs> you, can, you can use it, but again, this, like you don't need to ask my permission for a concept like that. That's. Free city states is how it was. Athens was not a country; it was a free city state. Like, you know, Sparta was not a country; it was a free city state. Yeah. It's a little bit of the Marine oh. Corps. It's a little bit of the Knights Templar. It's this weird kind of uh, sorry. It's this kind of weird fusion. No one says. In the absence of a federal government, you just had all this military hardware lying around. Who You're would an get it? And how would they maintain control of it? The answer is no. the Brotherhood, which Nolan describes as being fueled by a mutated version of patriots patriotism, religion, loyalty, and fraternity. Hey, what no, that is <laughs> the yeah, they were not patriots. <laughs> They they fucking hated everything about that shit. They they thought that the whole point of that all of this shit happened was because they couldn't control technology. Yeah. They thought patriotism <laughs> was the problem. They thought dogmatic religious fervor was the solution. 
I played it again. <laughs> God, they have <laughs> fucked it. They've completely fucked it. Also, I might this even dude's name Maximus. Isn't that? Doesn't that kind of like um? God. Okay, so the way that Bethesda did it, names oh. have like a weird sense of meaning. Wouldn't that name be attributed to someone who's supposed to be like? in line of command like yes like, like in the Aurelius sort of thing yeah like like potential fucking elder candidate when they get older yeah he's just a fucking squire yeah so why is he just a squire being like you know just who's like a oh my god he's just walking around with a random fucking fucking knight pagan even worse he happens to be played by a, a black man, right? His name is yeah. Maximus. The Legion is very Roman esque, right? Like Roman, like what? Roman philia or whatever. I don't know what you would call that. You know, the the weeb version of Rome. Yeah. Um, what if he was a slave? No. Uh, also, I think the word you're looking for is Romabu. Romabu? Well, I mean, it fits. Because you have Weeaboo and then you have Weeaboo. <laughs> Weeaboo, for, for anyone that doesn't know, are the people that are, like, super obsessed with the Wehrmacht in World War II. They call them Weeaboo. I really hope they don't, they like don't do that, though. don't like to admit that there's any faults that the Wehrmacht had. God, please don't do the fucking. Oh, he was a slave because he was black. I mean, Rings That's of Power I mean. did it. That's what I think because again, this is the type of writing and the people we're dealing with here. <laughs> I have a feeling that's exactly what it's gonna be. That's it. I give up. I'm done. I'm gonna uh, stream some Project Zomboid and stream into a microphone for several hours. I'm very sorry, Kalbeck. The, the article broke him. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to the trailer, the trailer yet. yet. <laughs> God, a mutated version of patriotism. What the fuck, man? Yeah, I like. Yeah, I'm way sorry. to completely patriotism is patriot. Like, how, way to completely how do you fuck up the lore. <laughs> Their control oh, comes from the battalions of super soldier knights in shining power armor. Who They're them. not super wait, wait. soldiers! <laughs> Number one, they're not super soldiers. Two, a battalion? <laughs> you have thousands and thousands of these people in power armor? Where did you get all this power armor? Remember, it's battalions plural, not battalion. That's why I said thousands and thousands. <laughs> yeah. Like, where did you get all this power armor? <laughs> Their control comes from the battalions of super soldier knights in shining power armor who stalk the landscape enforcing the Brotherhood's notion of order. Maximus fills a role that's straight out of medieval times. He's a squire, Nolan says. This is drawing on the classic Arthurian knight legends where life was cheap and you had a squire as long as they were useful. They had to what? prove their worth. No. They had to prove their yeah. valor and their strength. And if they didn't, they were kind of cast aside. Incorrect. No. Fucking That's wrong. That's not. Squires. <laughs> okay, Here, here's a little bit of lore for you guys. Squires, the overwhelming majority were noble born. They were in line to be knights. So they were like the second or third sons. They were the squires. You do not cast away a nobleman's son, okay? Fuck that. Like, that that might as well have just walked up to that nobleman and slapped them right in the fucking face if you did that. Your ass is getting executed. Holy yeah. shit. And then, you, then you just have the straight-up lore. It's like, no, the squire was a completely different fucking part of the military of the Brotherhood. They handled, like, what wasn't it like the logistics and shit? They like were the technological well. side, yeah, and the, scouts. They were not you didn't fucking risk, knights. You didn't want to risk power armor and like, okay, we don't know if the ground's gonna be stable here. We need to send out a survey group out. We're not gonna send out people in fucking massive heavy power armor that could fall through the fucking ground. <laughs> hey, the ground's not stable. Let's walk our power armor over to investigate if it's stable. 
oh wait a minute actually no what no maybe they're right maybe it is a because it squire and scribe scribes are the ones that are going I into believe like um squires are the children technology. aren't they yes. yeah squires are like the recruits Yep, and again, they do recon missions and things like that. They can leave the vault, yeah. but they don't get power armor and things. They're we, have seen, we have seen what squires look like, though. They don't look like this not a trench coat, trench coat thing he's wearing. It's uh, like they started designing a trench coat, and then they just chopped it in half. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't go down to the left. They're basically totally making the lore up like Halo TV and Rings of Power, just making it up for their show. Yeah. Max serves the giant, seemingly robotic figure of his master with the same naive faith that Lucy has in her vault dwellers. But unlike her, he has a cynical sense of self-preservation that leads him to not always behave honorably or heroically. One of the things okay. we're trying to gently sidestep here is that kind of binary thinking. Like, they're the good guys, or the bad guys, no one says. Holy Whoever... shit, a concept that Bethesda has no idea <clears throat> about. They are all binary thing. Whoever the good guys are, um... Yeah, whoever the good guys and bad guys were, they destroyed the whole world. So now we're in a much more gray area. I mean, I, I can't fault them for going gray area, where because that's kind of where Fallout should be in the first place. Yeah. But it's very much an X to doubt situation. It's literally, I don't believe you. I guess yeah, I, don't I believe feel like that you're not gonna make our protagonist be the always good, never wrong Mary Sue. Gary exactly. Sue's it's gonna be like any time something like morally gray happens, she's gonna take a hardline stance, and the show is gonna treat it as like the law. Where it's like, yeah, well, she said it, so therefore that that's how it should be. So now you're getting punished. I also feel like it's going to be the most shallow of, like, gray choices where there's no real depth to it. It's just, like, two groups are going to be inconvenienced. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Fallout's world is filled by a sprawling ensemble, including Kyle McLaughlin as uh, Lucy's father, the overseer of Vault 33, which essentially makes him the mayor of their hometown, while Homeland's uh, Sarita Chowdhury? Chowdhury is a different kind of leader in this world, willing to sacrifice anything for her band of people. Uh, Moises Arias... Uh, who has a child played Rico on Hannah Montana? Co-stars as <laughs> Lucy's inquisitive brother. Michael... Uh, who you will know from his hit <laughs> role as the child in Hannah Montana. <laughs> what? Is there nothing better to cite? Yeah, like, man, what a, what a great, <laughs> like, track record you had. Uh, and, Mike... he, and he's a co-star right now. <laughs> Michael Emerson, who starred in Nolan's Person of Interest, is best known as uh, Hatch Inhabitant Benjamin Linus on Lost, says above, uh, stays above ground this time, playing an enigmatic researcher named Wilzig. Most of the disparate parties are chasing an artifact that has the potential to radically change the power dynamic in this world, as Nolan puts it. Artifact, you better not be talking about some fucking radiation magic bullshit. This better be like old world tech or something. Yeah. But also, what a name, Wilzig. What hmm. <laughs> what nationality does that name come from? <laughs> what the fuck? It comes from post apocalyptia. I mean, that was like <laughs> so there was a there was a joke there was a, a game that my uh my family played at Thanksgiving. It was a fantastic game <laughs> where you pretended to play a football game. You're just all sitting at the table. And the rule was, if you had the ball, you had to pass it. Uh, you could tap the table once to pass it once to either side. Tap the table twice to pass it two over. Or throw the ball and the other person had to catch it. But the whole thing was, you had to stay quiet. You couldn't laugh. And you had to treat like 
infractions and rules breaking as super serious. So you'd have to like raise your hand and then the commissioner of that round would call on you and you would have to say their name, commissioner whatever. And my commissioner name was going to be Zwang. Because again, you're trying to get people to laugh and fuck up because then they, they lose points. That's what that sounds like. W Wilzig sounds like a fucking Commissioner Wilzig. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Patrick was laughing while he held the ball. Oh, God. Yeah, it's kind of a name I might expect to see in, like, a, uh, a parody of something. Like, um... It, almost kind of like Colonel Clink from, like, Hogan's Heroes, where it's like, yeah, it's a funny name. That's a hilarious name. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and if, if you if you have never tried that game, again, I had never heard of this game before. It was my uh, my nieces. Uh, they did the game, and it was genuinely <laughs> one of the funniest fucking games I have ever played. <laughs> it was just absolutely hilarious. Uh, all the Wilzigs in the audience are crying right now, you guys. And also, uh, the voices will not stop. Me naming myself Neger. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yes, Commissioner Neger. Oh my god. <laughs> Mr. Clan. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. While he passed the ball. <laughs> Dude, that, that game is so fucking funny. Because it's up to the discretion of whoever is being the commissioner at the time. So the commissioner can pick on somebody, <laughs> right? And we're off the air. I didn't say anything. It's just, ooh. I said the name that was there. I didn't say the actual yeah. word. Yeah, there was no, there was nothing wrong with that actual... There was nothing wrong with that name. How dare you? How dare you imply the, the joke, that there was any ulterior naming the, the, the joke is that it sounds similar to a certain other word, but it isn't actually that word. Oh my god, yeah, Sam Ul Hyde. <laughs> Dude, the Sam Hyde stuff is just so funny. <laughs> I'll, I'll get him. The fucker lives only two trailers down from me. I'll go get him and we'll fuck you up. Did you... Did you see that from Count Dankula? No. Oh my god, I've got to show you that snippet. He does a snippet where he he starts screaming at Vosh, and he's pretending to be an unhinged, like, gypsy traveler. <laughs> oh my god, he talks about that Samuel Hyde lives only two trailers down from him. <laughs> it is so good. Then there is Fallout's wild card, its third lead figure, the sinister bounty hunter known as the Ghoul. Do you know how completely fucked and nondescript that would be in the Fallout universe, you idiot? It's yeah, like, it's why like... are they acting like there's only one? They're fairly common. It's it's like having a character in like a modern day show. Just called the human. It's like, yeah, everyone is <laughs> no, a fucking no, no, human. No, no. What are you talking about? No, more more accurately, it would be like, oh yeah, that's the the bounty hunter <laughs> and hard ass warden of this prison. We call him the Black. <laughs> oh my god! What? We're like, why? Wait, is this freaking oh, official? My god, the yellow this, or the this white. is a article where they interviewed the showrunners. This is information they're getting from them and from their own bad research, apparently. Yeah, again, this is a first-hand authoritative source saying this nonsense. Uh, played by Django Unchained and the Hateful Eight's Walton Goggins. Alright. The Ghoul is a gruesomely scarred Rough Rider who has a code of honor but also a ruthless streak. He is the good, the bad, and the ugly, all rolled into one. This is just oh embarrassing God. now. This is getting painful. This is getting physically painful. Yeah, this is, this is cringe. This description, it sounds like a 14-year-old wrote this. <laughs> it's like, this is somebody who, who never watched the good, the bad, and the ugly. Like, 
They they weren't talking about their fucking facial features and shit like that. The good guy was not that good. The bad guy was, <laughs> was pretty fucking bad, and the ugly was also a bad guy. You need to read this in Chill's voice. Oh, no. no, please. He's also quite the survivor, having existed for hundreds of years. The show occasionally fl- <laughs> the show occasionally flashes back to the human being he once was, a father. A husband named Cooper Howard, before the nuclear holocaust turned the world into a cinder and transformed him into an undead nodeless. <laughs> and. Tra- <laughs> wait, 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 wait. And. Finish this. And, I, gotta, I gotta think on this. And transformed him into an undead nose- noseless sharpshooting fiend. I didn't know radiation could literally gift you with magical shooting powers. <laughs> Holy shit. Man, and apparently undeath dug themselves in barrels of radiation. Blah, 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 blah. Now I can now I'm better than Simoy Hoy Simo Hoy. Also, yeah, I guess ghouls are literally fucking... just undead now. Yeah. yeah, what the fuck? Do they not understand that it's literally just a person with radiation sickness? It's not <laughs> They're not actually zombies. Yeah, the, the zombie is the disparaging thing that people say against them. Yeah. It's not what they actually are. Oh, no. I swear oh, to God. Oh, God, I just started reading the him. next... I oh, my reading fucking well. God! Oh! Go ahead, Pergam. I was going to say, if... If in the show they actually reference him as being undead and not just like an irradiated fucking guy, I'm gonna be fucking livid. In the Fallout games, ghouls are typically cannon fodder, mindless zombies whose bodies have been mutated by radiation. No, they aren't. No, cannon those are fodder? called ferals, feral ghouls. Those do, are people that went fucking insane. Do they know what cannon fodder is? Cannon fodder isn't like, hey, there's enemies in a game that you got to... Cannon fodder are the people that, like, you put on the front lines to die. Yes. Again, it would be like if the NCR put their, their conscript labor forces on the front lines. Like, yeah, that's cannon fodder. They're literally there to soak up munitions from the enemy. Oh my god, I just read ahead. I see what you were talking about. For fuck's sake! <laughs> the ghoul is a legend, distinct among his kind for his cleverness and cunning. There's still something Cooper Howard, the person he used to be within, uh, this desiccated form. Or sorry, there's still something of Cooper Howard within this desiccated form. Walton's equally adept at drama and comedy, which is so difficult, no one says. There's a chasm in time and distance between who this guy was and who he's become, which for me creates a drama- um, which for me creates an enormous dramatic question. What happened to this guy? So we'll walk backwards into that. He compares the ghoul to the poet Virgil and Dante's Inferno. <laughs> <laughs> Are we literally getting this is fucking biblical shit again? Are you fucking kidding? He compares the ghoul to the poet Virgil in Dante's Inferno, someone in this hellish landscape who knows its full scope, origin, and secrets. He becomes our guide and our protagonist in that older world, even as we understand him to be the antagonist at the end of the world, Nolan says. <laughs> Thanks. What? You fucking idiot. Like <laughs> Wait. Oh yeah, he's going to be one of the he's going to be one of the villains. Fantastic. Oh. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> fucking what? Also unique among his kind. He's they're he's not... not unique at all. He's like it, the Wait, average. hold on. Hold on. Yes, this he is, is unique among his kind. There isn't another red skull among the ghouls. I, fair, he is he is genuinely the most <laughs> handsome of all the ghouls. Fine. <laughs> it's literally just Red Skull. Yeah. The games have already created a template for how creatures like him look, but that was dialed back for Goggin's character. For one, he's <laughs> well, smarter than the up. average ghoul. He would naturally have a different physique and face, 
but there's also a practical reason to make him less ghoulish. You have to be extremely careful with it when you're pr uh, excuse me. You have to be extremely careful with it when you're putting a full appliance on someone's face. Because uh, you hired that actor for a reason, Nolan says. Their face is their instrument. You want the tiny little expressions and changes that they make. Okay, I'm you gonna say this do right now. With oh my god, fuck Dread off. It's a great movie for this. Not even Dread, Setch, not even action... Dread. Because you can still see an actor's face when you put fucking makeup on them to make them look like a ghoul. This is Thanks, Cree, but my point is the fact that Dread covers up, the movie covers up 70% of his fucking face, and you can see his lips and his chin. Yeah. And not only does he give a commanding performance, but the other judges do as well. Again, if you are a competent actor, we don't need to see all that much. It's the way you carry yourself, the way you move, the way you walk, what you talk and say. I that agree. That is what conveys who you are. That's like why Master Chief is an amazing character in Halo 1, 2, and 3. We didn't need him to take off the fucking helmet to humanize him and learn more about his character. So many people don't even understand that Master Chief had a fucking character in the first game. Oh, my I God. hate this. I hate this. Yes, <laughs> I genuinely hate this. It is they're literally making the Halo TV show excuse here. But they yeah, didn't I even need like... to make such an excuse because you already had the full range of the actor's face and makeup. Yes. There's no I, need to die. I hate back. it. Even I hate that they're dialing it back so much where it's like, uh, do you not understand how much you can do with a ghoul character? How much how tragic that can be? And you're basically going well, we want to make a ghoul character, but we don't want him to actually be a ghoul character, so we removed all the ghoul parts from him. Yeah. Fuck off! Then don't make a ghoul character! And Just make him a regular-ass guy! That's what I said. He's, he's also completely different. He's smarter than the average ghoul? No. Like, yeah, no. Again, there are ghoul scientists. Like, we're talking theoretical physicists and stuff like that that are still fucking alive. They are way smarter than this piece of shit's gonna be. He would naturally have a different physique and face. Why? Why would he? What makes him so special to get a different physique and face? Oh, well, we know what they're going to do. It's literally every other ghoul is feral and he's not. And that makes him unique because there are no other ghouls. They're changing the lore. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I fucking hate it. This is so fucking stupid. And then when they do fucking do it, where it's like, oh, well, he's the one normal ghoul. Or the one smart ghoul. And it's like, he's literally just a sunburnt human. Fuck off. He's not even a ghoul. God, it, again, again, I know it says smarter than the average ghoul. You know exactly what, what Vanity Fair and Nolan are talking about. They're saying that every other ghoul is going to be a moron. Every single other well, one of them is going to be. Well, they just described normal ghouls as being like zombies and... You know, like unthinking and shit. They just describe that as the normal ghoul. Yeah, can so of course that's what they mean when they say like, oh, well, he's smarter than the average ghoul because they consider yeah. an, a normal ghoul to be feral. Also, consider that this is the only ghoul we've uh, seen in any of this promotional imagery, and I know yeah. a lot of it is um, like specific characters. There's uh, our main protagonist girl. There's a the Brotherhood guy. Um. I guess there won't be a ghoul among the Brotherhood, the the new and improved Brotherhood. But, like, any of the other images I've seen going around on Twitter haven't showed any other ghouls. It's been this guy each time, Red Skull. Yeah. Yep. Maybe I could be wrong. Maybe there will be other ghouls in the show that are just kind of there in the background. I'm not expecting them at this point. Also, I, I if I was this next guy that's coming up in this sentence... Jesus Christ, I would want my name off of this. <laughs> Prosthetics designer Vincent Van Dyke, who worked on Leo DiCaprio's character in Killers of the Flower Moon, devised the look of the ghoul. I need to be able to see Walton in his performance. He needs to look like a ghoul from the game, and he needs to be kind of hot, no one says. What? What? Why? 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 No. Why? And he also, he doesn't look anything like from the games at all. Who, yeah. who, who sees fucking walking corpse man and thinks, mm, he has to be hot. Like, well, what? unfortunately, there are people out there. 
Okay, there's people. This is someone running a show. Yeah, he he might be one of those people. He might be a corpse diddler. <laughs> Why the fuck would you need to do? Just make a ghoul character. Just make a ghoul character. They don't need sex appeal. Just yeah. make them a fucking good ghoul character. Yep. There's so much you can <laughs> do with a ghoul character. Ah. Yeah. That last part turned out to be literally true. The first day we were shooting with Walton in makeup, he comes to set, and I'm looking at him like, Walton, are you crying? He just had sweat leaking out of the prosthetics under his eyes because it was so hot. Congratulations. <laughs> you know what would probably have been less, like, temperature demanding on him? If you made him look like an actual ghoul? So there'd be <laughs> a lot more openings and gaps where his, his skin could be, where his skin could naturally wick away sweat and everything. Where he can Jesus fucking Christ. breathe because there's actually holes, for yeah. fuck's sake. Good God, man. This is the equivalent. Oh my God, I was going to make a joke, but then I realized, oh no, they actually just straight up did that in the fucking show. I was going to say, it's like taking the holes <laughs> away from the changelings. It, it's even worse than that. It's like doing what they actually did in the show, where they literally just took the changelings and made them into fucking pony bugs. Puklings. I hate this. Uh, Skids, welcome to all membership. Thank you. If Lucy Wait, is the innocent of the show, then the ghoul is her polar opposite, damaged and hardened by his centuries of endless life in a state of near death. He's got a lot of mileage on him, but he's still got a swagger and a kind of charm to him, Nolan says. <laughs> okay. Like it's anti here. Uh, hmm? yeah, it's so fucking painful. It is painful. I hate this so much. <laughs> oh my god, we're at the last sentence. This is the last bit. Is it really? I thought. Yes. Oh, it is. We are at the end. Thank god. Thank merciful Thank god, Christ, yeah. it's over. Like its anti-heroes, the world of Fallout has to maintain an appeal, despite its grim aspects. It's a dark world in many ways, Nolan says, but the okay, games were fun to play. Right there. Like its anti-heroes, the world of Fallout has to maintain an appeal, despite its grim aspects. The grim aspects are the appeal, you fucking idiots. It's like going to Warhammer 40k and then you beautify it. It's like, no, the grim and gritty is the appeal. Stop it! Just, just stop it! <laughs> but the games were fun to play, fun to explore, and I think that was a mandate for us to make sure that it was enjoyable to spend time in this universe. Yep, Which you can do by making it dark! Oh my god, it should be... <laughs> It should be scary. It should be fucking like you should be afraid for what's going to happen to these characters when they travel to new places. Because yeah. it's always dangerous. It's always dark. It's always there's always something around the corner in the wasteland that's going to fucking kill you. Scroll down slightly and look at this fucking dog shit like fucking <laughs> 11th aisle in a supermarket plastic toy bullshit she's holding on to. Why does she yeah, have a really bad. Uh, and he has a zapper? Oh my god. <laughs> it's Jover. It it's so, so Jover. Fucking dog shit. This is gonna be so bad. <laughs> I'm I'm dreading I'm dreading watching the trailer now. After going through all this, the trailer's gonna be so dog shit, I can just tell. <laughs> Why does she have yeah, a Star well, Wars know, blaster? You know what, uh Pagan? It's too fucking bad because here's the trailer right now. Ah, I'm not ready! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Hold on. Play the clip. Play the clip. I let me put my dinner down so I can play the clip. I, I've played it so many times already. But it's play worth it clip. because it accurately portrays our feelings. Ah! 
<laughs> All right, I have to adjust watch together again because ah, I changed it uh, to fit the article. And I want to make sure I don't accidentally show that link so other people can join. All right. <laughs> Let me live, please. No. <laughs> Die. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, I am ready. Um, I don't know how much of this we can play without getting hit, so let's try to pause it. Well, actually, I'll I'll keep an eye on the pausing. Okay. Um. Okay, just pausing quickly. I mean, aesthetics-wise, it's it's just you know it is what it is, right? It's fine. It uh, it does use the Fallout 4 aesthetics for the vault and stuff. I don't. It's whatever yeah. so far. I, I'd much rather have the stuff look a lot more worn and ragged. Um, because like you're not gonna have lots of people coming through here. It, this is probably gonna be the least maintained part of the vault itself. Is gonna be the door. Hmm. Maybe, but like if we're planning on eventually leaving the vault, I would be like, yeah, just make sure everything in that area is clean. Just check on it like once every couple months to make sure everything's still That's functioning. That's what I mean. Everything. It, it should be something that it looks like it's only looked at every once in a month, every two months or so. Not something that looks like, ah, uh, you know, every week we, we go and clean. It's like, why? That just seems like a waste of resource. Ugh, I just don't like Fallout 4's aesthetic. Everything looks too clean and overly saturated. I just don't like it. Yeah. No, a relatively comfortable life. Stop! What? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What, what do I just... I, like, turned away for a split second. She's suddenly squealing? No, she's walking towards, like, the exit, and one of the people behind her just says, STOP! I don't know. Is she not supposed to be leaving? Stop! I oh, guess God. It, not? It's gonna be one of these things where it's literally like, I ha He left! I have to go save him! And, you know, like, the vault's like, No, you can't leave! It's not time yet! No, I have to go! And so she sneaks out. It literally looks like a fan film. There's Half-Life fan movies that look better than this. Uh, kinda, I mean, yeah. Right. Some of those Half-Life fan films are pretty fucking sick. I saw something with the door that bugs me. <laughs> I don't want to go back to the door, but I have to. Yeah. Hold on. I think I saw what it was, the way it's too. Rolling. <laughs> yep. Look at <laughs> yep. the bottom. Look at... Wait, there's... Why is there a person on the ground? <laughs> Did she kill someone? Maybe, or somebody got shot, I guess. Maybe. Maybe. There was probably a door guard, and she knocked him out, probably. Maybe. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. She had to knock him out so that they could get out. Also, thank God, this is, a, this is the one where the entire door is inside the vault. Thank you. Yeah, so this all actually, the mechanisms and everything can actually be gotten to if you need to repair the damn thing. Yeah, this actually seems to be a uh, Fallout 76 vault door design as opposed to 3 New Vegas and 4 vault door. Yeah. Anyways, uh, chat, look at the bottom of the uh, vault door. The, like the big cog that's going to roll into place. <laughs> it's it's on a track that's moving under it, but it's also yeah. still rolling slightly. What? Yeah. It's it's doing the thing where it's got the grooves on the top and bottom. So when the bottom moves, 
it moves in the opposite direction, but it rolls with the tracks. Oh, God. That's it weird. makes sense. I just don't like it. <laughs> I, I feel like that's much worse than the um, uh, other Bethesda doors for the vault, where they just pull inwards and roll to the side. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it is worse. I don't like that track at all. Yeah, it just, it just seems like because it's just a waste of like okay, you know, it's you more moving parts to, to break quickly. Yeah, you want to yeah. move back into position quickly, so let's add a track to it that causes it to roll in the opposite direction of where we want it to go, so it takes even longer to get the damn thing shut. Yeah. Good yeah. job. Ah, accurate to the game. Storytelling skeletons already. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Gotta have those damn things everywhere. I'll be disappointed if we do not see a diner that's being lived in that has skeletons and booths. You need to go home. Vault dwellers are an endangered species. I'm sorry? What? How? What? What? How are vault dwellers an endangered species? Also, is that supposed to be a fucking Cazador? I think it's a rat roach. Hmm. Yeah, it's a red roach. I mean, some of the sets look fine. Yeah, so far I don't hate the sets uh, from what we're seeing out Aside here. from the I door. I like that it's... <laughs> yeah, I don't like the door. But this, I, I kind of like that everything's kind of, like, bleached from the sun. It looks... It looks like how I would imagine the West Coast to look. Yeah. So what happened? What could possibly have happened in the nine years since New Vegas to make Vault Dwellers somehow be an endangered species when all of California would be that? Like Vault City existing in and of itself? If it was only Vault City would make that a lie already? I have no idea. They're probably going to say something like, oh, they're hunted down like cattle. It's like, but by why? fucking who? Yeah, I don't know why. I'm, I'm just expecting, like, <laughs> the generic slop that you always get from these god-awful trailers. <laughs> well, and these shows, because these writers can't write to save their fucking lives. And it's coming from Bethesda's infected version of a really good, you know, series. Yeah. Think. You would be willing to do what it takes to survive up here. What kind of... What, <laughs> I do not think you would be willing to do what it takes to survive up here. Well, you don't understand, Setch. Up here, on the surface, you might have to shoot someone so you don't get killed. Spooked by Tumbleweed? Yeah, I found that amusing. <laughs> If you insist on staying, then you will have to adapt. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, I guess, but it's, why is it so dramatic? Hey, yeah, uh, things up here on the surface are fucked. You're gonna have to get used to it, kid. That's all we need, not, if you're gonna survive up here, you're gonna have to adapt. I'm also, sorry. the dog killing a rad roach, it just like, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's out of nowhere, suddenly. Also, I hate the fact that he is acclaimed. I fucking hate it, because... He what? I hate that Todd Howard's an acclaimed video game creator. It's like, God, he gets <laughs> so much credit for not doing much of anything. Yeah, it's annoying. Also, I hate how tame it's being, where it's trying to be overly dramatic and, like... It wants to be like, oh yeah, this is gonna be so hard, but then it's showing like, oh, a dog killed a rad rush. It's like, dude, you could have showed somebody getting ripped apart by fucking feral ghouls there. Yeah. You could show someone getting bisected by a fucking death claw. Or just even someone getting killed by a fucking raider. Yeah, you could literally just watch somebody get gunned down as they try to run away from a group of raiders. Or if you want to show off how badass the ghoul is, you could just show him, like, blowing someone away. 
And it could be anyone. It could be a raider. It could be, like, a petty thief. It could be anyone. To be fair, they could still do that. I'm just annoyed that they're <laughs> not really, like, so far, they're fucking, like, oh, you know, things are bad up here. It's different. It, it, it's a dog killing a rad roach. <laughs> yeah. What we need is a behemoth to smack someone with a fire hydrant and Skyrim giant fly them into the air. Yeah. Also, we better not see a dog die in this fucking trailer. <laughs> oh, God. Just on staying. Then you will have to adapt. <laughs> Okay, sure. Why do I get the feeling they're about to make a really bad joke here? <laughs> yeah. I think that was the joke, the uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> you, uh, you got that. Uh, Jesus Christ. Cedar behind the boys, again, not an actual good pedigree. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's... Oof. Well, that just happened. <laughs> yeah. God damn it, thief. <laughs> this is getting worse and worse every second. We still haven't even gotten to the thing. I don't know if it's real or not yet. People yeah. said earlier that it was. I'm, I'm terrified of seeing it in motion. I'm dreading it because we're going to have to talk about it. We're going to have to talk about it. It's that bad. It makes no fucking sense. <laughs> Just what? pausing what? quickly. What? Suddenly this music! <laughs> Bird of birds. Oh! <laughs> no, because it's the <laughs> religious faction, the Brotherhood of Steel. They're so patriotic! But they're not religious, though. They're they're law and order for some fucking reason. No, they're patriotic! Shut and up! They're, they're, and they're not patriotic either. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was specifically pausing it there, so, like... Oh, I was going to continue. Sorry. Because, um... Uh, I, I wanted to get through the clip without the text because, um, copyright. I don't want to possibly get hit for copyright for this. So it was that, like, on few screen? seconds... Huh? For, for this on screen? Because right that's, that's part of the video that they can track and claim. That's why a few seconds in, I paused it to the, um, like, literally a second into the next clip, I paused it. So we could start from there and not miss anything since nothing was being said. Just let me control the thing for now, please. Okay. I don't want to see you this music does feel... Yeah, what the fuck is this music? <laughs> what the I fuck? I want to see you tomorrow! What? Okay, what? It, it's what? Uh, obviously choir music of some kind. Which... Doesn't even fit in with Fallout if you're doing the wacky music radio thing. And it, it doesn't even seem... I don't know. The rest is all music and no dialogue, if I remember right. Nothing lost in muting this. Okay. Just pausing because of the music, too. Yeah. see tomorrow unless I see oh it yeah, with you nice okay also Jesus Christ this looks even worse <laughs> and you can only pick one of these motherfuckers on this forever oh my god how fucking useless are the fucking birds you know yeah. you could fit three of them worse you know you can fit three of them in a vertebrate in the game, right? Like in Fallout 4? <laughs> just mute the music? Sure, I can mute the music. Do you remember yeah, the mute, fucking we'll Fallout 3? Do really have any dialogue. Do you remember the Fallout 3 vertebrate where it was like a fucking TARDIS where the inside was bigger <laughs> than the outside? You could fit like yes. five... <laughs> <laughs> five Arclane Troopers, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And not just any troopers, fucking the, the Tesla armor and everything, <laughs> that are even bigger armor. It's like, Jesus Christ. Well, when you fly away from the, uh, the fucking mobile crawler after it gets bombed, you see the inside of the fucking thing, and there's, like, 
it's you, uh, Lions, uh, and at least like two or three other power armor guys, and then two pilots in the front. <laughs> and then here it's like we can we could fit one person in here. <laughs> We we got room for one. Take it or leave it. And I was like, Jesus Christ, what a what a horrible waste of fuel and stuff like this. Put him in a fucking truck. At least you can get a bunch of them on the back of a flatbed. <laughs> I just that... realized his his goggles are like so fucking plasticky, like the <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Halloween, like ten dollar clown mask, <laughs> plastic. Yeah, it, it, it's that like really thin plastic that you could see through. That if you like poked it, it would immediately like collapse away from the rest of the helmet. Mm. <laughs> it's just cheaply glued in there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that flimsy little film plastic. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, they're moving. Oh no, let's see these in motion. Hold on. Oh my god. <laughs> that looked bad. Hold on, please go Hold back. on. Yeah. Did you see how much his head moved? What the yeah, fuck? It's like his helmet was about to fall off. <laughs> look, look, look. It, his, his, I need you guys to understand the range of motion here I, I'm on doing... this fucking knight's head. I'm, I'm slowing it down. Whoa. Look at that! <laughs> it Whoa. looks so bad! <laughs> The helmet's about to fly off. What the <laughs> fuck? They didn't think maybe they should lock that thing down for this shot. What the hell? It literally is a, just a fucking cosplay. That looks so and, bad. And their boots are wait, sparking wait, on the ground as they're walking. Yeah, generating spontaneously on some of this boots. Hold on. Look, yeah, right look there. at these. <laughs> right there. Okay. I was the looking guy, at the two on the right. Like, from the middle, from the middle, look at the guy to the left, <laughs> okay? Do you see his right foot? His right foot is currently in the air. Yeah, he's about to step. Yeah, watch his foot before he steps. It spontaneously <laughs> generates sparks on under the foot itself. Oh, no. Watch that foot. <laughs> Could that have been a reflection of the sparks from his other step? No. No. I think what it is is his foot it, it drags slightly when he lifted it up and it's <laughs> supposed to be like, oh it created sparks. Yeah, but it's in the air when it makes sparks underneath the like on the sole of the foot. You don't understand. The floor is made of flint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's literally sparking in the air, not not on the ground. <laughs> it's not even touching. Oh my god. <laughs> it looks so bad. And then it's gonna spark again. Hang on. Oh my god. <laughs> the one on the, the right. The, yeah, yeah, the one, the one, one on the right, right just like a miniature <laughs> explosion on the fucking ground for some reason. <laughs> God, we just found an infinite power source. Just have these guys walk around and you could generate fucking <laughs> infinite electricity forever. <laughs> Look at that. It's like a molten ball of lava just hit the fucking ground and exploded. What the fuck? You can even see the glowing ball before it hits the ground. What the fuck is that? This is what is so fucking pathetic. Are they are they supposed to be walking in like an area where there's like you know like those vats of like molten metal being like carried and that's like a drip from one of them? But why is it falls, under their feet every single time? I don't know, but if you look, you can actually see, like, the <laughs> molten ball before it hits the ground and explodes. Uh, bro's leaking Sunny D. <laughs> <laughs> can I have my meds now? No. 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 We're only... We've still got a bit to go. We're about <laughs> halfway through. We're, er, we're just over halfway through now. See, watch right there. You see yeah. it fall. Yeah, I it, saw it comes it. out of like his knee or something. 
No, 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 it comes out of, like, his ankle. Watch, watch it, like, appear <laughs> in his ankle. <laughs> Why is this so fucked? Right there, oh! Oh! It fell, I actually saw it go in front of this dude's arm. Yeah. It does come up from above here. Yeah, there's, like, something dripping. Okay, so they must be walking through some kind of, like, uh, like a steel mill or something. Uh, I guess, but why is every time is it under their feet so it looks like their feet are sparking? I don't know. Maybe... I don't know, yeah, because it's on, it's on the guy on the far left as well and everything. Yeah. Okay, what I think it is, I think they do have the footsteps making sparks. I think they just also have, like, this random molten metal drip as well. Which, why are you walking underneath a place where molten metal could possibly fucking drip? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why you would even do that. <laughs> even if it doesn't get through your armor, imagine it lands on your, your visor thing there. Imagine it lands on... Yeah, it'll melt through that cheap plastic. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm giving them the benefit <laughs> of the doubt that it is actually made of steel. <laughs> but imagine it lands on your little fucking, like, heads-up display scope there that's over their right eye, and it suddenly breaks that. Well, fucking congratulations, dipshit. Well, imagine if it lands in, like, the scene between their fucking knee when they're walking. Like, look how much, look how open it is on their knee when they step. Like, what yeah. if it landed in there and just <laughs> fucked up your leg? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it... Because I saw it come in, I was like, I can literally see the ball before it hits the ground, so it can't be just, like, regular sparks, and then when just there, I literally saw it fall in front of the front, the guy over here on the uh, far side. It, it literally went past his arm. I put it back to normal speed. Okay. Just seeing that emotion, it looks really bad. I also like how it we does. get this random jukebox that just gets blood sprayed on it. Yeah, like, what the fuck? This guy, he's suddenly <laughs> jump scare. Fatty jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy, a new, <laughs> a new soy jack just dropped, guys. <laughs> also, how, how are there fat people in the vaults? Like, the vaults would be highly regulated for what you can and can't have. Uh, no. Actually, they are luxury items for rich people, as we've already established, Setch. Well, I mean, so, again, Todd Howard is an idiot, and so is Nolan, but... <laughs> good God. <laughs> what? what was that? Yeah, what was that? What the fuck? We going back. There's just suddenly a fight taking place in the sh world's shittiest, like, <laughs> garden plot I have ever seen. Why do we need... <laughs> Okay, so first of all, windmill indoors? What? Yeah, yeah what? The... <laughs> is this what the, is this? Is this just their LARP? Like, look, this is obviously a rebellion or something going on, because look, that lady next to the fake hay bale, um, she's kind of highlighted with the uh, brownish hair. They have a gun. Yeah, yeah she's like towards a gun. One guy running at this group. <laughs> yeah. And then guy gets flipped over a table and the guy screams like a fucking gorilla because yeah, I flipped that guy over real good. <laughs> that one dude literally fell from the fucking like <laughs> area above there. Like he fell over the fucking railing and <laughs> fell all the way down here and hit the table. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. That looked really bad. That just looks like some dude fucking posing for the camera. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, there's this disaster. Literally like, Megaton. Megaton crossed with Diamond City. Yeah. yeah. It's like a mix of both. Wow, we get two varieties of shit in one. Ugh, I hate this. Oh my god! Oh. It's the ghoul! Oh my god, it's my favorite character, Red Skull. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to... I can't wait to see uh, how he plans to defeat Captain America this time. Yeah. <laughs> what I can't wait for Captain Marvel to come and punch him. <laughs> what dastardly shenanigans are you up to this time, uh, Red Skull? <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
This set doesn't look bad, I guess. It looks yeah, fine. But it's okay. It's just funny that he's walking around in his underwear. Oh, thanks. Thanks! That's what I wanted to see more of. Nice. Yeah, what the fucking fuck? Fucking chubby cheeks bouncing around as he walks down the stairs, not wearing pants. Jesus. Also, apparently shit goes down and make... It actually has a megaton. Look at that fucking trailer. That's, um... Like the bus the old couple live in, Nathan and, uh, Manya. It's like... I wish you want to bet this was supposed to be Megaton, and then they swapped it to the West Coast at some point. That's what I'm thinking. It, it's what it feels like. It feels like they had it set where it was going to be on the East Coast, and then there was like, oh, that that blurb from Todd where he was like, well, I don't want to just do the West, the East Coast again. So they were like, oh, You're fuck, right. shit. Uh, okay, well, we'll just move it over to the West Coast, and we'll call it, um, we'll call it Philly. We'll call it Philly. Yeah, which makes no fucking sense. Why in the yeah, fuck makes... is it called Philly? Oh my god. The set pieces you know, don't Philly, look bad. The, on the, East Coast. the set pieces don't look bad, but everything else looks retreaded. That it does. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, I think this set piece does look bad, but I hate junk cities like this. They don't make any fucking sense. I don't like the junk city at, like, the concept of it, but the, like, actual physical look of it it's fine if you're gonna do a junk city but it shouldn't yep. be a junk city yeah no cool we got an epic shootout with the ghoul and a person who is trying to shoot him but then stands there and hesitates because they realize they jumped their mark too early so you, if you want to watch that again, you can. They just stand there, and they could have shot him, like, multiple times, but they're just like, no, I gotta stand there and let him shoot me. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Oh, no, it is real! No, I missed it. I, I saw it for a split second. It's gonna show more, but I saw it. I did see it for a split <laughs> second. Oh, my God, it's real. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> why is this real? Are you for fucking real right now? Why? <laughs> oh my god. Hold on. Fuck Hit play. This show. Let's go to a part where it's just looking him straight on. For fuck. Fuck's I tried sake. to pause it. No, 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 no. I I it's going I think it's going to show him. I think it's going to show him like after her. Okay. God. Yeah. God. Why? <laughs> Why? Why is he just a cyclops? It's not even like a mutation. It's just he he's just a cyclops. <laughs> Why? They're in a vault. Yeah. It doesn't even make sense. Did you ever consider Pagan that maybe it's a vault to make cyclopses? Uh, don't pause okay. on him. I want to sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> too late oh my god they are spending a lot of time on him in the trailer yeah it looks so bad oh and that turret jesus christ jesus they really upgraded those things holy fuck they were not like that in the game <laughs> also I, I like again this is the kind of gallows humor i like oh i hate that i went back to him but <laughs> please remain calm i that's the type of humor more i want yeah Also, it, they, none of these are hitting this guy who's not even, what, <laughs> 10 feet away from this fucking thing hobbling along? Maybe this they didn't yeah. upgrade them. Yeah, apparently not, because he is literally just, like, shuffling along there, like, oh, oh like an old man. <laughs> Confused old man shuffling away. If he doesn't go down as soon as I press play, there's a problem. Yeah. Oh, well, okay, he I guess... He not go down, but he's got a dog <laughs> who's trying to make him go faster, and he's slowing up the dog. Yeah, at least oh, let the good. dog go so it can fucking survive. Uh, oh, well, I guess there's our <laughs> dead dog for the trailer. Nice. Well, it's no. not technically dead, but we can assume. It should be. <laughs> yeah, and, and just... 
just the fact that it's a fucking minigun and it's and it can't hit this guy like <laughs> at all <laughs> Do you know how many rounds are being sent down range? I'm going to give you a spoiler chat. Those tracer rounds, that's one every five bullets. So for every tracer round you see, times it by five, and that's how many bullets are flying at this fucker. <laughs> and the accuracy. Dude, every single one of those barrels has to be mad fucked. <laughs> The accuracy of the fact that it's like splashing around him within No, Sech, you don't you don't realize this is actually completely accurate to the games where bullets come out of the barrel at a ninety degree angle. Oh fine. <laughs> yeah, dude, holy shit. <laughs> Less than ten feet and you have like a seven foot minute of angle. It's like what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> it makes sense, it's accurate, it's lore accurate. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i am getting strong halo oh, tv no. show vibes <laughs> oh, no. oh no the algo is coming here it comes oh boy my favorite uh patriotic faction oh god i didn't know there was a yagwai here yeah What? what? What is that? Is that supposed to be a Mirelurk? Oh, is that supposed to be a Gecko? Oh my god, is Where? that supposed to be a fucking... No, I think this is supposed to be a mutated, um... I think I'm on axolotl. a different frame. Oh my god! It is! It's a, it is it's a, muta a, it's a mutated axolotl. axolotl. What the fuck? Why is it here? Um, to go back to the Brotherhood guy being attacked by the Yaogwai, should any be able to, like, punch it and do a lot of damage even from that angle on the ground in power armor yes he's in power armor <clears throat> ew ew why are you showing us this ew why are you getting oh, so up in there the vault uprising or whatever's going on here she got something in her eye uh, for me it, for me all i see is a fucking it's... mouthful of fingers <laughs> It's a good thing she isn't a uh, cyclops. Yeah, oh. there's the uh, the not Pridwin. Oh, what so the the, this is what he was before he became a ghoul. He was apparently a a gunfighter before, and he yeah, just so okay. happened to wear the same colors as a, a vault uniform. I know he's not a vault dweller, but I mean, come on. I don't know. That outfit makes it seem more like he's, um, like he was a rodeo clown or something. <laughs> yeah, it does, because they Pagan. tend to have all the tassels and everything all over them. Pagan. To, it's to exaggerate their emotions and movement. Everyone in this show is a rodeo clown. <laughs> True. Uh, one dollar from John, uh, uh, Michel Smasher 50. Thank you. It's very much appreciated. I hope I pronounced, uh, that middle name correctly. Yes, blind me from this pain. World's slowest nuclear shockwave. <laughs> there it be. There's that wow, name. That was awful. Yeah, that was embarrassing. Genuinely awful. Hang on, they might do like a quick like. They probably will. Game, like, yeah, yeah, they. Yeah. Nope. Oh, they did. Only it was the Prime logo. <laughs> yeah, that was terrible. That was awful. I hate it. Yeah, that was that was yeah. awful. <laughs> and there was no shockwave. He was just a boom <laughs> with no shockwave whatsoever. I hate this. This is revolting. More? No. <laughs> that is the correct answer that Data should have known. No! Why would you do that? No. <laughs> we said no. 
I'm trying to find something. If you have a problem with it, mute it. Oh my god. Why? Why? Yeah, why? <laughs> Who put it to the abomination? I did, because fucking... I... I don't get why this is here! Yeah, this feels so random. I don't get why this is... This feels like something you would see in, like, a fucking weird sci-fi, like, space show. Where it's this... like, oh, this quirky race of aliens. You know, it, it, this doesn't feel like a Fallout thing. This doesn't even feel like a mutant. Well, that, that's it's just a Cyclops. That's the thing. It feels like out-of-touch Hollywood adaptation that knows nothing about the source material. Yeah. It's like, oh, vaults. Like, they they do weird stuff down in those vaults. They experiment on people. What if, uh, what if they gave one of them a single eye and made him a cyclops? He's the leader of the vault. It's like, okay, what? You know, yeah, just so, this is fucking weird. I don't get it. Oh, Exum Legume, I hate it. Thanks. <laughs> 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 Also, hold on. I gotta see that axolotl again. That thing was fucking... You wanna see the little fingies in its mouth again? Kinda? It's so fucking weird. Ah! Like, oh, thanks. Of all the oh, things wait. you could do... Those are actual fingers. What the fuck? Yeah, they are actual fingers. That's I thought why you were I was just, like... What? I thought you were just referring to, like, the weird flesh tubes as, like, fingers as, like... Oh, yeah, they kind of, uh... Finger-like, I guess. I don't know what else to call them. But no, those are actual fucking fingers. What the fuck? Yeah, it actually has, like, actual fingers, I guess, that are supposed to, like, pull you into its mouth or something? I don't know. I don't get the design of this thing. No, oh, it's a centaur, ain't it? No, it's an axolotl. No, it's an actual axolotl. You can see when it does its scream and it puts out its little fin things on, on yeah. its head. Hold on. Right there, yeah. Yeah, it's straight up just an axolotl. It it looks more like a Star Wars fucking alien, but yeah, this thing is fucking weird. Of all the weird mutants you could put in, the fact you did this, it's just odd. It just doesn't. I don't know it's just weird. Yeah. Also, this is gonna sound to... kind of a. <laughs> this is gonna sound kind of stupid, but. I'm kind of annoyed that of all the fucking things that Bethesda has made, where they have to shove death claws into everything, they didn't have a death claw in this trailer. That kind of annoys me because yeah. it's like the one time where it would make sense for them to have a death claw in their trailer, they don't fucking have it. Yeah, like what the <laughs> fuck? We get this thing instead of a fucking death claw. Yeah, or even a gecko. Like, if you want to keep something in the same size scale, why not just have one of the fucking golden geckos? Yeah. <sighs> I kind of like that. I hope they save it for the show for it to be a surprise for normies. I mean, maybe. I doubt it, but maybe. If we'll we're to see. assume, best case scenario of the show is fucking 8, 9, 10 out of 10. Like, it could be a surprise to have an episode where things are, you know, mostly going well, the group is together, and then suddenly out of nowhere, oh shit, there's a fucking death claw tearing us apart. I just have, like, a real cool, like, badass action scene trying to deal with one as everyone is, like, panicking and struggling to survive. You could do something yeah. really cool with that and have it be a shock and come completely out of left field. I don't have faith in anything Fallout related or I guess Amazon related either to not blow that load right now and show it in a trailer. I feel like if there's going to be a yeah. death claw in this show, we would have seen it. Yeah, I feel like they don't have enough restraint to not put it in the trailer if there was one. Yeah. Especially considering, like, a big part of Fallout 4's opening was rewritten to have that death claw scene there. Because yeah. isn't it cool? 
God, you know what I just... Oh, so I'm, I'm getting a lot of Halo TV show vibes, but you know what else I'm getting a bit of a vibe with? Bebop Flirts? The ghoul, the ghoul character kind of reminds me of fucking Book of Boba Fett's Cad Bane. Oh, no. Like, they have a very similar, <laughs> like, style to them. Yeah. Uh, this thing's gonna be a fucking clown show, isn't it? Yeah, this is gonna be bad. This is gonna be absolute dog shit. I can already tell. <laughs> this is gonna be painful. And yeah. the worst part is... We're gonna have to watch fucking the Halo fucking <laughs> season two, and then not long <laughs> after that, watch this. Oh god, I didn't even consider covering season two. <laughs> yeah. Do we have to watch Halo season two? I guess we don't have to cover it. It depends, honestly, how things turn out. Yeah. Um, I do still want to do a video on season one, but I've just got so many other things I'd prefer to do right now. It's way on the back burner at this point. Yeah. Plus, I feel like most everyone knows that the Halo TV show is bad and why it's bad. Yeah. Compared to the other stuff you could cover where it's like, you know, not quite as clear cut. All right, well, I am going to turn off um, Watch Together on the uh, stream. And I guess it's time for us to start wrapping up. <coughs> Pagan. Mwah. 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 <laughs> there you go. Okay, next. All right. Uh... Tomorrow, chat, we're going to be streaming an old Goldie for me. We're going to be playing some Warhammer Online on stream. Only it's one of the new uh, private servers that's come up to kind of compete against Return of Reckoning. So I'm super happy about that. So we'll see you guys there for that. And if you want to watch and catch a stream every uh, weekday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, except for this Thursday, because we have the special thing this Thursday. We're going to have a late stream on Thursday. Because it's the Game Awards, and we're going to see how awful that is. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's going to be a special stream. So Thursday, there won't be a stream early in the morning. That'll be later in the day for the Game Awards. But, uh, yeah, normally I stream every weekday from 10 a.m. Eastern U.S. to 1 p.m. Eastern U.S. time every single weekday. And you can find me on Rumble, Twitch, Kick, and YouTube. So, any of those strike your fancy, go out there. I kind of want to put more people towards Rumble. That's the platform I would prefer to use, but, you know, it is what it is. Make your choice for where you want to see it. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be good fun. If you've never seen Warhammer Online, it was a fantastic old MMO that got fucked by EA real hard. Like, real hard. Really, Warhammer Online such? Install Dawn of War 2 Retribution. Hit me up. No. Again, Warhammer Online is a Warhammer Fantasy MMO. Fuck yeah, I'm jumping back into that shit. I love that shit. I, even though I hated what Return of Reckoning was doing with it, I still got my Witch Hunter to renown rank 85, which is insane. But yeah. That's, uh, we're having ourselves a good old time there. And, uh, the movie we're watching this Saturday for Saturday Showtime is Die Hard. What a fantastic Christmas movie. Woo! It should be uh, good times and good memes. Mm. Very, very show myself. I am doing stuff. I'm still doing uh, the VTuber streams, obviously. I'm going to be working on the November Roundup soonish uh, for the, the clips, the highlights for that. Um, I'm working on a video for Doctor Who and the Star Beast, which is fucking terrible. I hope to get that out this week or next, and then get back to work on the Sharpfield review. Um, something, something, I'm forgetting something. I don't know what. I'll be around. Someone asked uh, if we're doing uh, art showcase on Monday. I work tomorrow, so no. I shouldn't have mentioned the Monday thing before. In retrospect, I should have just 
done it every other week or every week or however much it turns out to be when I'm more prepared for it because I I'm terrible at sticking to schedules. But yeah. Uh, have a good night, everyone. Thank you for coming out. It's very much appreciated, and we'll see you next time. I'll I'll be streaming something Wednesday probably, and uh, I'll be streaming the Game Awards as well on uh, Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Should be a terrible time. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. The Game Awards usually have, like, usually the only reason you watch the Game Awards is to laugh at how bad Jeff Keighley and the awards are and then see some of the world premieres. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyways, have a good night, everyone. See you next time. Bye. Say bye, you fuck. Bye, God. There you go.